Hello, tinkers, tailors, soldiers, and spies. My name is TV Sky, and welcome to this thing. Whatever this is. I am theoretically live, I believe. Uh, I'm, I'm reasonably sure. Uh, but uh, you're gonna have to... Yay, chat says I'm alive. Hooray. Hello, everybody. Hi, I'm using my VTuber. Welcome to Hyrule Fields, where I've been floating around for the last hour. Now, uh... The subject for tonight's stream... <laughs> um... Well, I want to be upfront with all of you. Like, I've just moved house. Uh, things have been a little chaotic. I, 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 I've been trying to get back into the swing of making videos. I really want to finish that Bloodborne video, for example. But, oh god, it's just, I, ha I have not had any time to do anything. Because it turns out when you move into a new apartment that needs a lot of maintenance and uh, repair work done, then that takes up all of your life for a while. So... Uh, what could I do that was a little bit low effort, like not that difficult to put together, that people seem to want and like and enjoy? And so it's like, so this is a little bit of a, yeah, okay, let's, let's, let's do a tier list stream because that's, that's relatively easy to put together. I want to be upfront about that. But I did think like, originally I was like, let's, um, let's rank the champions according to, I don't know, lore or I don't know, the char best character designs. I don't know. Like I was sort of searching around I was like, and then Riot, sons of bitches that they are, release, uh, or leak, rather, Renata Glask. And then it was like, yeah, all right, fine. Okay, yeah, sure, I, all right, well, okay, fine. <laughs> fine, we'll rank the champions according to how hot I think they are. Why not? Um. So, that's what we're doing. We're, we're looking at the champions and we're deciding how hot they are, or specifically I'm deciding how hot I think they are. Um, as you can see, there's a few rules on screen that I would like chat to generally follow. Uh, keep chat pleasant, be thirsty, absolutely, but be respectful. Like just be kind to each other. If someone says, I think Cossacks is really hot, don't, don't be weird about it. Um, and try not to do, like, I know people in chat are gonna do Zoe jokes and Annie jo like, Edgelord's shit, like, uh -huh, she's technically 3,000 years old. Yeah, I, I would like to request that you don't. Like, I know you're you're making funny haha -ha memes for the internets and FBI open up stuff, but I would like to request that we don't do that. Um, just, you know, um... If you super chat anything, and I've seen your thing, George Sagath, I'll, I'll get to it. I will read it. I will answer it. We'll 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 deal with it. Um, but you know, this is like, and 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 keep in mind that this is a silly opinion stream. It's it's just it's just it's just for bants and fun, and laughter. Um, so don't take it too seriously, right? Like we're here to just chill out, chat, have fun, have a nice time. We're not. We're not very seriously assessing whether or not a champion is hot or not, or whether you're allowed to find Aatrox attractive or whatever. I'm just here setting opinions out into the universe, so don't worry about it too much. All right? Cool. So, uh, thank you, Callsign Rogue, for the $5 super chat. Hello, Sky, a new fan here. Will Zeri Renata be on this list? You'll find out in a second. Uh, we'll, I'll bring the list up in a moment, and we'll talk about who is actually going to get discussed, and who is not going to get discussed. Jorik Sagath also sent a super chat saying, Oh my god, I can actually watch a stream of yours. Well, thank you very much for showing up. And here comes a $20 super chat. Thank you very much from NJ Weaver. Hope you're having a good day. My boy Fiddlesticks better be S tier. I may have to disappoint you a little bit, but we'll talk about it once we get there. Say hello to the list. Um, it's the, There's a template on the tier maker thing, thankfully, which I have arranged into a series of... Uh, tiers that we're going to be working with here. And uh, we're going to discuss what these things mean, right? So uh, Triple S, Smokin, obviously, these are the hottest champions. They just are. I will not hear any argument. They are hot. And if you dislike them or you think they're I'm wrong, then you're wrong. Like, that's wrong. I'm objectively correct. These are hot and you can't, you cannot convince me otherwise ever, right? Hot tier is champions that are just hot. Like, it's not, they're not transcendent or anything. They're not like, oh my god, I've never seen, like, it's, it's not something that sort of, like, punches you in the heart and goes, oh my god, whew, whew, like, leaves you breathless. Just, these are hot. They're hot. Sure they are. Why not? Then we have hot to someone else, which are champions where it's like, yeah, I can see it. Like, I can see why 
I can totally, I understand why someone would be like, hey, shit, that's super hot. And most champions are probably going to end up here, right? Like most of them are probably going to be like, yeah, I can see it. It's just not really, I don't, I don't, I don't care that much for it. Uh, not that interested in it. And then we have the tier, two tiers here, down here that need a little explanation. We have not hot, which are champions that are not hot. Like, my opinion is that if other people find them hot, that's a little odd. Like, I, I don't know why. Not that there's anything wrong with it, I just don't understand why. Like, I can't see what someone sees in this champion. Uh, so they're not hot. But then we have a different tier, and they, these are not the same thing. We have anti-hot, and these are not, this is not the same thing as not being hot. This is being like, like directly a turn, like this is like the opposite side of the spectrum from where hotness is, right? Like, and I'll give you an example. It's a complicated thing, but I'll give you an example. Let's see if I can find him if we scroll down a second. Talon is anti-hot, and I will explain why. Let me just see if I can find uh, his artwork for you. Let me see if I can explain why. Talon is anti-hot. It's not that he's not hot, because Talon is one of those characters I can absolutely see. Like, I can absolutely see why someone would find him hot, why someone would say, oh yeah, th th like, this is my boy, this is the, this is the, this is the hot thing. Let me see if I can get that. There we go. I can absolutely see why, right? Like, it's, it's not that he's not hot. It's that this guy, right, this boy, he looks like if you go to his apartment, his only furniture is a beanbag chair and a PS4 hooked up to a really big TV, like a really big flat screen OLED TV. This boy, he looks like he has extensive collections of swords on the wall, but he gets really mad if you touch them. He looks like he has like a row of katanas and like wakisashi and like Japanese weapons. And if you call them swords, he'll be, he'll be like, well, actually they're not just swords, they're katanas. And they were considered like the soul of the samurai. It's very reductive and disrespectful just to call them swords. Like that's what he looks like. It's not that he's not hot. Like he looks like he's probably ripped. He looks like he's got a great ass. Like he looks like, like, like he should be hot, but it's just, He's, he just, like, with his Assassin's Creed hood and the wrist blade and the stupid cape and, like, the edgelord seriousness with which he carries himself all of the time, he just, like, it's like, yeah, you should be hot. Like, you sh people should be falling on their ass, like, to try and get on that. But he's just, like, you just you just meet him and you, like, you look at him, you talk to him for five seconds, like, no, 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 no. Like, you'd have to be very drunk or very desperate. Like, it's... It's just his vibe is just wrong, right? Like, it's not that he's not hot, he just has the wrong vibe, so you can't find him attractive. Uh, that's where we're putting talent. That's what that tier means. That's what anti-hot means. It's not that they're not hot, it's that you meet them and you're like, oh, no, 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 we can't do that. Um, so that's where we're starting. <laughs> oh, and thank you for the super chat, my Losik uh, 024. So are we all clear on it? Are we all clear on what anti-hot means? Not uh, People are calling him an incel in chat. Not, it's not really that he has incel vibes. He does kind of a little bit. It's that he has the vibes of like someone where like, it's just like, no, I cannot get, I cannot get horny for this. Like I'm, I'm, I'll, I, no matter how much you may want to, you, can, you just kind of can't because it's like, eh, the vibes are off. Okay. <laughs> We're start oh good lord, there's 1,800 people here. What the hell? Hello, hi, okay. I I okay, I was, I was just explaining things. Um the last tier that we need to talk about is the not discussed tier. And there's many reasons why a champion might be in there, but mostly it's just we're not gonna discuss them here. Like, we just we're just not gonna talk about them. They are not a subject for this conversation, for example. A mumu goes here. Annie goes here, um, but also champions like, uh, well, Fizz definitely goes there, and Nar, but also champions like, for example, where is she? HM, Katarina, Kane, digga, digga, digga. Lilia. Lilia goes in the not discussed tier, and she goes there because I feel like she's a kid. Like, just the way, like, I, we don't know that she has a canonical age or whatever, but I feel like she's a kid. Like, that she comes across as, like, a childish character to me, like a childlike character. So, she just, like, no, I can't, there is no hotness to discuss there, because I, I feel like this is a child. 
And so obviously we're not doing that. Actually, let me zoom in a little bit so it's bigger on screen. So obviously we're not doing that, right? And there's going to be a bunch of champions that just go in there and we're not going to talk about them extensively. It's just they go there and we don't talk about them because they're not a subject for this stream. Some of them I'll explain. Some of them will just be like, no, they go there and, and, I, and I don't want to talk about him. Oh, thank you very much, Enemy Fenmore. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you for that switch out. Thresh. Oh, we'll get to Thresh, won't we? Yes, we'll get to Thresh. Oh, and by the way, a feature of this uh, of this tier list I realized is Alune is on here, so we can discuss her alongside Aphelios. And also, uh, Silco is on here. He's somewhere around here about... Where the hell is he? There he is. There's Silco. So we can talk about Silco as well. Right. So I think I've laid out the... Uh, the, the the description and the details such that we understand what's going on here tonight. And I'd like to reiterate, everyone be nice in chat, okay? Like, just just be nice to each other. And, like, if someone thinks Skarner is, is the hottest fuckboy on the Rift, that's cool. That's okay to think so. If someone actually thinks Garen is hot for some reason, peace go with you, my friend. Uh, and, and please nobody dunk on them. All right? Oh, hey, Nikki boy's here. How you doing, dude? But yeah, I, I don't want to argue over the champions I put in the not discussed tier. I just, I don't want to argue about, we don't talk about them on this stream. That's, that's the vibe. <sighs> oh, thank you, Chen Li. You watched the Final Fantasy X playthrough three times. Good Lord. Well, I'm, I'm glad it's become like a comfort thing for you. Uh, and Dark Souls 3 is coming. We just need to get through Elden Ring first. And then, then Dark Souls 3 is coming. Glad to finally watch live. Love all of your content. Oh, thank you, Dr. Lolcats. Thank you very much. Um, and yes, like, don't worry, this is not every champion. We're putting more champions in the Nut Discussed here. We'll get to them. Like, when we get to them, we'll just slide them up there and not talk about them. So don't worry about it. Could I move chat a little to the... Oh, yeah, actually, I see what you mean there. Uh, it's because I zoomed in. There. That should do the trick. A fresh cup of coffee and a blanket? It's cozy? That sounds nice, Samo Samson. Right, so let's start f uh, alphabetically as I go and god, god damn it, I need a better way to display images on this goddamn stream, but I work with what I've got. There we go. Let's start um, at the alphabetical start, which is double A Aatrox. So like Aatrox before the rework was kind of like he was he was sort of an edge lord like he he was mostly he was like a, a character out of like a 90s comic he was like very sort of spiky and like and they softened that up a little bit as we um as as we hit his as we hit his his uh, his, his visual update um where he's like he he got some slightly more humanoid features he looked a little bit more adult like pre pre re rework Aatrox was very much like a teenager like in in his aesthetic vibe it was like yeah this is the stuff a teenager thinks is cool and then once we hit the rework he sort of went a little bit more this is more of a man right like he, he went from sort of a, a edgy dangerous boy to more of a big burly angry man and Aatrox is gonna be a champion who's gonna go in the hot to someone else tier like I can see it like def he's a demon boy he's got the horns he's like he's big he's large muscles he's got the big metal hand he can choke you with it that's probably hot to someone um like I can see it I can definitely see it but it's just like yeah I I don't I, I I don't I don't I don't feel much for him like it's like yeah woo like demon daddy I guess but it's not very inventive it's kind of basic I'm not really I'm not really interested or invested in it frankly it's it's like it's fine but it's not really not really my speed so hot to someone else I'd say is where uh, is where Aatrox um is gonna go then we have Ari now, Ari is a champion who's very, very explicitly designed to be hot, except in her character model, but that one's getting an update soon, thank the Lord. But she's very much designed to be hot. And not so long ago, she would definitely have run into the hot to someone else tier for me. But then the Ruined King game came out, and I don't have the artwork of that here, unfortunately. I, I, I forgot to get it, but like, Ari in the Ruined King game? Yeah, no, like, yeah, that, that, mm, she got up there. Um, like, the way she looks in League of Legends now, the way she's probably gonna look after her ASU, is like, 
yeah, it's a little, it's like, it's too basic for me. Like, Ari used, used to be just, like, it's a fox girl with, like, she's got the titties and the, and the, and the thighs and she's hot and skinny and what, like, it was too basic. I wasn't interested. But then, like, Ruined King, like, gave her, like, the feral aspect, like, where she's, like, kind of wild and angry and a little bit more animalistic and raw and is like, fuck, God damn it, Shit, they got me. They got me. They found it. Like, they found out how to make her hot. Shit. And so now, <laughs> so now, unfortunately for me, um, like, still, like, in-game, in-game, she's in the not hot tier. Like, she's, she, her character model is just, like, not hot at all. But in Ruined King, in Ruined King, she is, yeah, they, they got me. She's hot. I can't, I can't get around it. <laughs> oh, there's been some more super chats. Uh, let's see. Does S tier if naked still apply? Uh, I mean, I guess you'll see when we get to Evelyn. <laughs> um, we've got cooled evergreen sending us which chat saying graves better be S or I swear I'll be mildly disappointed. I, well, I don't have an S tier. I have a triple S tier and I don't think he goes there, but we'll find out. Tanius, thank you very much for that super chat. Um, and for the other one where you say Aurelian soul S tier, maybe, maybe. Well, he, he, he's early on in the stream. He's like, he's like early in the, in the order. Uh, take my money, YouTube man. I will. Thank you very much, TM. And, uh, Charles Antoine Goulet, uh, probably French. I don't know. Love your content, Sky, and thank you for teaching us critical thought about design decisions. Critical thought and also horniness. Yes. <laughs> That's what we're doing here. Uh, I'm trying to look at chat every once in a while. It's a little difficult because I've got, like, I've got three monitors and there's stuff on all of them. I've got the images on the left. And so, um, trying to catch up with, um, with what chat is saying. Ramus is clearly triple S. Oh, no, no, I, I'm afraid. Oof, you'll be disappointed there, my friend. <laughs> but yes, Akali should be next, I believe. And indeed she is. And I don't think... Do I need to explain this? Like, is 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 there that much to talk about? With a, Like, is it... Is that hard to figure out? Like, am I... Do I have to argue with anyone about this? Is this one difficult? I don't think it is. Uh, she's triple S smoking hot. Like, Akali is... Like... Damn. The, the rework did a good job of updating her design. But it's... it's What's interesting, perhaps, is to talk about not just that she's hot, but why she's hot. And the reason why, it's not just, like, she is obviously a conventionally attractive, like, she's a hot girl who's, like, fit or whatever. That's not really, that's not really the thing that makes her hot. The thing that makes her hot is that she is, first of all, like, her fashion is on point. Like, it's fantastic. It's, it's got this street fashion vibe that gives her an air of a lot of confidence, a lot of self-assuredness, and that, like... Hmm, that's, that's, that's the good stuff. And then it's the fact that she looks like she can kill you with one hand. Like, and I know that's not everyone's thing. Not everyone's into that. Not everybody likes to be killed with one hand. But, you know, I, I, I don't necessarily like to be killed with one hand either. But I do sort of enjoy the concept that a person could do it if they wanted to kill me with one hand. They don't have to. And I would, in fact, encourage them not to do that. It's not a thing I want to have happen. It's just a thing that's nice to have. Like, if, if... You have the option, you know, if you want, have, just, just that it's there and you never have, like, it's like a box that's on the shelf and you never have to open the box, but you know that the box is there. You could open it, but you don't have to, but it's like, just, it's just a thing that's like nice to have. Right. Um, and then there's the tattoo, like the back tattoo that that's also like, because the thing about tattoos, right? Like the way that they work on a body is that they accentuate the shapes of the body. So like if you have a back that is well formed and muscular, like like Akali's is, that tattoo just accentuates that. Like it it, it enhances the shapes. And you look at that and you just go, oh, I can I can see all the shapes of the of the back muscles there. That's nice. That's a nice thing to be able to look at. Plus the artwork is nice. It's a cool dragon tattoo. Who doesn't like a cool dragon tattoo? So like, yeah, it's like not not everyone's taste, I'm sure, but. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I, I, I can work with that. I can work with it. I, I, I can, I can roll with that. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I blacked out for a second there. What was that thing? Better see my girl Jinx up there. We'll get to her. Um, Will, William Inglehorn says, uh, sends a $6.69 super chat. Thank you. Nice. Akali could murder me and my ghost would want to know if her sword arm was all right. Thank you, Brandon Allison. And call sign Rogue. Yes, she went in the triple S tier. Your beloved Akali. <sighs> I guess then that moves us on to our next lad. I really should have rotated his splash art before I did this, but the Akshan who, it's really, his splash art is a little bit chaotic, it's kind of hard to look at him, so let's just look at the character model instead. 
So Akshan is... Like, I feel like he's probably hot. Right? Like, it's like he's got the abs, he's got the, the, the cocky attitude, he's well-groomed, he's got lovely hair. He's probably hot, but just not really my kind of... Like, someone finds him hot, someone finds Akshan unbearably, like, hmm, exactly the thing that they want. I like his attitude, I like his charm, like, he's fun. He looks like he would... Like, a night out with him would definitely be a lot of fun. I don't know if it would be that sexy. Because that's the thing, is like, he also strikes me as, like... Like, as someone who just wouldn't, like, he would charm the pants off of you, but then he wouldn't do anything with that. Like, he'd charm the pants off, and then he'd be satisfied and be happy and be like, Haha, I have charmed the pants off you. Now I am satisfied. And then he'd just, like, go home. Um, like, he feels like a tease. Like, he feels a lot like a tease. Like, he, he like, he'd, oh, he'd, he'd charm, and he'd flirt, and he'd push it the whole way, but he'd never actually fucking do anything. So you'd, it would just be this constant unsatisfying, like, Yo, come on, fucking just kiss me or something. Like... I feel like that would be what it is with Akshan. Like, he's too much of a trickster. He just wouldn't ever commit to anything. And, like, yeah, it's probably hot to someone, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, yeah, I can see that someone would find it hot. I just don't find it especially appealing. <laughs> oh my god, he's Johnny Bravo. Well, Johnny Bravo if he was competent and, and, and more charming. Um, I, I feel, I feel like that's more, that's more the vibe there. <laughs> But also, like, Akshan kind of, like, it's a little weird to say, but he kind of gives me asexual vibes. Like, like, this is a character that definitely could be a very flirtatious, like, very, like, very romantic, flirtatious ace person. Like, that's, this, get a little bit of those vibes from him. Like, that he could be, he could be there. Um, but, like, not necessarily, like, that's not, nothing that's confirmed. It's just the vibe I get from him. And it's, it's kind of hard to say, that oh, the asexual person is super hot. It's like, yeah, they probably are, but... But when you know they're ace and there's nothing going to happen, then that kind of... For me, that's kind of a... Okay, well, move on. Think about something else then. Yeah, flirting for the sport is what someone says in chat. Flirting for the sport, that's the vibe of Akshan. Like, he, he would... Like, he, he does that just to keep his skills sharp. Like, that kind of thing. Not that, he's, not that he's evil or mean, or that he's cruel, or that he'd stand you up on a date. He would never stand you up on a date. I think Akshan would never, ever, ever stand you up on a date. But he would take you up to your door, kiss you on the cheek, and then go home. Like, no matter how horny you are. <laughs> right. Uh, were there any more Super Chats? Very curious where my girls Talia and Gwen are going. Uh, hmm, yeah. Well... Well, we can we can kind of we can kind of do Talia right away actually because where the hell is she? That's Victor. That's Timo. Talia, because Talia in her Talia in the lore right now is like twenty six or twenty seven. Like she's she's very much an adult, but in her splash art and in her character model in game, she is still a teenager, and therefore she goes into the not discussed tier. I sort of considered bringing up her Legends of Runeterra art and like uh, some screenshots from the um, from the most recent. Um, from the from the animated short where she is like this is Talia when she's when she's fully grown, but it was still like someone would take a screenshot of me saying Talia is hot or whatever, and then I'd have to deal with fucking discourse on Twitter for like eight months after that because people don't understand context. So no, she's not going to be discussed because Talia in the game is a teenager, and I'm not we're not discussing that. So sorry about that. Right, I'm just uh, sorry for not talking. I'm just looking over. Uh, <laughs> Evalu Ivanov, I hope those two ninety nine leave you breathless. Nice Jana reference there. Very, very well done. If Fallen Angel Goth GF Morg isn't smoking tier, ooh, yeah, uh, we'll see about that, won't we? We'll see about that. Right. Which means it's time to move on to uh, the first Bara feature of the evening. Which is Alistar, the big, giant, buff, very angry Minotaur. Um, and yeah, it's just not really my speed. And it's another one of those champions, we might as well just place him immediately. He's hot to someone else. Like, I know there's a lot of thirst for the cow man. Uh, a lot of people do want to milk those. Uh, a lot of people want to milk more than just those. They want to milk all the other things as well. But me, eh. You know, it's like he's he's like, yeah, he's probably hot to someone. But like even then I'm a little I'm a little bit tempted to put him in the not hot category because he just kinda I don't know, there's the vibes about him just aren't really 
hot. Like, people, th I think people think he's hot because of just the physique. Because he's got big, giant hands and, like, huge chest and, like, like muscular t thighs or whatever. For me, it's just, like, the vibe is, like, yeah, I can see why someone else finds him hot. But to me, he's just not... No, I don't find any hotness there. I don't think he's really designed in a way that would render him particularly attractive. Um, but that's, you know, that's just my, that's just my opinion. So we're putting him in the, in the hot to someone else tier because that's kind of, I feel like that's where Alistar goes. I feel like that's where he belongs, really. Because it's just, it's it's too outside of my wheelhouse for me to, to oh, good grief, there's 2,000, no, there's 2,800 people here. Oh, Lord. Okay, <laughs> right. Uh, I should have seen that coming. I was hoping this was going to be a slightly smaller stream, but I see I was I was uh, I was thinking foolishly on that one. So hi, welcome to the stream. That's a lot more people now than there were when I started. So uh, we're just going to go over uh, the rules a little bit again because I see people in chat were asking about why Talon is an anti-hot and why not discuss tears there. So we'll just go over it quickly again, right? This is my opinion. These are all my opinions. Don't worry, like. Don't worry about anything objective. I, I know I char criticize character design a lot, but like, these are just opinions. They're not about like whether the character is objectively hot. They're about whether I find them hot, okay? Um, Talon is an anti-hot because he's a character who probably should be hot, who probably, like he, he looks like he has a great body or whatever, but his vibes are wrong. Like the vibes are just bad. He doesn't, he doesn't feel like a, a character who would be hot. Therefore he is anti-hot. It's not that he's not hot. It's that something about him just makes him the opposite thing of hot, right? And the not, not discussed tier is like, that's all the, the child characters, that's all the underage characters, it's all the characters that aren't sentient and sapient uh, go there because they cannot consent, so let's not, let's not breach that thing. And it's champions that I just don't want to talk about for obvious or non-obvious reasons. That's where they go. Just re reading out the rules again. Um, the chat, chat rules are also on screen. Keep chat pleasant, be thirsty, but be respectful. Like, this is a horny time. I recognize this is a horny time, but, you know, let's let's keep it on the level. And not too many FBI open up jokes about Zoe or whatever. She's going in the not to discuss. I'm just, just going to put her there right now so that people will quit bugging me about it. Um, she's going there, and we're not talking about her because obviously we're not. Okay? So that get out of the way. And it's an opinion stream. Don't take anything I say too seriously. We're just chilling out and having fun. This is casual. Cool. What was the right? There were some more super chats. Oh god. Uh there was a few. Okay, Lost Phoenix said, consider this an assurance to put Daddy Soul in triple S. Well, we'll see about that. Awesome Nader, thank you. First stream, nice to finally catch one, and second, I wonder how much this stream is gonna make people think uh, you're a furry. I mean, people already think I'm a furry, so it's not. I don't think it's gonna change anything. Maybe more people will think I'm a furry. I do have a fursona, like in case anyone's wondering. Uh, someone drew one. Uh, well, Kairos actually was one of the mods on my Discord. Drew one for me. It's really nice. It's cool. Maybe I'll find it. Let me let me see if I can find it. I think I saved it somewhere. Well, I know I saved it somewhere. Uh. But God, Lord knows if I can remember where the fuck I saved it at. Uh, nope, not there. Not there either. Okay, I can't, I can't remember where the hell it is. I saved it somewhere. It's really nice. I'll, I'll post it on Twitter or something. Um, people are thirsty, Sky, and says Soro Fox. Yes, absolutely they are. Uh, but Daddy Lunar Beast Alistar. Well, I mean, yeah, but we're not talking about the skins here. If we were talking about the skins, a lot of champions would be moving around to different tiers, believe you me. Maybe we'll do that later. Like, we'll, we'll rank champion hotness according to skins or something. I don't know. Uh, Carson Brinkman sent a super chat saying, listening to this at work, stocking dog foods. Probably the most interesting thing I've ever listened to at work. <laughs> May need to turn the stream off when we get to Kled. <laughs> <laughs> Skull! <laughs> Have a good stream. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, where were we? Right. Uh, next champion up is the bird, Anivia, and like she's a bird uh, who's made of ice. And like she, she is sentient. Like she has, she has a human intelligence. So, so that's good. But she's a bird who's made of ice, and I don't. I feel like it's it's sort of quite literally. That's not hot. <laughs> like she's a bird that's made of ice. Like she's not even like a bird furry or whatever. Those can be hot, I guess. But 
She's just a bird that made of ice. So I don't think there's a lot to discuss there, except that she's just... She's a bird made of ice. Um, and she also, like... The eggs she lays are fertilized, so I guess technically she's like... Yeah, she's like constantly rebirths. Does a virgin rebirth of herself, which is probably someone's jam. But yeah, sorry. Olivia doesn't do anything. I, I, I can't do anything with that. Um, So... Moving on. Oh, come on, little interface, would you kindly? There we go. Um, Sichuani's better be triple S smoking or there's gonna be hell to pay. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I guess we'll figure out when we get there. I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure, actually. It sort of depends on which Sichuani. We'll get to that when we talk about Ash, actually. Um, we'll get to that. Almost 3,000. Oh, Lord, there's 2,900 people. Yeah, hello. Hello, interested people who want to know which champions I think are hot. I hope I don't disappoint you too much tonight. Um, Which leads us on to the next boy, which is Aphelios, who is, like, talk about a champion who's specifically designed to be hot, right? Like, he's specifically designed to be extremely hot. But he's hot to someone else. Like, Aphelios, it's like... I sort of get it. Like I like I get the vibe. He's this like he's this broody, introverted, quiet emo kid. He expresses his feelings physically, like he has to. Like he like he expresses feelings through touch, through like subtle little gestures. There's a lot of sort of intrigue and there's a lot of romantic tension inherent to that character. Um like this there, like I can definitely see the appeal. Like I can see why someone thinks it's hot. But for me it's just like I don't know, like, it's like, say something, like, well, no, that's ableist, actually, to say, but, like, in, in the sense of, like, I don't, the whole sort of dour, broody, keeping all their emotions on the inside, express something is what I mean to say, like, I need you to have a, a feeling that I can see, somehow, like, you need to express yourself clearly, otherwise I don't know what's going on inside you, and there's, I can't, I can't find that attractive, uh, Sorry, like, you, you need to express yourself somehow. And Aphelios is very much like the opposite, like the very cold, like not cold, but distant and brooding. He's looking out of a window, it's raining outside, there's a full moon in the sky, he's got some contemplative deep thought. And then there's also the thing of like, his sister is always like looking in. Like his sister is always there, like all the time, she just knows. Um, and that's a little bit like, if you're into that, sure, I guess, but <laughs> I would feel like, hey, could we have a private conversation? I don't know. Uh, um, it's like, it's mm, not really, not really my vibe. Uh, not especially. <laughs> but again, I can see why, like, why that's appealing. Like, why this sort of, like, the impossibly beautiful glittering in the moonlight, absolutely gorgeous, silent, quiet boy who's sensitive and emotional and very good with his hands. I can see why that's someone's jam. Just, it's it's weird that the sister's there. Like, it's weird that she's there all the time. Uh, <laughs> like, it's just, it's, I, no, I, 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 no, no, please. And for that reason, Alune, who is very, who, like, who's very pretty and, like, has excellent fashion sense, but Alune is kind of the aspect of Aphelios that it's like, that's anti-hot, I'm sorry. Uh, and also, like, if, if you were to date her, like, her, the fact that her brother would know everything all the time is also a thing of, like, mm-mm, mm-mm, nope, nope, can't, cannot, sorry. Like, you are very close with your sister, that's cool, that's fine. It's just not my, just, that's a little too close, and I don't want to be a part of a, of, of a polycule, necessarily, in this situation, so... So, like, we split the champion across two things where, like, Aphelios is probably hot to someone, but the whole Alune thing, that's anti-hot. Like, it's not that she's not pretty, it's not that she's not gorgeous, it's just that the whole interplay and the relationship between them is like, so it's, it's too much. I don't want to, I don't want to mess with that. Not really, not really my kind of thing. <laughs> Alex K sent a super chat. Sounds like you were saying Olivia is a MILF. I mean, she technically would be, I get, like, if you find her hot. She would be a MILF because she's constantly giving birth to herself. I guess that counts. <laughs> That's between you and God, um, whether you consider her a MILF. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, God. There's, there's a lot of super chats. Uh, uh, Sedark sent one and didn't say anything. Thank you. Derek Casagrade sent a $5 super chat and said, Tapping on the, the only infinite resource on Earth, internet thirst. Fair play. Thank you for the stream. Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess this hit more of a nerve than I thought, because there's 3,000 people here. Uh, finally caught you live. Thank you, Diego. 
Dragon Wolf, bedbound right now listening to you to distract myself. All my favorite champions are gonna be not discussed. <laughs> yeah, don't forget to hydrate. I have a huge bottle of Coke right here next to me, so I'm gonna be good. No, I know Coke is not water. Leave me alone. Unrelated, is there a reason you aren't making an arcane animation breakdown for Act 2? No, I'm, I'm getting to it. I've moved. Like, uh, for the last two months, I've been moving house. That's why videos have been gone. Uh, so I'll get to it, uh, just Haku. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> Said Ark, forgot to put my message here again. Eagerly awaiting my steppy mommy tentacle lady Yalawi and protect daddy Brom. Let's see. Tenebrous Gaming sent one says, Thank you for all your work, Mr. Sky, and the smart flying head. Thank you. I like your content. It's quite unique compared to what I usually see on YouTube. Thank you. Talisman sent one just now and said, I feel like Ivern would wrap me in blankets and hold me on the couch while we listen to David Attenborough talking about the penguins, and I need that. We'll get to Ivern. We'll, we'll get to Ivern. But right now, it's time to get to... Uh, <laughs> it's time to get to Ash. And, like, if you follow me for a while, you know that I have some strong opinions about uh, Ash and her character design. Like, you you know I have, I have some strong opinions about how her character design is dumb, and it doesn't fit in the Freljord, and it doesn't make any goddamn sense. Um, it doesn't make any goddamn sense. I don't know why she's running around in miniskirt in a snowstorm. I don't know why she's got her titties out. I don't know why... Like, she's an archer, right? Like, she should have an upper body with which you could crush m watermelons with one hand, right? Like, she should have a really strong, muscular upper body, but she has this super slender, like, very standard, boring, like, this is just hot fantasy babe character design with no consideration paid towards how her body actually interacts with the life that she's living and how you can use her physicality for storytelling. I have a lot of strong opinions about Ash, right? And I, I, I really don't like her character design as a character design, but I do have a thing for archers. I do. Like, ar archers are cool. Bows are cool. I don't know why. I don't know what it is about bows and about archery specifically that I really like, but I do. Uh, so she has to, like, I have to be honest, she has to go there. I want her character design to be changed. I would like her to look less ridiculous in the Freljord, but as a character, like outside of Nick with the white hair and like the and the bow and the, I, she is hot to me. I don't, I'm sorry. I can't explain it really well, except that she just is. Um, please change her. I would much prefer Ash. Like if, if you change her character design to something more sensible, like the one she has in the Ash War Mother comic, then I probably wouldn't find her hot anymore. But I would like her a lot more as a character. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, she, uh, mm, she is hot. I just wish she wasn't hot the way that she is in the in the context of the story that 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 she's in. Uh, oh lord, there's more super chats. Good grief! Um, binged your hot takes compilation right after finishing Arcane. Now I'm really enjoying the Pokemon hot takes. I'm glad you're enjoying those. They get a lot fewer views than anything else I do, but I keep doing them because I like them. Um, Skyler Rose, your streams give me a tremendous amount of joy. Oh, well, I'm happy. I'm happy to entertain you. <laughs> going to guess my fit badass set is going to be not hot because mommy issues and needs more feral. Ah, well, you may be right about that, maybe. It's a while before we get to set. We'll, fi we'll find out. Um, Obara sent one. And, oh god, there's more. Uh, I'm a big fan. Got into League of Legends lore post Arcane, and I've watched over 30 hours of your content at this point. Love your videos as an art. Well, thank you very much for the watch time. That's really nice of you. That's really, I think you sent your super chat twice. I hope you didn't mean to do that. If you need a refund, uh, get in touch with me because you can refund these things with a click. It's not a problem. Um, Wolf three thir uh, 324 sent, do my furry scaly boys and girls proud, please. Aurelian deserves at least hot. Almost all of them do. No, not almost all of them. Not for me anyway. Um, off topic, but what happened to the sponsored Arcane videos? Okay, um, basically, we, we made one of them. And I think Necrit did one of them, and I think some a, a couple of other influencers did one of them. And then Riot were like, uh, we've internally changed our mind about this project, so we're we're cutting it there. Like one was enough. Uh, something about the way that the player base responded. They had they had some kind of internal change of mind. I don't know why it happened. Uh, but like they paid us in full. Like I got I got paid fully for all the videos I was supposed to do. I just didn't do them because they decided that they're publishing strategy changed or something. I don't know. It was some internal thing, um, which the, uh, the the influencer manager who, who contacted me about it was really like, they they seemed really broken up about it. And 
I don't know. It was something internal. Um, this is normal, by the way. Like, that's normal. That happens all the time. Like, content strategies change. Like, things change according to metrics and response. Like, that's a normal thing that happens. It's just business. But that's why I only did one sponsored video for Arcane. Um... Evan Lux sent a $5 super chat. Aurelian Soul's voice is so hot that it alone makes him triple S. I mean, I can see your argument there. We'll get to that in just a second. Once I'm done reading all these super chats. Oh my God. <laughs> if you keep sending these super chats, I'll never get to anyone. Bad Mabel. I think what you have for Ash Mirror is what I have for Nidalee. I know the character design is objectively bad, but I can't help but find it hot. Yeah, we'll get to Nidalee. We'll get to Nidalee. Don't you worry about that. But Aurelian Soul, he's hot. Um, We might, we might, we might as well just... just place him immediately. He's hot. For me, he's not smoking. Like, for me, he's not, like, he's not, ironically, not quite at the highest tier of everything, but he's a hot character. Like, he's def, like, he has the, he has the flamboyancy, he has the arrogance, he has the confidence. There's a size different kink thing there, if you're into size difference. Uh, there's a monster fucking thing, if you're into that sort of thing. Like, he has a lot of good features that make him hot. To me, he's like, yeah, I can see it. Like, mm, that's that's charming. That's hot. I can see the hotness. It's not just hot to someone else. I know that this thing is hot. But triple S smoking, eh? That's that's maybe a little bit like I'm not I'm not overwhelmed by him or blown away by him. I just like you know what? Yeah, I get a night out. Bit chat back. Yeah, sure. I can see it. Definitely. I don't know how you'd make out with him. Like I I feel like he doesn't have lips. Uh, and I don't know how that whole construction is, but like, you know, uh, phenomenal cosmic powers. That's always in like power is always hot. Like there's always, there's always a certain sexual appeal in a character who's just powerful, right? So yeah, he's a hot character, not so much as character model. The character model is a little bit, it's distorted to work on the rift, but he looks a little, he looks a little bit like he's got big head mode always turned on. Um, so, not so much the character model, maybe, but definitely the character as a concept and as a design. Yeah, it's a hot character. Not super hot, but hot. I, I, I can work with it. <laughs> Someone in chat says, if Fenivia is a MILF, then Orn is a DILF. I don't think Orn has any children, but he definitely has dad energy. Like, I don't think he's technically a DILF, because I don't think he has any kids. But I think, like... But I think he would probably adopt children. Like if like if a child that was hungry and weak stumbled into his forge, then he'd be like, you're very small and weak and need food. Eat food, then get out of here. But then he'd never actually kick them out. Like he'd be like, mm, you should leave. But he'd never kick them out. They'd just stick around and he'd be like taking care of them. But he'd never admit it. Like he'd be that kind of like he'd be that kind of dad character. Um, but we'll get to Orn once 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 we get there. Oh Lord, more super chats. Um, I've been watching you for as long as I can remember and I've learned a lot. Love your content, love from Brazil. Hey, thank you very much. It's actually weird. I look at my analytics and Brazil is like the, like my, most of my audience, like a third of it is in the United States, right? And then the next 25% is spread over a few areas. But the Philippines and Brazil are two of, apparently my big audiences are in the Philippines and Brazil. I don't know why, but but you are, and thank you for for being here. Is there anyone from uh, from the Philippines in chat, by the way? Shout it out. <laughs> no champion is hotter than Leona. Diana, maybe. Oh, man. I mean, Diana probably has complicated feelings at this point. Oh, God. I got the Brazil crowd going. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Oh, uh, I mean, maybe I'll come to Brazil someday when it's not a pandemic anymore and, like, your president isn't that way. Um. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Lord. Okay, well, right. Okay, I'm just going to wait for chat to, to tucker themselves out and stop scrolling so fast. <laughs> oh, that's... Oh, my God. There's so many of you. That's what, that's what you get when you ask 3,000 people to do anything. You get a lot. Um, oh, uh, QT, thank you. I really love listening to Scandinavian man talking about League of Legends champions and regularly saying, oh God. Yeah, oh God. My life is weird. How, do you know how weird it is to have 3,000 people give a shit about which champion in a video game you think is hot? Do you know how weird that, like, I appreciate it. I love this. I am enjoying myself tremendously. I'm having a great time and I love you all in chat, but this is weird, right? Like, this is... That's not a thing that's normally supposed to happen to a person. Most people shouldn't give a shit who most people think are hot champions, right? But it, but I, I, I can get a couple of thousand people to care about it on a stream somehow. So that's weird. Much though I appreciate it. Brazilian who lives in the US. Oh, right. Well, thank you, Cassiano. Right, moving on. 
to, uh, well, the first furry bait, like the real, I guess Aurelian is kind of furry bait, I guess Alistair, well, a minotaur, is a minotaur a furry? Technically, aren't they more like mythological monsters? I think they probably bridged the gap, but the first real furry of the evening, um, which is, uh, the Lord of the Sun himself. Now, the one thing that makes Azir not very hot is that he's a slave owner, like, that's, that's, that's a big thing to have to overlook, uh, is the, that, that whole aspect of his, of his lore. But the problem is, if we started taking the lore too much into account, we'd have to throw a lot of characters out for being war criminals, um, <laughs> and murderers and stuff. And, like, villains can be hot, too. So, so let's, let's just, let's, let's shove that into the background of our minds. Not forget about it, but just, you know, just maybe not have it be in the forefront of our heads and talk about just the character design. Not that I, oh boy, it's, mm, just like, I have a complicated relationship with Azir because I've made a few videos about how I think his character is a villain, actually. Like he's not, he's not heroic. He's not a hero, he's a villain. He should be understood as a villain, ultimately. Like a villain with a redemption arc, maybe, but a villain, like, and people keep posting in my comments saying like, well, I mean, it was rational of him to keep slaves, though. Like, it was just a rational, sensible, smart thing to do. It's not because he liked having slaves. It was just the sensible, intellectual, smart thing. And I don't... The vibes of that are bad. I hope you understand that when you post a comment like that. Those are very bad vibes. I don't, I don't like the vibes of a comment that's that eager to rationalize why a ruler, a person with absolute divine power handed down from the gods, should like, no, it's a smart, sensible thing to do. He's a, it was a, he was a, being a good, smart ruler. And especially don't post that fucking CGP Grey video at me anymore. Rules for rulers, don't post it at me anymore because none of you understand it. None of you understood that video even a little bit. So I don't want to hear, so I, I have a complicated relationship with Azir, because I think he's a good character, I just don't, I just, I, I just think very differently about him than most other people, apparently. Um, so that, that makes it complicated to talk about, and for my money, is like, I, I really think Azir is not hot. Like, I'm sort of like, he's probably hot to someone else, but I disagree. Like, I just... <laughs> I just don't think that he's hot, like as such. Mostly because like he's 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 covered in all those sharp shells. He's like he's so imperious and self-centered, and he just doesn't he doesn't seem to be like he's not really charming, right? Like he it, like they could, you can have a hot character who's very self-centered and kind of and kind of self-aggrandizing. Aurelian is hot partly because he has all of that like yes, I am the greatest thing in the universe. But Azir is more like. I deserve to be the god of the world. Fuck you. Like he's he's more unpleasant. Like there's a little bit more of that. Like like being in a room with him feels like it would be tedious. Like like it would be it would be really kind of just not a good time at all. Even if you think he's hot, it'd be like oh my god. Like and it's not that I mean he's sort of somewhere between not hot and anti hot for me. Because, like, I really don't think he's hot. Like, just the character design, the way that he's put together, his armor design isn't very appealing. Like, I don't think his armor makes him look particularly hot. I think he'd be hotter if he took the armor off. Like, if we could actually see, like, the bird character and, like, see his hands and, and like, his arms and his musculature, if he was a little, like, S-tier if naked, basically, right? Like, he's S-tier if he's naked. He, he would get a lot more attractive if we could see more of his humanity, as it were. But because he's so bound up in being the ruler of Sharima, and that's the only goddamn thing he ever thinks about. Like, I don't think Azir knows what sex is. Like, well, he he, he fucked a lot when he was human. Like, when, when he was human, he had concubines, he had harems, like, he fathered a lot of children out of wedlock. That's how, how we have Sivir. Um, like, he, he, he got his fuck on, but after the ascension, I feel like that's just kind of gone from him. I don't think he he knows how to fuck anymore. Like I don't think he that that sexuality even enters his head because he's so I am the god of Sharima. All people must like be subject to me and I shall build the like like he's like he's only talking about that in the same way that like someone who's really into I don't know, like, like someone who's just like too much into model trains, like not in a way that it's a fun hobby, but it's like, oh, this is too much. Like you're too much into model. Like this is, you can't talk about anything other than your goddamn model trains. And like, 
and you can't make a connection with them, right? Because they just only have one speed and it's model trains all the time. Azir only has one speed and it's Shurima, Shurima, Shurima must rise, Shurima, to me, sand soldier, Shurima. Like, that's the only thing he knows how to talk about. And that's just not hot. Like, it's... Aurelian can talk about other shit. Like, he's, oh, yes, the stars, I forged those. Oh, and the worlds that orbit them. Yes, pretty. Like, he can talk about a million things and make them all about him. And that's kind of charming and hot. But Azir can only talk about one thing. It's fucking Shurima. And he can't change the subject. And you can't have a conversation with him. And, like, if, like you, you, I think you could sit on Azir's desk with your ass in the air, having written, fuck me, daddy, on both of your ass cheeks. And he wouldn't get it. Like, he, he would still be like, hmm. <laughs> like, he'd still be thinking about the next monument he's erecting to Shurima. You can't, like, it just, it's not hot. Like, you can't get hotness into him because he doesn't have it. Like, it's just, ugh. Like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you do. He would never go there. Like, he, the most you would ever get Azir to do was be take you as a concubine because the alliance is politically advantageous. Right? Like, you just like, oh, if you take me as a concubine, you shall have the allegiance of the whatever in the, and their armies or whatever. And he's like, yes, we shall have the ceremony. And then, like, on the wedding night, you just, he just sit, like, on one side of the bed, planning out military campaigns. And you'd be there, like, we're going to do anything about, like, uh, do we need an heir at some point? Something. Like, that's how I feel about Azir. He's not hot because he just doesn't have, you, you can't get him to be, to be hot with you ever. <laughs> I, I, I see, I see maybe I, I went a little too far with chat there. <laughs> that visual. Yeah, I mean, I want, but I want you to understand, like, like, that's why he's not hot is because, like, you could be the most depraved sexual freak in the world and he wouldn't get with you. Like, he just, he just wouldn't know how to do that. Um, like, that's why he's not hot. It's like, it's like you, you can't get him horny. <laughs> So, moving on to uh, the Cosmic Man. No, I don't think Azir is ace, by the way, I should say. I don't think he's ace. I don't think he's asexual. It's just that it's, it's more that the concept doesn't enter his mind anymore. Like, if he remembered how to be horny, he could probably be horny. But he doesn't remember how to be horny. Like, it's, it's not that he's asexual. It's more that just he's got so much other shit on his mind that it's like, it's just not part of his life anymore. <laughs> Anyway, Bard. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I can sort it like he's got the big physique, right? Like he's big, he's got the big arms, he's like he's got the the large sort of dad bod kind of body thing. He's got the beard, but it's like, eh, like he's got the horn noise. Like, yeah, I mean, you couldn't have a conversation with him, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. Like to me, it's not hot. Like I, but I am, I am on the, on this, on the situation which like, I could see that it's hot to someone else. Like I can see that someone looks at Bard and goes like, that's the thing, like the mask. And like, he's, he plays you the music of the universe. Like he's always sort of singing these gorgeous harmonious tunes from the universe. Like he's playing around with, with cosmic powers in his hand. Sure. I mean, I guess I can see that that's someone's thing. To me, it's just not like. Like, he'd be nice to cuddle with. Like, maybe we should have a tear for that. Like, you, you could cuddle with him. Uh, like, I can see that. Like, I can see that he probably gives really good hugs. Uh, like, he, he would carry you in his arms, and that would be quite nice. But... Hot? No. To me? No. Like, someone probably gets off on it, but... Yeah, hot. Like, the best I can do here is hot to someone else. <laughs> The chimes would watch. Oh no, Inku Blue. No, 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 no. Now you've ruined it. No, he's not hot. No, the chimes would watch. No, he's not hot. No, no. We have to. We have to bump him down. The chimes would be watching. It wouldn't be hot. You're right. They'd be there on the bedside table. They'd be looking all the time. They'd be looking and they'd be tilting their little Ghibli faces at you. And like you don't know if they're judging. You don't know if they're children. Like you don't. No, he's not hot anymore. You ruined it. You ruined it. He's gone. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Can't in it. No, not the chimes. The chimes make it weird. The chimes make it weird. <laughs> okay, there were some super chats. Oh lord, there was a few. Um 
Right, okay, let me scroll down and see if we can find all of them. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, grief, there's a many. Uh, hang on, wait a minute. Uh, here we go. Mondabunga said, objectively, yes, this is weird. Yes, it is weird. It is weird. It is weird. Um, Colin sent a $3.92 super chat. If they ever expand on Talia's time in the Freljord, I want Orn to be a sort of father figure to her as a young trans woman. Yes. Fuck. Oh, Talia and Orn. Oh, they'd have a good... They were, that's a good That's a good character pairing. Like, they'd have such a cute dynamic together, like father-daughter thing. Oh, that would be that would be cool. Oh, I want that. Fuck. I need to write that fanfic. Um... Snavel Link sent a super chat saying, My first TV Sky live stream said I can't stay, but I will be watching in full later. Hope it's a long one. I mean, it's probably gonna be. <laughs> if that is your segment, is anything go by. Be nice to Zaddy's set and Victor. Oh, Victor. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to Victor. Uh, uh, Lisa sent a super chat saying, Thank you for the content. It's uh, given me a lot of joy lately. You really revived my love for the Lauren characters. Heal stuff for Yulan. Uh, <laughs> Yulan. Oh, man. Yeah, be so the fire, Yulan. No boy, I have a in your stuff. Ugh. Ranking people based on how hot I think they are went. No, not doing that with real people. Never. <laughs> Mars Ultra sent one from Canada. I found your videos after Arcane and after watching them slowly returning to Lee. Keep up the great stuff. Oh god, I hope I didn't make you play League of Legends. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Play Legends of Runeterra instead. It's a better game. Um, Time Lord Rick, let's get it out of the way. Grab that Pantheon by his perfect abs and throw him in triple S. We'll get to Pantheon. Uh, TB Sky, clear bird bias. No anti-bird bias. <laughs> Lexus Place says, Sky keeps me sane during my work shifts. Quick, everyone, send a dollar. His reaction will be pr priceless. Don't, ever, like, please, um, I know that this person was kidding, but please don't ever feel pressure to send super chats or donate or anything. Like, it, this is one of the things, like, my job is very weird. It's weird that people give me money to do this stuff. But one of the rules I have for myself is that I will never, I never want anyone to feel pressured to give me anything. Right? Like, if you have the money, and if you think, hey, this is cool, I'll give that $2 for, like, what he's doing. That's completely fine, but I don't ever want it to be a thing of, like... Like, there's sometimes with some streamers where you feel like, like, on Twitch, like, with the hype trains and things like that, there's this pressure, like, oh, give the money, give the money, give... Like, you have to give money to participate. I don't want that to be the vibe here. So, if you want to give me a tip, I appreciate it. But if you don't want to, or you can't afford to, or you feel like, oh, shit, I kind of need that money for my groceries or whatever... Don't do it. Like, and if you need refunds for anything, always reach out because, like, yeah. Uh, like, online platforms exploit us a lot already. Like, they constantly pressure us to give money. Like, every video game you play has predatory economies. I, you know, don't don't want to bring that vibe here. Anyway, uh, I wonder what happens if two Ascended get a kid. Yeah, I'm curious if they can even breed. Like, I, I think maybe the Ascended aren't, can't have children anymore. Uh, I don't think it's ever been confirmed, but I think it was implied at one point that, like, that they don't, they can't reproduce. I think so. Uh, blew my mind to find out Bard is infinite in size. I don't think Bard has a size. Like, when we see Bard, his character design, this is like a, a temporary form that he adopts. Like, he made this out of some stuff he found in a cart so that he can walk around on Rune Terra um, and have a physical shape, but he doesn't have a, a, a body as such. He's more of a he's more of a cosmic force uh, than a person as such. Uh, Call Sign Rogue said, Aurelian Soul is snarky and powerful, Asir is a narcissist. Yeah, that's that's probably a good way, like that's a way to think about it. Eldrick Sunby, your videos have taught me so much about design and animation, which inspired me to apply to a school for game and art design, and I got in. Oh, congratulations. I hope you have a good time there. Awesome Inator sent one that says, Boils down to Saul has a reason to be cocky as he is and deserves to be after being controlled for so long as does not. That's also a... a, a, a realm. Strix sent a super test saying, How would this sex benefit Shurima? Yeah, that's the vibe, right? Like, Azir would probably fuck you if he thought it would get him, like, access to more political power. <laughs> you could probably get it that way. Like, that's how to get him is like... like <laughs> Have sex with me and I will give you an army or whatever. That'd probably work. Uh, Wolf I sent one says, as you would be like that one meme, I don't actually like sex. Put your clothes back on. Let me tell you about Shurima. Yeah, that's his vibe for me. <laughs> uh, High Strider, large music man, my beloved. Yes. Uh, Talia is canonically older than Kaisa now, right? I date her. Yeah, absolutely. Like, Lore Talia is definitely older than Kaisa. Uh, Miriam Chori, thanks for getting me to study character design. You're very welcome. Samuel Samson, hottest champion is brand because on fire, fire hot. I mean, valid argument, I guess. So what you're saying is that Shurima rises, but Azir doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lucian, thank you. <laughs> oh, it's Super Chat today. The previous person made me do it. Ugh. I know you're joking, but it still gives me anxiety. Um, 
Jim, Jam, Sandman, Pepsi, The Legend, and Victor Henson. Thank you very much. Uh, hello from Moldova. Oh yes, I'm. I'm. I'm really. I'm curious to see your Eurovision entry this year. By the way. Oh, is Dinka here? Insert Mel comment. <laughs> uh, I mean, I considered putting all the arcane sh characters in, like I. But like we just. But it was. Uh, I think this stream is going to be long enough already, and we might do a separate one where we talk about arcane characters. Um. Probably. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> there. Brand brand before Blitzcrank? Did I forget Blitzcrank's splash art? Huh. Okay. I forgot Blitzcrank's splash art, it turns out. I don't have it in my files, but uh, Blitzcrank is... Uh, I, I considered putting him in Not Disgust. It's the thing, like, we don't know what Blitzcrank's lore is anymore. Um... The way that he's presented in the game, he's an adult. Like he's clearly an adult. Like he's he 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 speaks and talks with like gravitas. In the lore, it used to be that he was like running a dating service for other champions for a while as a comedy bit, where he was like clearly an adult. But there's been some implication, especially in the Wild Rift incarnations of the character, that he's supposed to be a child. Like that he's supposed to be childlike, still sort of figuring out who and what he is. Um. And so, like, I don't know about Blitzcrank, like, like, my baseline is that he's not hot, just because his character design is so bad right now. Like, the Wild Rift version we could maybe discuss, but, but because I don't know, like, I don't know if he's supposed to be a child character. Like, I don't know if he's supposed to be understood as, like, a large robot child who doesn't know the world. We're gonna put him in the Not Discussed tier, because it's just, like, maybe we could talk about him if we knew how to think about his character, but we don't, because his lore is so nowhere right now uh, like I, I don't know how to think about the character um so yeah uh moving on to someone who is objectively hot but maybe not in the way that you would want him to which is brand now brand splash art is substantially better looking than <laughs> than his character model um in its way but i'm 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 gonna be pretty clear and say that brand is not hot like he just he isn't um, uh, just cause, like, on the one hand, first of all, because he's too basic. Like, you have this, this character who's this, this fiery thing, like, made of flames and magma, and it's like, and that's, that, that, that's it? This is all that looks like? It's just, he's got these shitty rave pants, and I guess he's got lava abs? Why? Like, that's boring. Like, if, if we have a character who's supposed to be, like, a fire elemental monster, like, this burned, charred... Like, then I want to see some fucking, like, some kinky shit. Like, some, some, like, some, some stuff where, like, he's missing a part of his body and there's fire there instead. So, like, it's dangerous. Like, there's an element of danger or, like, that he's more monstrous. Like, he's, he should be weirder. Like, if you have a character with a concept is this, he should be weirder. This is too basic. Like, this is not... Oh, it's, he, he's, he, like, he's literally just an infernal skin. Like, he's just an infernal skin that got to be a champion somehow. And it's not interesting. Like, it's not interesting, it's not fun. And as a character, he's also, like, he's sort of in that Azir level where the only thing Brand cares about is, like, oh, power, burning, flame, fire. You can't... No, like, and that's the other thing is, like, he should represent the power of fire, right? Like, fire, like, it's supposed to be kind of hot and horny. It's like the flames of passion, that sort of thing. Brand doesn't have any passion. He's just kind of miserable and dour. And it's like, eh, power, eh, world rumor. Like, he's kind of, eh. He's miserable. Like, I'm sure someone finds him hot, but I don't understand why. Like, you can do better for fire monsters than this. Like, he doesn't even... Like, the other thing, like, if you want to do a fire-themed monster, you should do some lava shit. Like, there should be some liquid, something flowing, something liquid that, like, kind of... Because liquid is kind of horny. Like, that's, that's... That's a little bit something there. But he just looks dry. Like, he looks like you tap on him on the side and it's like... Like, it's just like... You just knock on him like a door. Doesn't, like... You couldn't cuddle with him. Nah. That's not hot. I... No. Doesn't doesn't work for me. And, of course, the, the character model doesn't help. <laughs> At all, but no, Brand is Brand is not hot. Um, I really don't think so. What about Smooth Brand? He's even worse. Like he's even less interesting. Like, and that's the thing. By the way, you should know about me. The things that I tend to find hot are things that, like, I don't respond that much to things that are just like made to be attractive. Like, it, like a character like well, I mean, we'll get to them later. But like a character like Katarina, for example. I, I can't really be that interested in them. I, I just can't because it's like, oh, it's it's 
the fantasy hot babe from every hot video game, like every hot video game babe, it's that one. Ash, I'm interested in because of the, I have a thing for archery. I don't know why, like the white hair and the archery thing gets me. But like Ari, I wouldn't have found her hot except the Ruined King game made her a lot more interesting. Right? So, you know, yeah. But that moves us on to um, Freljord Daddy, who's obviously uh, not hot. Not at all. Like, not even... I don't know why anyone finds this attractive even a little bit. Uh, this is... You're all weird. It's freaky. I don't understand you. You all have you all have daddy issues. Uh, and I don't want to talk to you. I'm kidding. I am kidding. I am kidding. I am obviously kidding. I am joking around. I am making fun of you. <laughs> I just lost all my subscribers. Um, kindly shut up, phone. I'm doing something. Don't give me notifications. Uh... <laughs> But no, for real, you all have daddy issues, all of you. Uh, it, you all have daddy issues if you like Braum. It's, I'm sorry, that's just the rules. If you like Braum, somewhere inside you there's daddy issues. Like, if, if you think he's hot, somewhere inside you there's daddy issues. Braum is kind of hot. Not that much. Like, he's 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 sort of in between. He, like, I, I'm sort of hot, more hot to someone else. But no, I can see it. Like, I understand. Uh, I understand it. I can see that he's hot. I have to give it to him. That was badly phrased, but like I have to, I have, to, I have to allow it that he's hot. Not just hot to someone else, but it's like it's on the limits. It's on the edge of where I'd say yeah, more hot to someone else. Because like, because I really again, it's a little bit like the Asir thing. I don't, and and a little bit like the Akshan thing even. I don't really get the sense that Brom ever would. Right? Uh, Santa Brom. Santa Brom would. Santa Brom fucks. Like, he... Oh, boy. Like, he will show you a good time. Uh, Santa Brom absolutely would. But Brom? Like, Brom himself? Like, ah, heart of the Freljord. Mother always said, don't lose. Like, the guy who drinks goat milk and, like, just kind of rescues children? is Like, would he... Do you think he would? Like, if you tried to fl flirt with him? Like, Ilawi has tried. We have that in the Ruined King game. Like, Ilawi has directly, like, hey, Sailor, wanna, like, wanna come get with, like, the hottest lady in the game has tried. She has tried to get with him, and Brom's reaction was like, uh, well, uh, very, char very charming, uh, but uh, Brom, perhaps not right now. Like, and he, he, the vibe I get from Brom is that he wouldn't. Like, that he would, he would feel awkward about that attention. Like, if you tried to flirt with him, he would be like, yeah. Like, he, he wouldn't, he would be flattered by it and he'd like it, but, but I don't think, like, he would. Like, I, I really kind of get asexual vibes from Brahmas. Like, he could be ace. I don't think necessarily. Uh, but just that he's such a nice man. Like, he's just such a nice man that even, like, again, is that a serious issue? Even if you went on all fours in front of him and asked him to clap your cheeks, what he would give would be like, uh, like a gentle little spank on one cheek and then he'd like stand you up straight and give you a, and put your clothes back on like he's he feels like he's so much of a gentleman that like it would be impossible to even get him in bed like because he just he just would never he would just would not get the fucking hint ever um like that's kind of what it feels like to me and that's a little bit more like in the hot to someone else too but i can see why people would want like i can see why people would want to try i can see why someone would want to get him there Right? Because he would be the most respectful, gentle, kind lover you have ever had in your life. It's just, I think it's a lot of work to make Braum actually, like, to, to make him actually go there. I think he, he likes probably, like, demisexual. Like, that, maybe not ace, but demisexual. Like, there needs to be a strong emotional connection before he would even go there. Um... Like, that's, that's, that's kind of what I think about. And someone in chat says the purity is part of the appeal. And that's true, yes. Like, that's that's part of the appeal of the character is that that he's he is in some ways so innocent. Um, but yeah, no, Santa Brom, Santa Brom fucks. Like, Santa Brom, you can get him with a, with, like, with a, with a, with a glass of milk and two cookies, right? But base Brom, mm, I just, um, yeah, I, it's, it's borderline. Um, Let's see. Uh, oh god, there's more super chats. Um, <laughs> god, half of the stream is going to be reading these. Let's see. Uh, and thus you acquire 10 more American dollars. Thank you very much, Keegan Watts. Vivian Alexander Rivers. I'm the one that finds Alistar hot, so thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, super Kirby, you ask a question about Yordles. We'll get to Yordles, don't you worry. Lost Phoenix fired up and ready to serve Blitzcrank. Yeah, I know. Uh, Hidetoma Mitani, usually I don't go for men because I'm not into men, but I'd go to hell and back for Braum and Pantheon. Not that they would let me. No, like, Braum would never let you. 
Um, <laughs> Brock would never let you. Cinder, thank you very much for that one. Hera, please hydrate. Hope Kate isn't a punching bag anymore. We'll get to Caitlyn in just a second. I from Ukraine. Hot is not always just looks IMO. That's true. Uh, Ruan Vyas, Britska, thank you for that super chat. Uh, Cassiano the Assis. Braum is super hot, but I feel like it's wrong to find him hot. He's too pure. Yeah. <laughs> Akira and Overture. Yes, I love Braum. Yes, I have daddy issues. What about it? Lemoti and Santa daddy. Uh, yep, that's true. Braum is daddy solution, says Runvitus. Yes. Awesomeinator. Me on the outside. We should be fair and true. Me on the inside. Every daddy should be true list here because I need somebody to be my daddy. Yeah, I mean, I know the feeling. Um, just maybe not a daddy. I'm more... <clears throat> <clears throat> I didn't say anything. Shut up. Henry XLII. I'm wheezing from you talking about hor horniness and thirst at the same meticulousness as your other lists. Love your work. Got me into character design. Well, that's my brand, right? I'm not just going to do a tier list and say this champion is hot, this champion is not. I'm going to get into excessive detail about it. That's the vibe. That's why people, that's why 3,000, God, there's 3,400 people here now. That's why 3,400 people are here now, because I, I don't know how to shut up. I don't know how to stop explaining and talking. So I end up saying terrible things that can be clipped for great comedy effect. Right, moving on. So if Caitlyn hadn't gotten that art and visual update. If she hadn't gotten that little art and sustainability update, she would be in the, like, she would be in the not hot tier or anti-hot, one of the two. Because her old character model and her old character design, it was, like, it was a stripper costume. Like, it was the stripper costume verse that was the porn parody of herself. And I, I just, when things are trying so fucking hard, like, when they, when they're trying so hard to be horny and sexy, I just get turned off. Like, that's just like, no, Jesus Christ, put your clothes back on. What are you doing? Like, that that just makes me cringe inside because it's like, oh, my God, just fucking like, no, that doesn't work for me. Then she did get the update and she does look a lot more like she's dressed in clothes that make sense for her. Right. Like she a little bit like I still think her character design could do some tweaks and things, but this is a good compromise between something that's functional and something that is true to her her character design and like her history. Now, note that the character model looks a little bit odd in its proportions, like her head is a little big and like the shoulders are a little slim. That's because it's designed to be seen from the top down. Like a lot of the character models, when you look at them from the front, they look a little odd. Um, Senna is a good example of that also. But yeah, like the way she is now, yeah, you know what, like that, fair enough, Caitlin. Um, you're hot to someone else, I think. Uh, it's not really my thing, like, it, hmm. like I think she's pretty. Like, I think she's really pretty. Um, I think she's beautiful, but I just don't, I don't find this version of her hot, really. Like Arcane Caitlin, that might be another story. Maybe we'll do a tier list stream of the Arcane characters at some point. But Caitlyn as she is, eh, not really. Like, it, like she's sapphic, right? Like, she wouldn't be into me. Like, she, like I would, I'm just not her kind of thing. Like, I just don't get the vibe that she would ever be interested. Because she's obviously, like, she's obviously into vibe. Like, that's also the thing is, like, I'm, I'm not really going to be attracted to someone who finds me, like, who just would never. Right? Like, Caitlyn... She's hot to the Sapphix. Like, she belongs to the Sapphix, I think. Like, uh, well, like the, the Enbies and, like, maybe not to me. Like, it's, it's just not not for me. It's not made for me, right? Like, and that's that's kind of like, eh. So, like, I don't find it hot, but I know that it's hot to someone else. Okay, uh, let me just... There aren't any more Super Chats, are there? <laughs> Shellen is the best Ruskin girl, also best boo. Ah, Cinder, I'm uh, the ex of Sigafof. <laughs> the, the, uh, the best boo, uh, the fin near Persufin. Near Persufin, daddy, the best boo, uh, the best marker, uh, best uh, butchiga, uh, best usector. Near the Sufin screw how. Um, first of all, the snaggers are fine, my brom. Shut up. <laughs> uh, no, uh, no, I don't. Um, anyway. Moving right along to... Oh, we're staying in Piltover, actually, aren't we? And yeah, Camille is hot. There's no way around it. Like, much like with Ash, I have my gripes about her character design. Like, I... Th like, 
she was supposed to be an old sort of matriarchal, like head of the house, Victorian sort of stiff upper lip, gentlewoman who doesn't take shit from nobody. She was supposed to have sort of maturity and agedness to her. And the way that they designed her, they had this like, oh, but she has a hex core inside her, which means that she like her skin is smooth and her physique is tight and like there's never like and that to me is that that annoys the hell out of me because make a fucking decision. Do you want a hot young woman? Then make a hot young woman. That's fine. You can make those if you want to. It's okay. But if you wanted to make a hot older woman, like a woman who has experience, who has seen a lot of life, if you wanted a MILF, if you wanted like a, a like a hot granny or whatever, like if that's what the character you wanted to make, then make that character. Like that, you have to accept that there are certain character traits that have to be there. Like there have to be some wrinkles, there have to be some lines on the face, smile lines, frown lines, whatever it is, there has to be a mark of experience and age somewhere in the character design, right? Having said all that, I mean, you... <laughs> You've seen her hips, right? Like you've seen, you've seen the shape of her. The, the those legs are really long, and they're sharp. Like they have knives on them. That's hot. Like if you can't, she is the dump truck queen of League of Legends, and you can't deny it. You can't deny it. Like she has the thighs, she has the legs, she has the booty, she has like the tiny little itty bitty snatched waist thing going on. Yeah, yeah, it works. Like as a character, that's just f for hotness sake. Yeah, it works. Yeah, it works. It works. Can't deny it. Can't deny it. Much as again, I wish she had a different character design for the context of League of Legends. Yeah, no, it's hot. Of course it is. Of course it is. It's designed to be hot. It's designed really well to be hot. It works. She has that stern attitude like that. She has that that personal power thing going on. And again, the thing where she, not with one hand, she probably couldn't kill you with one hand, but she could kill you with her, I mean, she doesn't have toes, but with with one foot. And again, don't want to be killed, but she, yeah, someone who could, but who won't, but who could, but who won't, but who could, but who won't, but they could, but they wouldn't. There's, there's a little element of, like, there's some power element of danger. It's like, that works, you know, that works. She's hot. Can't deny it. Can't deny it. <laughs> Let's see. Um, oh god, more super chats. Good lord. Uh, Smile Dog, thank you for that one. Wilson Kimber, you have opened Pandora's box sky and we need an arcane tier list now. I mean, maybe later. Um, like Urgot said, dem legs. Yeah, uh, Urgot has a thing for legs, doesn't he? Mordekaiser is daddy material. Oh, we'll get to Mordekaiser. Don't you worry about that. Ruby Severin Whitworth sent a $6.69 super chat. At least uh, that's what it looks like to me. I think it was probably uh, it's five pounds. Yes, Vi and Caitlin have been claimed by us suffix. Thanks for understanding that fact. Trans lesbians for ref uh, trans lesbian for reference. Love your work. Love your support of us. Hey, trans rights, everyone. Hey, could we get a trans rights in chat? Just like, because if anyone's here who's who's like shitty about trans people, I'd like them to go away. So. So yeah, if we could get that in, tra in chat, that would be lovely. Uh, just, to, just to kind of drum them out. And if you think, oh, you're being unnecessarily hostile towards people who aren't, who don't align with your radical gender ideology, good, yes, I am hostile towards you. Go away, I don't want to talk to you. Uh, you're, you're not welcome here. I'm sorry, this is not a space for you. I'm not sorry, what am I saying? I'm not sorry, fuck off. Anyway, what were we talking about? Right, champions that are hot. Um, moving on to Cassiopeia. And I f I'm in two minds about her um, in Cassiopeia. Because, like, a snake woman, that's just hot. Like, I'm sorry, there's no snake lady. Snake ladies are hot. They're always hot. It doesn't, it fucking doesn't matter. They're always hot. All of them, every single one, all the time. Snake ladies are hot. Uh, that's just a fact that I'm not going to explain or justify. But it's like, there's something about Cassiopeia where it's like, I wish they'd gone a little harder. Like, I wish they'd given her, like, scales on the arm. Again, it's that thing of, like, we have a champion that's supposed to be, like, a monster champion. Like, this this character who's been transformed into a human-snake hybrid. But they do that really thing of, like, rather than being a, a monster champion, like a monster girl, she's more like a human in a costume. And that's just, like, the vibe of the character design. is like, it's like, 
Snake stops at the waist, right? Like, we have snake here, and then, no, uh, waist and above, no snake. Just, just normal human in, like, a costume from the waist down. And, like, the thing that's attractive, like, like that's hot about Monster Girls, at least in my opinion, is, like, you get those transitional mixings and matchings of, of parts that are human and parts that are not. Where it's not like this clear cut dividing line where it's just like we've cut a person in half and then sewed a snake bottom to them. Yeah, I wish I wish she was more like there was just a little bit more like you had like maybe little scaly patches on her shoulders. Or maybe if she didn't have breasts. Like maybe if they just took the titties off because why would a lizard have like lizards are not mammals? Like maybe do that. Like incorporate a little bit more of of like the lizard, like the 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 snake aspect into the whole of the character design, that would be so much better. So I'm a little bit in two minds about her, where it's like, I see so much more potential for hotness, like if you wanted to make this thing hot, like if that's part of the point. Um, it's like, that kind of bothers me, but even so, snake ladies are always hot. Like they just are. Like even the ones that don't live up to their potential, they're just hot. Snake ladies are hot. Snussy and Sniddles in chat. Okay, yeah, I I, I deserve that, I suppose. <laughs> oh, Lord. And of course, like, again, I'm talking about, like, if, if she had more snake features, like, part of the hot thing about snake ladies is they can unhinge their jaw. I'm just saying, like, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, shut up. I'm just saying. Um, But yeah, like, Cassiopeia is not the most interesting snake monster girl I've ever seen in my life. Um, but snake ladies are hot. They just are. I'm, they just, every single one of them, are, they're always hot. Spirit Blossom Cassiopeia is a lot hotter. Like, Spirit Blossom Cassiopeia kind of understands the assignment a little bit more. Um, but yeah. <laughs> oh, someone in chat bringing up XCOM? Yeah, the snake ladies in XCOM are hot. Have you seen them? Have you played XCOM? They're hot. They're all hot. They're dangerous and terrifying, but they're hot. Uh, different noodles send a super chat saying trans rights. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Victor Henson sent a five uh, super chat saying we got Renata for a reason. She's old and wise, and she has the experience. That's what's hot. As a lesbian, Brom is the only man I might try. That's ve very valid, M. Wadi. That's very valid. Uh, Franz Carrillo, your animation with help grow my art. I love you. Thank you very much, and uh, you're welcome. A little bit extra for making my heart melt with the call for trans rights. You don't need to send me money for that, uh, Ruby. You don't need to. Uh, that's the um, that's the bare minimum. I'm doing the bare minimum there. But thank you. Uh, Bakle, okay. What about Spirit Blossom Cassio? Yes, I answered that one. Spirit Blossom Cassio is is better. Like she understands the assignment more. Uh, like using the sort of snake attitude. Um, Lucas Montero, hello from Brazil. We love you, dude. Will you include Bet Skill for Renata? She's in here. I believe she's on the list somewhere. Where's her? Uh, Syndra, Seraphine, Ramis. There she is, Renata. She's right there. We'll get to her. The most infuriating thing about her splash art is her splash art shows the scales going slightly beyond the gold belt. Yeah, I mean the splash arts are usually better than the character model, but the base design is still this very, this very stark division of like here's the human part, here's the snake part, and never the twain shall meet. Um, which, which, which bugs me. Anyway. Moving on to the first void monstrosity of the evening, which is Cho'Gath, and like, I guess Cho'Gath could, Gath could be hot if you have like a Vor kink, um, which is fair and valid. Like, I, people get so weirded out by Vor. Like, it's, oh my god, what the, what possible thing, like, how does that even work? I don't know. I don't know how it works, but it's not that weird. Like, it's... It's, it's just like fantasizing about being consumed and made part of something else. Like, it's it's strange, but it's not that... Like, some people are into feet. Feet are weird. Feet are weird. Do you know why people are into feet? Like, one of the reasons why? It's because the neural pathways that connect the nerves from the bottom of your feet to your brain sort of intersect a little bit with the pleasure center in the brain so that the brain starts associating feet for whatever reason with pleasure. Like, that's one of the reasons foot kink is so common. That's fucking weird. Like, that's people who find feet sexy just because of an accident of the way that neural pathways are constructed in the brain. That's weird. Weird. Vor is just like, it's something about being inside another person. How is that, how is that hard to understand? Anyway, I don't think it's as weird as people make it out to be, but it's not my kind of thing. Cho'Gath is, is, is emphatically to me not hot. Like, he just isn't, like, 
He doesn't even have that sort of monster fucker appeal to me because he's just this this spindly strange like this 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 just this mess of 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 limbs and thing of like like eh. like it doesn't look like he has anything to grab onto you. He doesn't look like it'd be interesting to touch him or like a strange sensation. He just looks like a thing with teeth. And there's, I don't know, there's, there's just nothing hot about it. Like, I think even the monster fuckers don't find Cho'Gath that hot. Like, I, I'll bet you anything, if, there, if he has rule 34 art, they change his character design substantially, like, to make him more bulky, like, to give him more mass, to, like, to do something, like, to make him more interesting in that way. But as he is, this character, like, no, this needs substantial changes before it gets there. Um... Like, yeah, like, some of his skins probably have a lot of monster fucker appeal, but base base version Cho'Gath is just, like, a shittier version of the Violator from Spawn, who also isn't hot. So, yeah, no, no, Cho'Gath doesn't work. And speaking of, of not hot, uh, Corky? Like, yeah, no, that's, no. I'm sorry, that's, no. I, I, I don't care how much of, of a daddy kink you have, no. No. Not even a little bit. I'm sorry, that's not... That's, that's not interesting. Like, that's not, mm -mm. it just isn't. Like, he, he is fun, he can be charming, I suppose, but nobody would want, like, I, probably, like, again, someone is into everything. There's always someone who's into it. Like, always, like, doesn't matter. Rule 34 applies. There's porn of it somewhere. Someone is into it, but I don't see it. Like, I can't, I can't comprehend. I don't, I don't understand how that works. Why someone would find Corky hot. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I I can't see it, and therefore he goes into the not hot tier. Yeah, he's cute, but that's not the same as being hot, Z. Like, that's not the same as being hot. He's not even anti-hot, because, like, to be anti-hot, you have, like, anti-hot is the tier where someone goes where they should be hot, but they just, like, they there's something about them that makes them not, like, that just makes them not hot. Corky isn't hot. Like, he shouldn't be hot in any version. Like, there's no version of Corky that's, that, that, that's... That's hot. There just isn't. I'm sorry. There isn't. <laughs> Skyn admitting he's into femdom the stream. I think you may be interpreting me wrong there, buddy. Just saying. Like, a lot of people think, oh, he... Because he he's into femdom. Am I? Turn your thinking around. Um... Zap Forth sent a 785 super chat. Sending this before I head back, if I may suggest a game for you to play and analyze... Uh, the Ori games. I've already played the first Ori game. Uh, that's over on my second channel, my Let's Play channel. Um, you can go check that out if you're interested. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. So this is where I, I might get uh, <laughs> I might get Dinka mad at me. Uh, talking about Darius, uh, big axe daddy from uh, from Noxus, and. I'm 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 on the I'm on the verge of putting him in not hot because I don't know for me something about Darius's vibes are just bad and this is like we're talking about the the version of him in his splash art and his character model I can definitely see it's because in the Tales of Rune Terra animated short no he's he, he's definitely hot to someone and in the uh, animated shorts that they made for Legends of Rune Terra he's definitely hot the splash art and the model. I'm a little bit on the like I'm I'm I would nearly put that in not hot, but it's hot to someone else. Like that that's that's where we're putting him. He's hot to someone else, I'm sure. Uh but I just don't he's like he's on the verge of where like I don't see it, really. Just because there's something about the way that the model and the splash art portray him. Like there's something about the vibes of him that just like I don't I don't mm. Yeah, no, like, again, where, like, it feels like, like, for example, the arms, right? Like, he's got those big, strong, muscular man arms that really should be hot, but, like, then this goddamn armor that he's wearing, that this big, bulky, bulbous, weird thing just doesn't really, it doesn't show off his physique, it doesn't really emphasize, like, how he's put together, I don't know, there's something about the vibes of the splash art and model that just don't work for me. That all gets resolved in the animated shorts. Like, they definitely catch the vibe of like, oh yeah, no, I get it now. This is definitely hot to someone. But 
Splash Art and Model, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I, this needs more female gaze. Like this, this need like it feels like Darius doesn't he doesn't need a full redesign, but he does just needs like he just needs like 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 a like a, a lady who's like appropriately horny for him to go in and like change a few details just to kind of showcase his charms. Uh because like this kind of doesn't to me. Like the thing is like this Darius. He looks like a power fantasy, like for men. He looks like a power fantasy for boys to me. Like he looks like, like this is, yeah, I'm gonna be the cool guy with the ax and the big armor and the spider eye. Like it looks kind of, it looks like a power fantasy for boys more than it looks like, like a, a romantic or sexual fantasy that's designed for anyone else. It doesn't even really look like it's supposed to appeal to like, it could even use some gay male gaze, like to to like to bring out the sex appeal here, because I don't think it's there in the model and and the character design. Um, but like, yeah, like the the animated shorts do a much better job of showing him off as appealing. Um, like I, I think that's where his sex appeal is. It's not really in his base character model, I don't think. Can we all agree on Kindred being the hottest monster? Says. Uh, well, I will get to Kindred. Ranking Pokemon characters based on hotness. No. <laughs> I am not open. No. Uh, awesome Inator. I'm not opening that can of worms. That's not happening. Sorry. Uh, 86 images for Chokath on Rule 34. Of course there are. Of course there are. Uh, a Necrofiend sent a super chat. A Chain Warden, do you think it's weird to find Lilia attractive if you're 19? That's not really for me to judge. Uh, you're 19. You know, everything you find attractive is probably a little weird. So that's I'm 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 not engaging with that, sorry. I can't really give you an answer there. Right, moving on. Uh to the moon lesbian. Whomst is Diana? And Diana is another one of those cases where like I feel like in more recent portrayals, like Legends of Runeterra, like the animated shorts, they've done a better job of like showcasing her charms. Like I really think her splash art lets her down a little bit badly. Uh just, I, I don't think it's a very good splash art for her. It's sort of supposed to show the moment when she does... I mean, it used to be her ult, but it's supposed to show the moment of, of like, Moonfall. Of, like, her, like, doing a burst of power or something. A splash art doesn't really communicate it. It's more like she's just kind of kneeling vaguely with a menacing glare. Um, and I feel like the character model also... Like, you can, you can tell the era it's from. Um, but still hot to someone else. Like I said, most champions are going to go here eventually. Uh, it's, 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 that's, that's sort of the vibe where it is. Like, I don't think her character is really designed to be hot as such. Like, I feel like the character isn't really designed specifically for that. Again, she's designed more to be a power fantasy, I think. Um, and power fantasies can be hot. It's just doesn't really appeal to me. Uh, like, I don't really look at that and go, oh, horny. Like, that... It's just not, just not for me. I see why someone else, though. Like, this is this is for other people. Again, maybe a little bit for the same reason as Caitlyn. Like, this is more for the Saffix, um, rather than being aimed at me. Um, and that's fair. Like, not everything has to be for me. Thank God. Like, can you imagine how exhausting that would be? <laughs> awesome, Inator. No, not the Pokemon, but the human characters. Most of the human characters in Pokemon are, like, 12. Like, no, absolutely not. Like, what? You have Cynthia, and that's, like, it. Cynthia and Luzamine. Who else? Like, who else is there even to talk about? What's a Sapphix? Oh, the Sapphix are ladies who love ladies. Or sometimes, like, feminine envies who love ladies. Like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, of granularity, and there's a lot, like, it's a spectrum thing. It's not a hard... It's not, like, it's not a hard binary, it's a spectrum. But it's basically, like, sort of feminine lady-aligned people who love feminine lady-aligned people. Sort of in that area. It's not my, my area of expertise, but that's... That's where it is. The professors and gym leaders. I mean, fuck it, I'm not even sure the many, most of the gym leaders aren't even... Like, they're all 16 or something, aren't they? Oh, people are making a lot of Pokemon suggestions. <laughs> okay, fine. If I can, if I can find enough adults uh, to talk about, sure, maybe sometime in the future. Um, 
Oh, more super chats. Uh, let's see. Would it not be fair to have a cute tier since Champion can have a cute face but not a sexy look? Yeah, but that would be a different stream. Uh, like we could we could rank champions according to how cute they are. That's also a, an option. But we're doing hotness right now, so cuteness isn't really into in in a, a discussion here. Uh, yeah, move on from the Pokemon talk, because let's talk about, uh, someone else who just is oozing with raw sex appeal, uh, that anyone would find attractive. Who is Draven? No, sorry. Draven. Um, uh, yeah. Draven. Draven. Draven is not hot. He's not hot. He just, he isn't. He's not hot. He just, he... I'm sorry, he's not hot. Draven isn't hot. Like, he just isn't. He's not even anti-hot because he's not, because he's not hot. He can't, I'm sorry, he isn't. He is not hot. He's, uh, he is pool party Draven. I know a lot of people are like horny for that and I understand that, that, that makes sense because that version of him is designed to be hot. But Draven, like this Draven, this one right here, this version of Draven, this Draven, this not hot. It, it. I'm sorry. It's not like versions of him can be hot. Like we've seen other portrayals of him. Like Legends of Runeterra, Draven is kind of hot. Um, but this Draven, this one, no, not hot. Sorry, he's fun. He is charming. He's not hot. Like Santa Draven. Yeah, people are bringing up Santa Draven, Draven Draven, uh, like um, the talk show host Draven. Lots of Dravens can be hot, but not this one. Not this one. He just isn't. Like, he's not designed to be. Like, I'm sorry. I, 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 I wish I could explain it better, but it's just I look at that and I go, no. Nope. No, no, no. No, that isn't. Like, maybe a version of him, maybe a, a different situation, maybe a different take, but not this. It just isn't. It's not hot. Like, and again, slightly for the same reasons as Azir, which is that, like, Draven to me, like, Draven is one of another one of those characters in the game who sort of gives me Arrow Ace vibes. Like, in the sense that, but I don't know that he would is, is particularly identify himself as such, but more that he's just so much up his own ass that he would never let anyone else up his ass, right? Like, you, like, you couldn't peck him, um... Because he's just too much, he's too much all about Draven. And it's not hot, like it's just, it just isn't. He's another one of those, like the, you, you go out with him and the only thing he'll ever talk about is how Draven is so cool. And he talk about, talks about himself in the third fucking person. I'm sorry, there's no character on earth that makes that, like maybe Aurelian Sol could get away with it, but Draven can't. Sorry, it's just, he's not, mm -mm, not this version, not, not here, not like that. Not when he's, like, running around with his axes and this stupid-ass outfit. Nope. Like, Draven is someone who would find Draven hot. Right? <laughs> he's Draven sexual. Yeah, the Draven head stays on during sex and, and all the other stuff that people are saying. Um, but no, he's just not... No. He's not hot. I'm sorry. He can't be. I, I don't see it. I cannot. I cannot. I'm sure, again, lots of rule 34 of Draven. No problem. But I don't. I can't vibe with it. Cannot vibe with it. Which moves us on to the good doctor. Mundo! Yay! Um, and... I mean, before the rework, it was easy. Just that he's just not... He's not really hot. He just isn't. Uh... Post rework, we have a problem because his character design really wants him to be hot. Like the character design is fucking desperate for you to thirst over him. Um, like it's 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 all like the the way that he's designed, and this is something I've complained about extensively already. Is like, yeah, it's not it's not a problem that Mundo is muscular. It's a problem that he's proportional and that his muscles look healthy, right? Like he looks he looks like he. He's like well, like he looks like a, a bodybuilder who's roided up a little bit, but he looks proportional. He looks well formed, and he looks like a gym bro. As you can see when you look at like Mr. Mundoverse, like the the skin that he has, where he's literally a gym bro, um, and that just conflicts because Mundo does. Uh, Mundo is doctor. Mundo throw cleaver at head and fix with like. 
And that's the thing, like, Mundo mentally, like, the, the way that he is as a character, he's too childlike. Like, he's, he's too childlike. He's too sort of comedy, weird, cartoon character, too childish in the way that he's put together. That, yeah, sure, like, thirst over the body all you want, but the character... The character is anti-hot. Because it's another one of those situations where it's like, yeah, theoretically that probably should be hot, and there's been way too much effort put into making it hot that really shouldn't have been put into it. But the character... As a whole, the character is not, it's just, just it, no, the vibes are wrong. The vibes are rancid. He's not a himbo. He's not a himbo, Bloodwire. A himbo is not, like, himbos are dumb of ass and big of heart. And they're obviously, like, they're huge and they're hot, right? But himbos are dumb of ass and big of heart. And Mundo isn't really that. Like, he's, he's, a, he's a crazy person who inflicts suffering and pain on people because he doesn't know what he's doing. He's not stupid, he's delusional. Like, and there's a big difference there. Like, this isn't a Kronk character. He's n he's not a Kronk, um, like, who makes spinach puffs and who, like, cares about making the people around him happy. He's delusional, he's deranged, and he's deeply childish, and that's, that's anti-hot. Like, I, no, mm -mm, no, no, he is not a himbo. He simply isn't. Um, so, no, like, that's, that's anti-hot, and, uh, we move Echo into the not discussed. um, because, again, Echo, at least, at least in the main game, he is, like, a seven, like, a 15 to 17 year old, uh, that's how he's portrayed, so he's not discussed. I think he was supposed to be older in Arcane, like, I think in Arcane, he's about, G like, he's a little bit younger than Jinx, so he's, like, 18 or something, um, still too young, I think, to be discussed, um, but in game, he's a kid. He's a street kid. So we're not discussing him. Which means we move on to someone we're definitely going to discuss. Whomst is Elise. And again, I have my criticisms of Elise. Like, she's sort of the peak of, again, like the same thing we talked about with Cassiopeia, where she's like this spider, black widow, monster girl thing. But the way that they portray her, like, the way that they make her is just, she's just a, a normal human lady in a, in a Halloween costume, right? Like, she's, she's, she's a, she's a human lady who's wearing, like, spandex and leather and sort of doing a whole Elvira kind of thing-ish, like, with lots of spikes and shit. Um, and that's disappointing because, again, like, you have a spider character. You can do so much more by, like, messing around with their physicality, making them monstrous in interesting ways. Like, like give, like give maybe what if she had six arms? That would make her a lot hotter. Like, if she just had, like, like a four. Like, if she just had four arms, that's hot. That is a sexy thing. And that would be an interesting way to use, like, the aspects of a spider to make her main thing more, more interesting. And, like, she does have the appeal of being able to transform into an actual spider. But I don't, I don't know, that's not really, uh, I, I have a mild case of arachnophobia, so that doesn't really work for me. Um, so, like, Elise is one of those, I can see why it's hot to someone else. I find her too boring. Like, this is too vanilla. Like, for a spider woman, like a Black Widow kind of character, this is too vanilla, this is too obvious. This is not interesting enough. Um to me to really go, oh, that's a cool spider character. It's like, 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 no, there's nothing interesting here. Like, it doesn't look like, like, if, if you were to get with Elise, right, like, in her human form, she looks like that would just be, like, getting with any human being. Like, maybe, she, like, she's a little weirder about it, and, like, she keeps implying that she's gonna eat you after she's done fucking you, uh, which, maybe that's your kink, but it doesn't look like there'd be any sort of, like, she doesn't have any special physical features that would be interesting or be hot from her spider thing. She just looks like a hot lady, right? So it's like, I guess there's the bondage thing, but even that, like, even, like, base Elise, like, the way that she looks in her splash art doesn't look like she'd do bondage, really. Like, there's no, so, like, she doesn't have strands of silk or, like, ropes or anything. Like, it doesn't look like she'd be into that. She just looks like she'd be kind of morose and imply that she's gonna murder you, which, you know, as we've said, like, a person who could kill you, that, that can be hot, but as she is, it's just a lady in a Halloween costume. And that does, that's not, as a, for a monster character, that's not enough to be interesting to me. Not hot. 
uh, to me. Hot to someone else. I'm, I'm sure some people are simping for Spider Mommy or whatever, but doesn't work. Doesn't work for me. Spiderweb BDSM sounds good though. Damn. Yeah, it would be, but Elise doesn't look like she's into it. Like Elise doesn't look like she gets off on tying people up. She really doesn't. Like she she doesn't look like that. Um, that's where like uh, something like Monster Musume. Like, does a much better job of, like, using the character, like, to sort of imply that she has a thing for restraining people. Um, and that's kind, of, that's kind of more implied in her character design as well, like, the way that she's put together, the way that she carries herself. Elise doesn't. Like, Elise doesn't look like she would want to tie you up for pleasure. She'd want to tie you up to kill you and eat you, but not in any way that's sort of kinky or interesting or fun. Um, so no, that doesn't work for me. Then there's Evelyn, staying on the monster girls for a second. And Evelyn is another one of those, like, Evelyn fucking, like, it's still disappointing to me that Evelyn isn't gender fluid in game. Like, that she can't change her shape to be, like, masculine, feminine, like, like mess around on the spectrum between them and be genderless, even. Like, it's a disappointment to me because that's part of her character. Like, part of her character is she takes on whatever form best seduces her victims, right? And certainly a lot of people are into a hot lady like this, but, like, there's other hot things. Like, there's other ways to be hot as a female character, even. Um, like, she should be able to change shape into something that looks like Ilawi, as well as something that looks like Jinx, right? So there's another one of those disappointments where, like, this could be so much hotter. Like, she could be so much more of a hot character if she had the extra kink of also being a shapeshifter, right? Like, someone who can look like anything you want. Like, literally any fantasy you have in your head, she can look like that and be that. That's a lot hotter than someone who's just, like, a hot lady. Um, so, like, so, like, again, there is that disappointment that Monster Girl characters' designs in League of Legends don't go further in actually using their premise to do interesting things that are hot. Like, that's still there. Having said all of that, yeah, like, intellectually, I know that she should be so much more interesting, but also, this is made specifically for people like me. It's made to target cis dudes like me. And it, it works, like, it does. It, get, it gets me. It's designed to target me, and it does. And I... I much as I would, I'm, I want something that's more interesting, much as I think that she could be even hotter if she had more features, like if they did more with her. She does the little thing with the lip and the smile, and she has the tentacles and the suit that's like this liquid that just moves up and down her body, and I'm that, yeah, that works. It works! I can't. It works! I wish it was more interesting and cool, but I'm, I am weak to it. It is designed to target me, and it it hits the bullseye. It works. It works. I can't get around it. It's like, and, and as you saw, I was like, I was like just about to only put her in the hot tier, but I'd be lying. <laughs> I'd be lying just a little bit if I did that. Like it, she's no, that's where she belongs. She's designed to be there, and that's where she is. Obviously, that's where she is. But yeah, like she needs she needs like a legendary skin that can gender swap, or she just needs a like she doesn't even like she just needs a like a, a what is it like thirteen fifty RP skin that has a, a masculine version. Like I'd like I'd like her to be fluid, but like if she just had a skin that was masculine, like if you just showed that she can be hot in more than one gender, that would be much better for the character. But but no, yeah, no, she she goes there. That that's where she goes. Uh, which means Ezreal is next, and Ezreal also goes in the not discussed tier for me. In the lore, in this, in the canon, he is like in his early twenties. He's like an early twenties fuckboy, but much like with Lilia, he's a kid. Like he's a kid. He's a child. Like I'm sorry. There's no. There's just no part of him that to me reads like an adult. Um, and that's that's a that's a matter of opinion. Like that's a matter of interpretation. Like how do you interpret the character? I interpret him as childlike. I interpret him as as childish and too immature, and so I no he goes in the not discussed tier for me, um, because I no mm -mm. It, it that's not a subject for discussion of hotness for me. 
let's see. There were some more super chats uh, while I was looking away. Draven is on S tier for Draven. Oh yeah, Draven would be in his own S tier and then everyone else would be not discussed because Draven wouldn't want to talk about anyone other than Draven. <laughs> that would be his tier list. Um, and he would be in the smoking tier. Like every single one of his skins would be here. Every single version of him would be here and everyone else would be not discussed. Um, Pyrebel sent one saying, long time fan here, glad to see you're exposing your kinks to us all. I am not. I am. I'm being very careful in what I divulge and what I don't. Like, I know that I'm I'm giving you this performance like, oh, I let something slip, teehee. Um, but no, I am actually being very careful about what I say. <laughs> Remember always, what you see on YouTube is a performance. Um, we're putting on a show for you, and we're never telling you the whole truth. Remember that. Like, don't, don't get too parasocial with me. You don't know me personally. I am always lying to you a little bit. Always. That's, that's, part, that's part of the game. Um, I'm always keeping something from you. Let's see, different noodles in the super chat saying there was a fanfic written in the old league lore where Vayne has a hate crush on Draven and maybe it's out of character, but that'll always have a terribly awful special place in my heart. Yes, indeed. I, I think I, I think I know about that one. I think I do. Maybe. Uh, Sparky sent one saying, Evelyn looks like whatever you're most attracted to, so she's an SSS by design. Yeah, that's what she's supposed to be. Doesn't quite get there in terms of the design, but you know. Uh, Ryan or sent one saying, Thank just wanted to say I love your content. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Moving on to... The big spindly monster boy. So, I don't, I don't get anything from Fiddlesticks. Like, I get that there's a cage with the tentacles in it. Uh, I, I, I mean, I fully understand it. And when, when Fiddlesticks was released, like, I have a couple of Twitter accounts, and on one of them, I follow spicier things. And there was a lot of thirst for, like, among the monster fuckers for Fiddlesticks. Like, a lot of people were were horny for this specific thing. And I understand why. Like I've 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 seen enough of that of that artwork and that 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 place to to sort of get it. Like I understand it. I don't find him hot at all. Like this just no. It doesn't work for me, but it's one of those it's hot to someone else. I understand. I comprehend it even if I don't agree with it at all. Like I don't no, it doesn't doesn't touch me that way, but I can see why someone does. So there's not a lot to discuss there. And so we move on to Fiora. Who... Yeah, it's like... This is hot to someone, probably. But even to the people that it's hot to, I just... I'm really sort of here. Flipping between these two. Because they, even to the people that she's hot to, it's like, I don't think she's really designed to be that. Like, there's a part of Fiora that feels a lot more like she's meant to be aesthetically pleasing. Like, she's meant to be pretty. She's meant to be powerful. Like, she's meant to be aspirational. Um, but she just kind of doesn't feel like she's meant to be that hot. Like, I, I think the design is just not really doing that that much. But on the other hand, like, I also know about the sword lesbians, and the sword lesbians, like, 110% this is for them. Like, this is, like, the thing of lifting the chin with the with the edge of your blade and looking in their eyes, like, while they're kneeling on the ground before you maybe bleeding a little bit from one arm. Yeah, no, like, yeah, the sword lesbians, absolutely. Uh, this, this is their kind of thing. And so she goes in hot to someone else, like most champions will. Uh, because, like, it's not for me, and I kind of don't get it, but then there's the sword lesbians that make, like, okay, yeah, sure, this is this is your thing, this is for you. Oh, I see people in chat don't know what sword lesbians are. Okay, so, like, there's different kinds of lesbians. I don't know the whole taxonomy, I don't know the whole field of them, but I know that there's sword lesbians, there's Home Depot lesbians, um, there's, like, high femme, uh, like, sort of very, like, there's, um, cottagecore witch in the woods, high femme flower crowns in their hair lesbians, and then there's also, like, bog witch lesbians. Uh, like, there's a lot. There's, there's, there's a whole genus of subtypes and different kinds. Um, like, a, a, a vast and expansive uh, ecosystem of lesbians of all different kinds and shapes and sizes, uh, different kinds of gender expressions that are very interesting. I don't know about all of them, but I do know about sword lesbians. Yeah. <laughs> 
how do you even know of these? I've been on the internet since 1998, my dude. How do I know about it? I've been here for a very long time. There's nothing I don't know about. Do you know, I was around when shitting dick nipples were shocking. Like when that was a thing people, I was around when Goatse was a prank that people played on each other. Don't Google it, don't Google it. I swear, like right now you're getting curious. Hey, what's that thing? I've never heard about it. Don't do it, it's not worth it. It's not even that interesting or shocking anymore because you've seen more shocking shit than Goatse. But back then, that was the thing. Like, I am old as shit in internet terms. I have seen everything. I've been everywhere. Nothing on the internet surprises me anymore. That's why I'm not weirded out by Vor. I've seen weirder shit. Um, so yeah, no, like, don't, don't Google any of it. It's not worth it because it's not even fun. Like, it's not even sort of shocking fun. It's just like, oh, I saw that on Pornhub the other day. Like, it's, it, I'm old. That's how I know. <laughs> um. I'm old, that's how I know. Anyway, moving back into the monster fucker and size kink space, I suppose. There's our boy Galio. And, like, Mundo is not a himbo. Like, we talked about that. Mundo is definitely not a himbo of any kind. Galio is a himbo. Like, he is, he is, he is the platonic ideal of a himbo in League of Legends. He's a perfect himbo. Uh... That, that's that's very much the whole of his character is that he's this big, enthusiastic, loud, very friendly, very kind, very happy, giant magical construct that runs on magic who just kind of wants everyone around to be happy. And he loves punching things because that's what he's made to do. So he just enjoys it. He just has a lot of fun all the time. Like when Galio charges into battle, he's like, yeah, I'm going to stomp on some people. Woo and like he doesn't he doesn't quite think about that kills people like he, he, he's the platonic ideal of a himbo. And of course, the way that his physique is crafted, like he is crafted very specifically to appeal to everyone who, like again, this is sort of a thing for older people, but if you watched Gargoyles and you found uh, you found your ideal boyfriend in that show, Galio is for you. Uh, like that's, that's what he's designed, is crafted to do. And consequently for that reason, he is hot. Uh, like he's, he's one of the ones where like, oh, I get it. Yeah, I see it. I see why this one is hot. Like, I get it. It's not just hot to someone else. I understand the hotness here. I have an, I have an understanding of why it is. And he's pretty easy to place in that sense. And that's like, I do kind of mourn the loss of old Galio on this point a little bit still. Like, I do think League of Legends has a place for, rather than sort of the big, happy, sort of uh, punch himbo, like, uh, ideal monster boyfriend. I think there's also a place for like the broody kind of have a heavy destiny on my, like I think there's a place for that kind of like that, the dark side version of that, like the sort of dark brooding edge lord version of, of a Galio. Um, and it's, it's, it's kind of sad that we're missing that since the, since the visual update sort of retconned his entire character. But no, like the, the Galio they came up with, definitely hot. Like you can't get around it. This is a hot character. It's a character that's made to be hot and it's a character that is hot. What was old Galio? Oh lord, you don't you don't remember old Galio? Let me see if I can find him. Let me see if I can find him for you. Uh oh jeez, that's a big version of the splash art. Uh not really what I was looking for. That's not the right one. Okay. Uh a... That's old Galio. Right? And again, talking about Disney's Gargoyles, this is a lot closer to the sort of general aesthetic of that. Um, but, yeah, that's that's kind of the thing that went away. Like, he very much became became Uno reversed into the opposite of, of, of that character, which is something that people still mourn the loss of old Galio, and I understand that, because it's missing something. Or rather, that version of Galio is kind of missing from the lineup. It took a, a thing out of the game without... You know, rather than just remake it. Aatrox is still hot, by the way. Yeah, is he? He's he, well, he's hot to you, I'm sure. <laughs> anyway, who likes pirates and who likes daddies? Um, because that's very much what Gangplank became. Like, remember original Gangplank back in the day? Like, the very original one? He was literally, like, a character from the fucking lazy town. Like, do what you want, because a pirate is free. You are a pirate. He was a cartoon pirate. Like, he was a... He was a complete cartoon. Um, and, like, consequently, even though, like, he had the bare chest and he was, like, he was sort of slightly sexualized, 
he was a character who I would have put as not hot at all because he was just such a cartoon pirate. And we'll get back to cartoon pirates when we get to Misfortune, by the way. I would have put him as not hot, just just not at all. Um, but modern Gangplank, like after he got his rework, especially like Captain Gangplank and, and Base Gangplank have two different kinds of daddy appeal sort of built into them. Um, where Captain Gangplank is sort of more of a sort of in control, classy kind of character. And this Gangplank is more like, like if, if you have sex with Captain Gangplank, it's gonna happen on his ship, um, like in a fine four poster bed with like silks and linens and stuff. If you have sex with this Gangplank, it's gonna happen in a dark alley behind a tavern. Uh, either way, uh, you're gonna get railed good, but but it's, it's like different vibes. Um, but this Gangplank is hot to someone else. Really not, it's not for me. I can see why, like I get it, I understand, I comprehend it. The the robot arm especially, like I get it, like there's definitely something there. Um, but this Gangplank, yeah, hot to someone else, not really hot to me. Uh, let's see, oh God, lost my files. Where are my files? There are my files, excellent. But yeah, like, one thing that's nice about Gangplank is that he is a, a, a little bit of body representation. Like, he's not fat as such, which is a little... I, I kind of would have liked him to have more of a of a gut, like, more of a dad bod kind of thing going on. But he's got a bit of that. He's got, like, a bit of that, like, barrel chest, thick set physique, like, big stomach, big belly kind of thing going on. Which is nice, because, like, too many League of Legends champions, like, even when they're supposed to be dad bod, they don't have a dad bod. Like, they just, they just have a slightly thicker musculature, but they're all still, like, rock-hard abs and shit. Like, a dad bot is soft, and, Ga and Gangplank has a bit of that. He could do with a bit more, I feel like. I feel like he needs a little bit more of that sense of, like, the indulgences of his of his life as a pirate lord still kind of hanging on to him um, in the later stages of his life, but there's a bit of it there, and a lot of people are into that, so, like, I'm happy that they have that thing for them. Again, just not really my kind of thing. Which moves us on to... Garen, which is like, it's one of those where Garen is one of those characters where I feel like I probably should put him in hot to someone else tier because like, I'm sure someone, like, I'm sure someone, someone is uh, like, look at Garen and, and like, that's, oh yeah, it's like, he's boyfriend material or whatever, but come on, like, come on, come on, really? Uh, like, really? He's not hot. Garen is not hot. I'm sorry. Like, he's he's just not. He's he's just not. Like, he, on the one hand, he's a fucking Boy Scout. Like, he's a complete Boy Scout who, like, who is not even, like, a peggable Boy Scout. Like, it's not even a thing of, like, oh, we, we, could, we could have some kind of, like, ah, because he's a good boy. No, it's not even that. Like, he's not even a good boy. Like, he's not, he, there's no innocence to him. He's just a fucking like, rules follower. He follows orders with no pleasure whatsoever. He takes no joy in it. He has no fun. Like, there's no there's no charm to him. He's not appealing. Like, he, he, you, it, he looks like a, someone who you couldn't have fun with no matter how hard you try. You couldn't have fun with him. Like, no matter what kink you're into, no matter how you want to get, like, how, how you want to approach it, like, the only way to have fun with, with Garen, I think, would be to corrupt him. Like, if, if you had a sort of corruption thing, but even then, he's not pure enough for that. He's not pure. He's not pure and innocent. There's no, you can't even really corrupt him because, like, he knows all of it already. He's just, he's just got to stick up his ass. And that's the only thing he ever wants to get fucked by. Like, right? Like, he, he gets fucked by Demacia and he has no room in his, in either his heart or any of his other orifices for anything or anyone else. And like, if, if you're a woman, he can't give head. Like this man cannot eat a pussy to save his life. You know this, you look at him and you just know that he would need a map and like several hours of guidance to figure out where anything, like you, he, he's just, he, it's not hot. Not hot, I'm sorry. Like it's just, there is no, 
No, I mean, you could, he, you would need instructional videos and several days of, like, military drills to get him into shape to be, like, halfway decent in bed. And even then, he's, like, only just like, ah, I shall do the procedure that I have learned to do the thing and no spontaneity, no fun. Like, he's not fun. You can't have fun with him. Garen isn't fun. And if you're not fun even a little bit, then you cannot be hot. He's not even anti-hot because there's no reasonable universe and like rugged Garen is hot like he could be hot right like because he looks like someone who like occasionally breaks a rule and like drinks drinks a drink and enjoys something but Garen doesn't look like he enjoys anything ever um Katarina finds him fun like well that's the thing about the Katarina Garen thing is like first of all their characters are deeply inconsistent but the Katarina Garen thing is She's corrupting him. Like that that's that was the angle. That was the thing that was supposed to be fun about them is that they are from these two very different worlds. They are opposites completely in every way, and yet they're attracted to each other. So like she makes him break the rules and have fun sometimes, and he makes her sort of consider like consider being a little bit more responsible and sensible every once in a while. Like there's this give and take back and forth thing. Together, Garen and Katarina could have a hot dynamic, I think. Like, there, there could be some hot shit there. Like, Katarina could peck him and actually enjoy it. Like, they, she could actually... Katarina can have fun with him because they have that dynamic. But outside of that, and like, the way that he's written most of the time, no. No. Like, no. Katarina could maybe have fun with him, but no one else can. Ever. Like, it's just... No. No, 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 no. And we'll get to Katarina, by the way. We'll get to her. Uh, <laughs> which means we need to move on to a tragic case. Um... Which is Gragas. Because Gragas could be hot. Like he really could be. Like Gragas, he has he has like the big bear, like he has he has like the big bear physique, like appealing to that that like that side of like of, of like the gaze, obviously. Um, but also like just women who are into the big, like hairy sort of like her suit, large daddy kind of teddy bear kind of lover thing. He could be hot. Like, like, if he gets a visual update and they do it right, he probably will be hot. But right now, he isn't. Like, this, everything about his character design, everything about the way that he's put together, the way that he's designed, the way that he's conceived, his own character design thinks that he's a fart. Like, he, he like I've said before, he's the visual equivalent of a fart joke. He's the character design equivalent of a fart joke. He's made to look gross. He's made to look disgusting. He's he, Like, his character design thinks that this is the grossest, most unappealing, disgusting thing you've ever seen in your life. He's, he's, he's bulbous and disproportionate. And, like, he's got, like, he's even got, like, the flat head with, like, the thing going up, like, like this... It's like he's meant to look like a Neanderthal kind of thing. He looks unkempt and ungroomed and disgusting. And that's the thing is like, like if, and that's the thing that's different about the splash art. The splash art looks like it finds Gragas cool. Like the splash art looks like, okay, here's a character. Like here's how this character is fun. Here how this, here's how this character could be cool or interesting or why they might be interesting to be around or something. But the character design is like, haha, this is the most ugly, disgusting slob you've ever seen in life. No one likes him. No one could ever be attracted to him. Ha ha ha, ha ha ha. It's pointing and laughing at him the whole time. And that's just... Ugh, I mean, it's, and it fucking sucks because League of Legends... There is two fat champions in League of Legends, right? Like, there's there's Tom Kench and there's Gragas. Now, Tom Kench is so much better in every possible way. Like, he's like if you if you like fat characters, if you like like if you enjoy fatness as an aesthetic, um, Tom Kench is there for you. Like that 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 character design understands why the champion is appealing, why he's interesting, why he's fun, why it might be enjoyable to hang around. Gragas is just like. Gragas' character design thinks that you're a freak and you're disgusting and you're ugly if you even consider finding him hot ever. And that is just... I mean, I'm, I'm tempted just to make a completely separate tier for Gragas, which is just tragedy, because it's tragic. Like, it, I hate it. Like, because, like, not everyone needs to be into it. Like, not everyone is into fat characters. Fair enough, fine. You have your aesthetic preferences like god go with you in peace that's fine but like the design should at least be capable of conceiving that hey someone might actually like this like this is not inherently disgusting or evil or perverse or unwanted right like it's yeah 
Um, so yeah, like it's yeah. I I Gragas is a is a tragedy. He's a tragedy. He, it's awful, and he needs he needs an update so very badly. So moving on to someone who is like again more sensibly designed for this purpose, which is Graves. And like Graves is I don't find him hot. I just don't. Like I don't find him hot, but that's because this is very much not at all my aesthetic wheelhouse. Like this is not where I'm at aesthetically in any way 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 shape or form. But there's a lot of people for whom Graves is the thing. Like a lot of people are into what Graves brings to the table. A lot of people are into this like with the cigar with like the 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 fucking motherfucker beard um like with a big shotgun and the and like he he is, has that himbo energy as well he is big of heart and dumb of ass and he's 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 not like i don't think he's a true himbo because i don't think he necessarily respects women very much like i don't think he's a particularly respectful character but he's equally equally much of a shit to everyone um and he's nice to his boyfriend like that's that's where he's at so i don't think he's a true himbo but he has a little bit of that himbo appeal uh, hairy smelly man, I love. Yes, uh, says Tiaman Chet. Yeah, that's the vibe. Like that's th that's the thing. Is like he's he's that kind of sort of particular expression of love of like um, hairy masculinity kind of thing. And I completely see why someone else finds that hot. It's just not my bag. Uh, I like it's it's just not something I don't have a, an aesthetic experience of that as attractive. Anyway, uh, there's been some more super chats. I should probably get through those. Dinoman71 Creations. Shivana, not a super babe, but is very attractive. Oh, we'll get to Shivana. We will get to Shivana. Um, TM sent one. We need a League X One Piece pirate skin collab. Yeah, never gonna happen, I don't think. Or maybe, well, maybe now. Uh, League of Legends is apparently opening up a little bit more to IP collaborations, but but it would be nice to have some like One Piece style stuff in in league but yeah uh thank you for the stream watching from the beginning now but i still wanted to chime in with a bit hope you're having a good evening thank you caesar uh i can't ex read your name because i can't read that uh, particular character set but chat is going so fast that nobody's gonna see that i stay up reading garen exterius fan fiction because they to me are boyfriends i mean valid honestly what if you shipped garen and kale for the most hilariously stilted ship where they are struggling with the whole process i mean that could be fun like, I think Garen and Kale, if they got caught feelings for each other, fucking somehow, that would be very, very funny. Not hot, but it would be very, very funny. Uh, JR Jr. JDR Jr. said, Graves looks like a cool uncle. Yeah, he has that vibe. Like, he has the vibe of, like, your, like your dad's cool uncle who shows up to Christmas drunk, but tells, like, the most hilarious, dirty stories, and everyone kind of like... He's not, he doesn't ruin Thanksgiving. He makes Thanksgiving way better, but he does show up drunk. Like, that kind of vibe. Graves can't be uh, S tier because he's already married, divorced, and married again. Like, yeah, I mean, Graves, the only person he'll ever bang is, is Twisted Fate, obviously, but <laughs> no one should be stopped from uh, from fantasizing. So, uh, Gwen goes in the not discussed tier because, much like uh, uh, some of the other champs here, Gwen feels like a child to me. Like, she feels too childish. Uh, and, like, theoretically, she's only, like, a few days old. Like that's sort of in in the in the fiction of League of Legends, he's only like at most a couple of months old, um, but she doesn't feel like uh, like a toddler. She feels like a child. She feels like a child character, and so she's very cute. But we're not discussing her in terms of hotness. Instead, we're moving back to the substantially kinkier uh, side of things, which is a little bit more monster fucking. So Hecarim, uh, Centaur. There are some anatomical considerations uh, that we shan't delve into in this stream because I don't want to get demonetized. But it's one of those things of like, I'm sort of tempted to say hot to someone else. Because, yeah, but even then, like, Hecarim is lame. Like, Hecarim's character design is lame. It's lame. It's, it's that thing of like, kind of like how I talked about with Darius. Like, Darius looks a little bit too much to me like he's designed to be a power fantasy for a boy. Like, for a, for a, like a 13 year old boy Hecarim is that again like he's a monster that's designed to be cool from the perspective of like a teenage boy like a, like a 15 year old yeah he's got like a skull on his stomach and then he's got skulls on his legs and then he's got a skull on his shoulder and then he's got a skull like there's just too many skulls just because skulls and it doesn't have the Warhammer thing like Warhammer has the thing of like where they go so overboard that the lameness kind of circles back around and becomes kind of cool 
Hecarim doesn't get there. Like, he's just... He's just a little bit too lame. Like, like, I know the monster fucker thing for some people is like, whatever. Um, but no, Hecarim is too lame. Like, it's, this character design is just a little too lame. And I can't, I, I, I cannot in good conscience call that hot to someone else. Hecarim is not hot. He's lame. Like, he's too lame. It doesn't work. Um, like, if he gets a visual update and they sort of streamline things a little bit and sort of focus more on the power, like, um, on the idea of him being, like, a powerful warrior rather than just him being whatever the fuck he's supposed to be. Like, if they make him more of a nuclear V rather than a centaur kind of thing, like, yeah, we can probably discuss it, but this Hecarim is lame. Like, his character design is lame. Which means now, we need to discuss the Yordles. Because the Yordles present a bit of a problem, and there's a little bit of the... You know how people will make that stupid joke like, Hey, Zoe is technically thousands of years old. <laughs> right? Like that thing. Um, which, please don't. Um, like, and the Yordles are sort of a demonstration that, like, in the fiction of League of Legends, all of the Yordles are, like, hundreds of years old. So Vex is hundreds of years old. Uh, Heimerdinger is hundreds of years old. But... Clearly, those two characters are not the same age. Like, even if if the fiction says that Heimerdinger and Vex are both 400 years old or whatever, those characters are not the same age, right? Like, at all. Heimerdinger is an old professor. Vex is a teenage child, right? Which is the same reason why... Uh, might as well find her now and, and put her where she's supposed to go. Vex is in the not-discussed tier. Um... Because, like, the whole, I mean, technically the age, blah, blah, uh, no, 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 that's bad vibes, we don't do that here. So Vex is not discussed, but Heimerdinger is clearly an adult. Like, his character is an adult, he's constructed as an adult, he acts like an adult, he speaks like an adult, behaves like an adult, talks and walks like an adult. So we can discuss him in terms of hotness. And what we get with Heimerdinger in terms of hotness is... Yeah, like... Mm. I mean, I guess he's hot to someone. Like, I guess. I guess someone has the thing for the for the absent-minded professor. But, like, we'll get to a, an archetype that's closer to that where I can kind of understand it more later. Heimerdinger... Not hot. Just, I... No. I can't see it. Um, I can't see it. Like, I, I'm sure someone... But I can't see it. He's not hot. Like, he's cute. He's adorable. He's fun. He's charming. But hot... Eh, uh, no. No. He just isn't. Um, yeah, Pool Party Harmer. Like, Pool Party Harmerdinger is designed to be hot. I could see that. Like, he would be in hot to someone else tier. But Base Heimerdinger? Professor Heimerdinger? This guy? Eh, uh, no. No, this is not, this is not hot. It's a lot of other cool things. Like, he's fun. He's funny. He's charming. He is, like, he's adorable. But... Hot, this is not part of his appeal. I, uh, no, I, I, I don't see that. I don't see that at all. <laughs> I see the Heimerdinger defenders are out in chat. <laughs> toys, though. Oh, Heimerdinger could build you the best toys, like the best spicy adult toys in the world. He could build you those, but he wouldn't, like, even he wouldn't, he wouldn't find them hot or sexy. He'd just be, ah, yes, the vibration function has been calibrated to deliver maximum pleasure. <laughs> like, that's how he's thinking about it. He's thinking about it in terms of a science experiment. He's not thinking about it in terms of like, actual pleasure. <laughs> After Arcane, woof. I mean, I could see someone finding Arcane Heimerdinger hot. Like, I could see that more, because he's less of a ridiculous cartoon character. Like, Arcane Heimerdinger has feelings. Like, he has emotions, he has an interior life, he has, like, experience, he has grief. In-game Heimerdinger? This version of Heimerdinger? Oh, I... I say, I shall make this explosion 20 times bigger, eh? Like, he's just, he's a cartoon character, right? He has, he has a different appeal. I can see why someone would, like, get, get attracted to, to Arcane Heimerdinger, because there's a person there. There really isn't so much in-game in Heimerdinger. It's not a person in the same way. Anyway, uh... Don't think there's really any need to discuss this one, so let's just move on to Irelia. No, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yes, Ilawi. Again, like, no one is surprised by this, right? 
no one is surprised, I don't think. But like, let me make my case, like outside of my own particular enjoyment, she has tentacles, right? Like I'm not crazy here, right? She has, she can summon tentacles at will, right? Like, I don't feel like I'm weird here. She can summon tentacles at will. So like, is anyone, like, unless you are, like, unless you're one of those weird dudes who are like, I won't wash my ass because touching your own butthole is gay or whatever. Unless you're one of those dudes, I'm sorry, you have to acknowledge, like, she can summon tentacles at will. So she's hot. She's not necessarily, maybe you don't put her in S as a smoking tier. Fine, that's fair enough. Not everybody's, like, not everybody's cup of tea. But she has to be hot. I'm sorry, there's no, I don't make the rules. That's just the way it goes. If the character can summon tentacles at will to do things, you, um, that's the rules. Those are the rules. That's the way it goes. Uh, that's the way it goes. Now, outside of that, I talked about this earlier, but like generally the thing that, that makes me interested in a character that makes me find them attractive or hot, a lot of the time novelty is like a big deal. And so it's not really that I specifically have that much of like a muscle thing, but it's more that like, there's no one else in the game like Ilawi. Like there's 5 billion Aries, like of, of the base version. There's tons of Ash. There's like, we have Ash, we have Imsford. Like there's so many versions of that exact same sort of sexy fantasy babe archetype character. Lots of those. They're everywhere. And I get desensitized to them. I, they, they're just not that interesting to me. They don't grab me. They don't command my attention. They don't do anything. Ilawi is different. Like, she is, like, the only character in the game that looks like this. That has this physicality. That has this particular power fantasy behind her. And that grabs my attention. And once you have my attention, I can start to find you appealing. But if I'm just like, oh, it's another one of those and move on. And that's very much going to be the case for some of these characters. Like, it's just like, oh, it's another one. Like, I've, this, it's the same fantasy babe I've seen a hundred thousand times already. We. I just, I, there's, there's no reason for me to find it hot because it's like, yeah, I already got it. So like, Ash is not hot because she has the physique that she's got. She's hot because she's an archer and she's got like the, the white hair, which for some reason works for me. Ari isn't hot because she's a sexy fox babe or whatever. She's hot because the ruined king made her different from all the other hot babe champions. And so our, uh, uh, Ilawi is like, not only is this woman powerful, strong, could crush your head like a grape uh, with one hand or between her thighs, that is interesting. That is different. Like, not only is she powerful, not only is she confident and self-assured, she knows exactly what she wants. Like, you're never... Like, if you if you go to bed with Ilawi, you're not going to be in any doubt whatsoever about what to do with her, because she will tell you, which is also hot. Like, she's confident. She knows what she wants. She has a lot of experience, and she can summon tentacles. So, yeah. Yeah, that's hot. Like, even if she had, didn't have the muscular physique, the rest of it, the personality and the tentacles, that would be hot. All on its own, that would be hot. Since she has all of that together, since she's unique, since she's different, since she's interesting, that's what puts her in SSS smoking tier for me. It's not just that, like, it's the muscle thing or whatever. It's that she's interesting. It's that she's different. It's that there's something there to think about, something to be, like, to have in, in intellectual interest in, not just, like, from below the waist, but above the waist as well. And she can summon tentacles. I will not give up on, like, you cannot, you cannot argue this. You cannot argue against this. I am right. I am objectively right. If a character can summon tentacles, that's the ball game. That's the end of it. I don't care how rancid the vibes are otherwise, like how miserable, like whatever. You could, you could fucking, if Garen could summon tentacles, he'd be hot. If Garen could do it, he would be hot. If Corky could summon tentacles, I'm sorry, that's just the rules, he would be hot. There's no way around it. You understand me. <laughs> anyway, there were some more super chats. Um... <laughs> Nikki, you know I'm right, Nikki. You know I'm right. Like, well, maybe you don't, because, like, that's... I know it's not your wheelhouse. Like, this is outside of your interests. But you but you have to concede that I'm right. Um. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, right, okay, super chats. Uh, I won't allow you to crush my skull like a watermelon. Valid. I was wondering, isn't hot for someone else kind of problematic because she should put anyone there? Maybe Rina into hot it in some way. No, um, because there are some champions where like, eat, where like I know intellectually that they're hot for some for someone else. Like someone finds Anivia hot, someone is into Azir, someone's into into everything. Rule thirty four applies always, but I don't. Like it's the difference between looking at someone saying, "Oh, I definitely see why this is hot to someone else," and looking at someone and going, "Someone's definitely hot for that, but I don't understand why." Like I don't I don't see it. I don't I don't comprehend it emotionally. That's the difference. Does Ilawi have daddy issues since she would smash Brom? No, no, Ilawi, Ilawi gives people issues. Like, <laughs> she doesn't have issues. She, she's a source of issues. <laughs> the Harbo, Nakakaboros is watching always. I mean, yeah, but that's true of any god. So you kind of, like, you kind of have, if you're religious, you just kind of have to accept that someone is always watching you bang. Um, would you consider doing design hot takes for Digimon? Probably not, because I've never watched Digimon. Mondo Bunga, you understand me. I try. Uh, Sora Foxo, communication is the hottest thing ever. Right? Like, if someone tells you what they want, that just makes everything about them more fun and more chill and more relaxed and more enjoyable, rather than having to fucking guess your way th through it. That's what part of why Aphelios is, like, not hot to me, is because it's like... I need you to express it. You can't just internalize everything and push it down and never express any desires or wants or like you have you have to you have to express it, dude. You have to express it somehow. Like with touch or with feeling or anything. But but Aphelios is just he's like that kind of character who will never express a desire ever. And that's just not I can't work with that. So, moving on to Irelia. And Aurelia is hot to someone because she's designed to be hot to some. Like she, she has the the hot body, and like the the scarves and the vibes and shit like that. Uh, she's designed to be hot to someone, but for me, like this is what I talked about with like, she's just yet another fantasy babe. Like it's oh, it's this, it's this again, it's that exact body shape, it's that exact aesthetic, it's that exact conception of beauty with like the incredibly smooth face and the big eyes and the insubstantial nose and the eyebrows that are on point and like, it's just this again i have seen it i've seen it a million times i have seen it i've seen it before so many times so i'm going to say hot to someone else because that's where most champions go but i just i cannot i cannot give a shit enough to talk about her in any any particular capacity because it's like yeah i know it's just this like cuz i'm i just get tired and bored looking at her like, there's just nothing there for me to to be interested in because it's such a standard thing. It's it's such the standard. It's such the same as like you could op you could open one of the League of Legends clones, Mobile Legends or League of Angels or whatever. You could find a character who has exactly the same kind of beauty as Aurelia, like beauty coming from exactly the same aesthetic standpoint. And you could find a hundred of them, and so I don't I don't know anything to say about her except yeah, someone finds her hot, but not me. Oh, someone is asking if she's a teenager? No. Uh Irelia fought Swain when she was like 16 and cut his hand off. But it's been in the canon, it's been like eight years since then. Um and uh, by the time we see her splash art, she's like 24, I think, something like that. Anyway, moving on to the forest daddy. And now a forest daddy here I know for a fact is hot to some people because someone I know drew some spicy fan art of him <laughs> when he was released. Quite a few people did, actually. Um, so we know for sure he's hot to someone else. And what I'm what I'm thinking about is like, do I concept like do I understand this emotionally? And like I kind of do, I guess. Like he's like, because like uh, he has the daddy appeal. Like he's an older man, like with a lot of experience, like who knows what he's doing. But unlike like Darius and like. Um, and like uh, gangplank and such, like they—they're sort of the raw, brutal masculinity kind of thing. 
um, which is sort of a very standard thing. Ivern is a very different appeal, right? Like, he's a very different kind of character. Um, and he sort of has the Braum problem of, like, yeah, you can find him hot, but, like, he wouldn't. Like, he wouldn't reciprocate because he's just too nice. Like, he's just too much of a pure, absolute angel of a character. Like, he would never. Like, he would never. Because that's just not part of his world. That's just not part of how he sees things. Um, so, like, I see why someone finds this appealing. Like, I absolutely see why it's hot to someone. But to me, it's like, it's just, I kind of can't... Like, I'm, intellectually, I get it. But I just emotionally know... Like, no, it's, it's not... Like, I know that he has three tentacles. Which means he kind of has to go in hot... Right? Like, he he, ha he has the ability to use tree trunks as tentacles. His writer confirmed him asexual. Yeah, but I mean, asexual people can still be hot. It's just that they're not interested. Um, but, like, again, like, he reads so much as someone, like, he just never would. Like, you, you just couldn't get him to think that way about you, ever. Like, he's the same problem with Braum, with the added complexity of, like, he's a tree person. So, we'll say hot to someone else, because he has, technically has the tree tentacles, like, I have to concede it. But it's like, if not for the tree tentacles, he would be in the not hot tier, because... Because, like, I really, he's... I get it intellectually, but emotionally, I just don't. He's not, it's, mm, he's not just there. Anyway, uh, right, we might as well do Janna real quick, uh, cause Janna, and I've expressed this before, Janna is not hot. Um, and she's not hot for the same reason that, like, I'm, like, and I'm not even willing to say hot to someone else. Because, like, yeah, probably, but, like, that's, she's just a lady in a bikini. Like, it's just... It's just a lady in a bikini. And, like, I think her splash art makes her more, like, closer to hot because she has this sort of elfin, sort of slight, sort of far away, a little bit sort of ethereal vibe to her. But, like, this is just a fantasy. Like, this is a Warcraft 3 character who wandered over into League of Legends and hung around, which is literally where she came from um, it, during the hi history of League of Legends. She's not interesting. Like, this. she's... And, and again, like, even... She's a lady in a bikini, right? But it's not even a sexy bikini. Like, it's not even, like, lingerie. It's not even, like, oh, this, 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 is a, this is a bikini that's meant to make you look hot on the beach or whatever. It's just... It's just, like, a, a bra and underpants. But it's not... It's not a hot bra and underpants. Like, it's not lingerie. It's not... It's not attractive. It's not interesting. It's just boring. It's just the world's... Like even like even fucking pinups on the sides of panel vans are spicier than this. This is so vanilla. This is so nothing. There's nothing here to find hot. I don't think except no. Uh, oh, she's showing skin. Woo. Yeah. So are like I can walk down the street past the lingerie shop and see things that are sexier than this. Like like in full display for everyone to see that no one and no one pays attention to it no one looks twice like there are perfume ads with more sex appeal than this like no one looks twice at it because it's so normal it's so nothing she's not hot like she could be like make her naked she'll be hotter like give her a more interesting character design she'll be hotter i've got a video about that you can go and watch it like both of the character designs we came up with for Jana are a lot hotter than this because this is boring it's boring it's so boring, it's so dull. And if it's dull, it can't be hot, because hotness applies a certain excitement. Right? So, yeah, no. Jenna, absolutely not. Then there's, um... Then there's Jarvan. And I have a genuine question for chat. Does anyone find Jarvan hot? Like, anyone? Like, I know someone technically has to, because of Rule 34. But, like... Chat, let me know. Like anyone, is there anyone who looks at this and goes like, "Yeah, I, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna get that in my pants." Yeah, the overwhelming consensus seems to be no. <laughs> Just 
even Shivana doesn't find him hot. I swear to God, Shivana doesn't find him hot. Like, I don't think she does. I think, I think Shivana's attraction to Jarvan is that, like, they have this battle bond that's forged in war. But even she would be like, no, it's not really that he makes me horny. It's that, like, we, we have this emotional connection thing. Like, maybe. But, like, I don't think anyone... I just don't think anyone finds Jarvan hot. He's not even anti-hot, because that would imply the potential for hotness that's undercut by some, some, some weird attribute. But no, he's... Jarvan isn't hot, and no one finds him hot, and no one ever will. Uh, no, well, maybe once they redesign him, he needs a visual update quite badly, but he's not hot. He can't be. His pool party skin. Yeah, but we're not talking about the pool party skin. We're talking about the bait, like, the actual character. And, like, lots of the pool party characters are hot. Like, they, they're sort of designed to be. But, like, Draven has a hot pool party skin, but Draven isn't hot. Like, so... Just, just so as you know. <laughs> I feel so invalidated shaking my head. I'm sorry, Nepeta. We're not kink shaming you. Like, if, if you have a thing for Jarvan, that's fine. You are allowed to and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just... You, you might have to accept that you are in a minority there. <laughs> uh. Moving on to the Lamp Master. Dear Jax, and like there's two things obvious about Jax that are hot, right? Like there's there's two things about Jax that are that are obviously hot. The fact that he's all covered up, like he, he's hiding his face and he's got like the robe and thing, and the fact that he has three fingers. Um if you know you if you know you know, if you don't know, don't worry about it. But those are two things that obviously like that's why someone finds him hot. Um the other thing, of course, is his confidence. Jax is an immensely confident character. He's an immensely confident fighter. He's immensely, like, he's he's very self-assured, very self-contained. And so with Jax, again, it's one of those situations of, like, he desperately needs a visual update. Like, he's one of the old champions that has held up the best. Like, where they've really been able to keep him, keep him reasonable just with texture updates and shit. Um, but, like, yeah, that's... Uh, that's a hot to someone else champion if I ever saw one. Like, I'm not I'm not that interested, but it's like if you think about it and if you know, you understand, like, no, yeah, like someone someone would definitely like if like if he pushed them up against the wall and sort of said that he was gonna test their strength, like someone definitely would be like, oh, mm, daddy. Um Because he is the champion. Like he is he's he's the best fighter you've ever seen in your life. And he's mysterious and he's a stranger. Um, so yeah. Absolutely, I can see why. Now I'm about to make one of my friends a little sad. <laughs> uh, Fran, if you ever watch this, I'm sorry uh, for what I'm about to say and do. But I have to be honest, uh, that's, that's the concept of the stream. And, uh... Yeah... Jace is not hot. I'm sorry, he isn't. I don't... I know, in, again, intellectually. Intellectually, I fully understand. I fully understand in my brain that he is definitely hot to a lot of people. That a, de a lot of people look at that and definitely go, oof, fuck yeah. Like, this is their... This is, this is their damn well their thing. And I fully understand that you saw that scene in the forge in Arcane, and much like me, we're like, oh, oh, oh okay. Okay, right. No, yeah, like, working the forge, pumping the bellows. Yeah, no, we get it. Intellectually, I fully understand. Emotionally, like, like in, in, the, in, the, in the part of me that's meant to respond to hotness, I look at this character and I feel nothing. Like, there's no, there's no shred, there's no spark of hotness in Jace for me. There just isn't. Like, ag and again, it's about the vibe of the character. It's about the vibe of the character in the same way that Draven just kind of the vibe of him just and isn't that it's just it's the same thing with Jace like I just wouldn't I just can't find see that he would be fun like not even in this sort of charmingly arrogant way like Aurelian's like it's just I just don't see the fun it's not even that he's bland really like he is kind of but he has more of that sort of Don Draper like he looks like an adult fucking man which is a nice thing uh, like, like a person with with like some level of experience 
And I can see it more, like, with Arcane Jace, I would probably put him in hot to someone else, but... But with Jace, I just don't respond to him. Like, there's no part of me that responds and says, oh, there's hotness there for someone. Like, because that's what there is with Jax. Like, Jax, I look at him and go, oh, yeah, no, 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 someone definitely is into that. Like, someone is definitely into that. With Jace, I'm sorry, it's just outside... It's just, it's just outside of my experience. It's outside of, of, of my comprehension of what hotness is, and so he goes in the not hot tier. Um. Sorry. Anyway, uh, Jin goes in hot. Just might, might as well get that out of the way right now. Obviously he does. Of course he does. Uh, like, of course he's hot. He's not really for me, uh, because... Eh, um, because, like, if I'm in a relationship with someone, I want to be the art nerd who's too much up his own ass. And I I will not be competing with him for that to stay. Like, you, you cannot possibly out-arrogant me about my art opinions. I will not have it. Um, more of a rivalry, uh, thing there. But no, yeah, obviously Jin is hot. Like... It's it's hard. I feel insane even sort of trying to explain why he's hot. He's 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 hot for the same reason Hannibal Lecter is hot. He's hot for the same reason that like like all of the weird scary serial killer villains are hot because he's like because he is someone like okay for those who don't understand Jin is absolutely going to kill you like he is he is going to murder the shit out of you and that's definitely happening. But what makes him appealing and attractive is that he will see you as a work of art. Like Jin will look at you and you will be the entirety of his mind. He, you will fill him up from the inside out with your presence. He will take in every aspect, every detail of you. He will appreciate every wrinkle, every spot on your face, every hair on your head, every part of you. He will be obsessed with emotionally and intellectually. He will care about you on the deepest level a person possibly can. Like, you will be the center of his universe, and he will do everything. Everything he does to you, all of the terrible things he's going to put you through, comes from, like, a twisted and sick and wrong-headed, but still honest and genuine place of desperately wanting to make an artwork out of you. Like, he wants to make you beautiful. He wants to make everyone else see you the way that he sees you as aesthetically perfect. It's just that for him, that involves like stringing you up in a theater and then carving your guts out and like putting them between the rafters and blowing the whole building up. It's these, he has very, he's fucked up in every single possible way, but, but my God, you have never met someone who will be more obsessed with your beauty than he is, right? So like it, that's why, <laughs> like that is why. And also the voice, obviously, like I wish he had a different voice actor because that voice actor has done some creepy shit. Um, but no, like, yeah, it obviously he's hot. Obviously he is. I see some people in chat don't understand it. Um, <laughs> which, fine, that's fair enough. Like, not everyone's into it. Um, oh, for those who are asking about the VA, uh, he has sent some, like... He, He's been sending weird, creepy me messages, like he's been sexting with fans and shit, uh, which you shouldn't do. Um, and he's done, he's done some cre like he. I don't think I don't know that he's been accused of any actual assault or anything, but like he's just he's just been real creepy about with fans who are a lot younger than he is, not underage, just like a lot younger than he is. So you know. Um, So you know, it's, I wish he had a different voice actor. Is what is 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 all I'll say about that. Not not, not that he's committed crimes or whatever. Just like uh, would rather not think about that. Um, right. I think uh, I'm gonna need a little break and get some tea. So let me just put some text on screen to say tea break. Because I've been talking for quite a long time now, and uh, I need to get some warm liquid in my face so that my voice doesn't give out. So I'm going to go on a tea break. I'm going to turn the music up for you a little bit, and I'll be back in a bit.
Ah, there we go. Had to get my camera to detect me again. Okay, my tea is steeping. I have myself a cheeky little sandwich as well. And we can resume the work. I hope you were all good little children while I was gone. I hope you didn't discuss anything perverse or perverted. I hope everybody had pure thoughts and prayers in their hearts uh, <laughs> while I was gone. Because now we can get back to degeneracy. <clears throat> Oh, uh, there's super chats. I should probably deal with the super chats. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Um, <laughs> smoking if in the nude, as usual. Yes, Matthew Bradley, this is true. I hate how peggable I find Jace. That's valid, Star Anise. Uh, Morn. I need to go, but love your content and praise the sun. Trans rights and love from Brazil. Thank you very much. Uh, Captain Chakran, thank you very much for that super chat. The Chain Warden. Gene is exclusively a four-way relationship, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you, he would be poly, like always have at least three partners um on gin hostage or no sometimes it's nice to be held <laughs> yeah that's true um ninjutsu thank you for the super chat as an nsw nsfw artist i've been enjoy loving these discussions i'm curious though are there any particular champions that you don't necessarily find hot but do when it comes to things like fan art fan fiction i mean if you do the art or the or the writing correctly they can all be hot like obvious exceptions like Annie um like but like any of the champions that are in the not hot tier if you do it right if you do the art or the or the fan art right obviously any of them can be hot it's it's all about how you present them okay um right moving on oh who's next well wouldn't you know it it's the chaos gremlin jinx and jinx is an interesting case because like she is sort of Basically, she was, like, the first League of Legends champion who had any kind of different... Like, female League of Legends champion, I should say, who had any kind of different body type. Like, she was their first experiment doing anything other than standard fantasy babe archetype. I'm like, male dude. basically the first one. Um, and so, like, she has that part of the history. And that's why, like, I, I've always had a soft spot for her is because, like, yeah, she was different. She was something else than than the standard thing like i said with alawi like that's to me that's a big deal now after watching arcane like i know her as powder like she that's a very different version of the character like that and we don't really know how much of that is canon to the main game anymore but i will say like the main canon jinx is like yeah i'd say she's hot but Arcane Jinx, I'm not so sure. Oh, shit. Fuck. Pressed the wrong button. Hang on. Uh, closed down my graphics. Didn't mean to do that. There we go. Um, Arcane Jinx, I would probably say is not hot, at least not, or maybe hot to someone else, but... But yeah, Jinx, as she is presented in the main game in League of Legends, like the way that she's presented in-game in and the way that she's presented outside of Arcane, 
I would put her in hot, like, just because of the appeal of being something different. And also just, like, Chaos Gremlin is a fun vibe. Like, again, it's a fun character. Um, interestingly, though, like, despite the fact that her character design is sexualized, like, her character design is highly sexualized with, like, the, the bikini and the little hot pants and shit, I've never found her, like, as such a particularly sexy character design. Like, it feels different than someone like Ash, where it's like she's got the miniskirt and the titties out and it just doesn't make any sense for her. Because Jinx's character design makes so much more sense for the character, like it feels like such a more natural extension of what she's like. And it's not like, it's not clearly this costume she's putting on to be sexy. It's just that this is the kind of thing that she would wear and that happens to be a sexualized design. Like it feels different. Not that it's not sexualized, it just feels less... Like, it feels less like like the character design is sort of nudging you in the side and going, Hey, 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 isn't that hot? Isn't that sexy? Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that, uh, like, it feels less like it's sort of desperate to be found hot. And I like that more as a vibe where it's like, where most of the time, oh yeah, that's just what the character looks like. But when you actually look at them, you go, oh wait, shit, that's actually, that's a really sexualized design. Like, I like that more. Like, that, that to me is more appealing. Uh, oh, people are talking about the age. Yeah, Jinx is... In Arcane, I believe she's like 19 or 20 by the end of it. I, th I think that's somewhere around where her age is, 21, something like that. In the main game, I believe she's supposed to be like a 25-year-old, something like like Because in the main game, she's further along than she is at the end of Arcane. Uh, she's like a 25, 26-year-old, something along those lines. As far as I know, but again, like I've talked about before, the age number is a lot less important than the presentation. Like a character can be 25 and presented as a childlike character, and then that's that's no, that's a nope. Um, because like because if you just sort of focus on the on the number, that's when you get into the Zoe trouble. Like she's technically 3,000 years old, which is like, uh, let's not do that. I pressed the goddamn wrong key again. Yeah. There. So, speaking of characters about whom I, about whom I <laughs> have specific opinions about their character design, I have ranted too much, rather excessively at length, about how annoying I find Kaisa's character design. Um, like it's just like it's it's so transparent that the character design doesn't care about the character's story that much. Like, the character design is like, oh, yeah, she has a void symbiote, and she's been a survivalist fighter doing fighting in the void ever since she was a child. The character design doesn't give two shits about her story. It doesn't give two shits about her lore, about what she's meant to be or what she's supposed to do. The character design cares about one thing and one thing only, and that's making her look cool and or sexy. Um, and primarily sexy, if we're being honest, with a skin-tight suit, and, like, she's got full makeup on for fucking whatever reason. A lot of people, like, when I bring up the fact that it's weird that Kaisa knows, first of all, knows how to put on makeup, and second of all, gives a shit about putting on makeup, people are like, well, maybe it's just using the symbiote suit to give herself makeup to make herself hot because she's reclaiming her humanity. That would be a fun idea, I suppose. Like, that would be an interesting thing to do with her character. Like, that she's very inten intentionally putting on a more human face. Except then you actually read any of her stories or consume any of the media that she's part of. And it should be abundantly clear to you that she doesn't give a fuck. No part of her character gives a single solitary shit about that. She's, she's not written to care about those things. That's not a part of her character. Would that be interesting? Maybe. That could be, it could be a fun idea of Kaisa like trying to fit in with humans by trying to make the suit, make her look attractive or more human. Maybe that could be an interesting concept, but it's not part of her character. It's not there. 
You can you can argue it all you want. It isn't part of the character, and it's not a valid defense for her character design because it's, it's not you're imagining a hypothetical better version of the character and then saying, but what if the character was actually better? Then you, these criticisms wouldn't be right. Yeah, sure, but she isn't. So, yeah, I have a lot of I have a lot. God, so many criticisms of Kaisa's character design because it's such a waste of a great premise. Like, the thing that makes me so mad about Kaisa's character design, like, the thing that, that just that just upsets me is that this should have been so fucking cool. Like, this should have been so fucking rad. Like, the fucking, the void hybrid skin suit parasite thing that's sort of like, that both makes her inhuman, but also helps her survive. And like, the, the sort of fusion between like, a void mind, which is a very particular kind of thing, and like, her human, that should have been badass. Like, that should have been some badass motherfucking shit, like with chitinous, like, insectoid armor pieces, and like, maybe she's lost an arm, but then the, the symbiote has grown it back, but it doesn't know how to grow back a human arm, so her arm is all fucked up. Like, you could have done so much cool shit. And if they had done any of that cool shit, if they had actually mixed and matched, like, Kaisa, like a human phys physiology with, like, void weirdness, like, shit like that, she would be so much hotter. Like, if they had just, again, it's the thing about, we talked about with Cassiopeia, where, yeah, she's a snake girl, but, like, they've cut, they've made it a very stark cut between where the snake and where the girl is, and they haven't really mixed it, they haven't done anything aesthetically interesting with it. Kaisa is the same thing. Like, if you're gonna have a Void champion who's possessed by a parasite, like, that works as, like, a skin suit for her, like, it, let's say you wanted to make that porny. Like, let's say you wanted to make that a hot, sexy kink thing. This is the best you could do? This is the limit of your erotic imagination? Lady in spandex with cleavage? That's, that's it? That's as horny as you... How vanilla are you if that's the best you can come up? Like, if you wanted this to be a sex champion, fine. Cool. Then, like, she's a void skin suit symbiote tentacles are like the first thing you should have done like tentacles are like the most first most obvious thing the second thing is like this suit can sort of shift her mass around it can do all kinds of creepy weird she like give her multiple limbs like there's any number of things you could do that are kinkier and hornier than this vanilla bullshit this is so again so boring it's it's so such a waste like if you wanted to make it horny at least make it interesting horny like something like something that will be interesting to monster fuckers but it isn't it's because she's not a monster champion she's a lady in a suit and that's not cool anyway that was a whole rant about not whether so much like she's hot to someone else like yeah she's designed to be hot in a very basic vanilla kind of boring not very interesting kind of way but i get it yes sure she's hot to someone else someone finds her hot that's fine i understand it it's just my overriding feeling when I look at her is just disappointment, especially looking at her concept art where she was so much more, like, fucked up and weird and kind of, like, where being possessed by a void parasite and living in the void for years, or in void tunnels for years and years, had clearly affected her. As opposed to here, where her hair is perfect and her makeup is on point, and there's no part of her that seems affected whatsoever by being possessed by a void monster. So, you know, um, yeah, I, my overriding feeling with Kaisa is always going to be disappointment, but yeah, sure, she's hot to someone. Why not? Let's see. There we go. Moving on to Callista. She was the second, I think, champion in the game. Like, there was that little golden period, 2014 to 2018, I think it was something along those lines, where Riot was actually trying to do interesting things with their female character design. Callista is sort of the next stop along that route, because she was given, like, this very specifically, very gangly, very sort of emaciated, really kind of hollowed out, wraith-like physique, which really fits her character, because she is this this, like, vengeful, hollowed-out 
like emaciated wraith character like that's what she's like she's someone who's been drained of all of her humanity by the monstrosity of the things that have happened to her like that's part of her character so like so like this skinny bony wiry like like really kind of hollowed out look for her it's really good like it's really a solid version of the character i don't know that i would call it hot specifically like, that's not really what it's about. Like, there's the boob plate, which sort of is there to emphasize, like, to, to sort of hold on to traditional signifiers of femininity. Um, because I guess because they were worried that she was going to be too androgynous or people would misidentify her as, as, as male um, if they didn't have that, which I can sort of kind of see, I guess. Um, like, she's really cool. Like, I think Callista is so fucking cool. I think she's really interesting. And in being interesting, there's something fundamentally... Like, that is always going to be hotter than being boring like Kaisa. Um, that's always going to be more hotter because, like, that that means there's a reason to get excited about it. Um, and hotness is a form of excitement. So, like, yeah. Like, so I'm, I'm kind of... I'm really in two minds about her. In that sense, because like I really don't think the character design is meant to be particularly hot. And I don't find her hot. But I don't know if he's not hot or if she's hot to someone else. And again, this is not about like obviously there's rule 34 of her. Obviously, people find her hot. Obviously, people think she's sexy. But this is not about whether other people find her sexy. It's about whether I see her and emotionally understand her as oh, this is someone else's hotness. And she's somewhere vacillating between that and not being hot because, like, so much of her character really doesn't feel like it's made for hotness for me. But I think she does land there, ultimately, because, like, she has the sharp fingers. She has the, like, she has the exposed thighs. She has, like, the, the physique, the anger, the intensity. So, like, yeah... That's probably where my feelings are ultimately is that oh yeah no no this is this is someone else's hotness um even if it's not mine rather than I don't see this as a hot thing at all but she's like she's sort of in the edge lands between those things where 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 I really could go either way um on the on that particular character cuz like the thighs you can see like why that would be a thing for someone Right, um, and like the the sh the sharp fingers, like with the nails, and like the little draw a trickle of blood from your cheek, that sort of thing. But yeah, it's it's just one of those edge cases that is sort of in between for me. Okay, uh, there is some more super chats I should probably uh, get to. Oh, Pink Foosball Table said, Renata Glask Waiting Room. Yeah, I mean, she's an R, so it's going to be a while before we get to her. We've got, uh, yeah, we got, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 28, uh, 32, 42. Yeah, we've got, like, 45 champions to go before we get to her. Um... But yeah, Super Chats. Uh, Paul32, I'm a straight male dude, but even I felt something when you talked about gin, so thanks. Well, yeah, I'm glad to make you question. Uh, and <laughs> I, let's be honest, if TV Sky was on this list, he would be smoking. Uh, would I? My voice might be to some people, but yeah. Um, and also, that's a slightly that's a slightly weird thing to say to a stranger who, who you've never actually seen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Just, just saying that. Don't 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 take it any further than that, please. Because uh, I get DM like my DMs on Twitter are open, which is something that's very nice a lot of the time. And then occasionally you get an unsolicited dick pic. So you know, mm, um, boundaries <laughs> is is the point I'm making. Um, Silver Cricket, you have complained that Kaisa is so hot for years. And now it's time to choose if she's hot or not. Yeah. <laughs> So, Oren, there are people that are so used to women having makeup on, they no longer see it and think that's just how they look. Yeah, that's the thing about makeup and character design is that it's just so 
And it's also something about, like, when you're dealing with stylized character designs, like really strongly stylized character designs, how do you delineate that a character is female and male in, in really stylized character design? And something we've sort of settled on with aesthetic tradition is that female characters will have longer eyelashes. They will have, like, like, uh, like heavier lids. They will have, like, all the visual sort of stylized signifiers of makeup are used to denote this character is feminine. Um... And that's that's a that's a character design issue. That's like a, a just a big thing of tradition with where like a lot of people will see a female character without makeup and go, oh, that's a man. Like, oh, oh that's something. Some that's why is why is she not like why is she looking like she's sick? Why does she look like she's she's ill or or why is she so ugly? Because they the way that they read that the absence of makeup gets read not as the absence of makeup, but as stepping outside of. This, the the default to say something specific about the character. Like, if the character's not wearing makeup, that must be because something's up. That must be because they are secretly a man or because they are sick or because... like People sort of assume if they're not wearing makeup, something's wrong. And they sort of look for, oh, there must be some secret explanation rather than it's just a character that doesn't have makeup on. Um, and that's... It's just extremely annoying. Um... I should really make a video about that at some point, but I feel like I'm maybe not the best person to talk about it either. Uh, Dr. Nock. The worst part is that she would still be hot if she has her, had her monstrous parts just like in her concept. Of, oh, yes. The artist from DBD could be kind of ideal for Kaisa. I don't know what that is, but I'm sure you're right. Recurring extra. Still annoyed the symbiote doesn't interact with her. Imagine having to interact with it and having a strange attachment to her skin hell demon. That would be cool. And Felix Maples said, put Ilawi up a tier. There is no tier above. SSS smoking is the highest tier. Uh, and I'm not making an, a tier just for Ilawi because, like, they're all there. You're like the first person to do one of these to put Cassie high up. Thank you for validating this, Clover. Ha ha. And I agree, not far enough. Well, thank you very much, Miss Ginky. I, I managed to listen to the voice uh, text to speech there. Right, moving on. Let's talk about uh, more standard fantasy babes, which is Karma, who once again is, it's, it is the fantasy babe body type uh, with a different costume on. And so for that reason, again, like, I, just, I find it hard to get interested because it's like you have this spiritual leader of Ionia. Like this, this person who is the embodiment of the land itself, and like, who, who, like we have these themes of long lines of reincarnation and the wisdom of a thousand years, like uh, caught in one person. And to me, none of that at all comes through in the character design. What we get is just a lady in some robes, and like the most interesting thing about her is the like the floating double dragon symbol, like and and sort of like the the wing design thing that's attached to her like that's sort of interesting that lends some but like the rest of the character design there's no sense of like like a thousand minds trapped in one body there's no sense of like the weight of years um there's like there's really no sense of like this person is particularly experienced she's just kind of like quiet and magical which like uh it's like uh, is that really the best you could do um and all of that seems to be sort of in the service of keeping her hot like keeping her conventionally attractive because that's what everyone expects her to be. And there's nothing wrong, I should stress this. Like, a lot of people come at me in my comments like, you just hate everything that's hot. No, fuck off. Shut the fuck up. I'm so tired of that bullshit. No, I don't hate everything that's hot. I hate it when hotness is used as a substitute for something more interesting. Right? Evelyn, very good character design. Akali, very good character design. They're both hot, but they are not substituting more interesting parts of the character for hotness. They're using hotness as part of the character to tell some part of their story. With Karma, it's like, the question I have is, does Karma need to be attractive in order to tell her story? Does she need to be conventionally hot in order to express the themes and the ideas that the character is all about? And the answer to those questions is no. Like, it's not, it's not that she can't be hot, it's just that it doesn't add anything. It doesn't do anything. Like, like oh, she's a super hot babe doesn't interact with she is the reincarnation of a thousand years of experience or she is the embodiment of Ionia, the land itself. Those things don't interact. They don't add anything to each other. They're just things that sit there taking up space from one another without without doing anything interesting. Um, but anyway, Karma is most definitely hot to other people for the same reason that Aurelia is. It's like, yeah, this is 
this this is the standard hot fantasy, babe. Of course it's hot. It's hot to plenty of people. I can see why it's hot. I'm just not interested in it. I find it boring. Like, there's so many more interesting things that could be done with this kind of character. Rather than just make it a sexy babe who must wear a costume. <clears throat> See, I wonder if my tea is cooled off enough to drink. Oh, what? Oh, nope, 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 nope. No, it hasn't. Oh, ow, Jesus. Fuck. Fuck. Ow. No, it hasn't. It has not cooled off. Not enough. Um. Let's see, where are we now? We are, oh, we are at uh, <laughs> Skinny Bones Man. Um, yeah, so Karthus. Uh, <laughs> at least in his base form. At least the base version of the character. Again, not talking about any skins. The base version of the character, I have to put it in not hot. And it's kind of for this, like for some of the same reasons that, like we talked about with Talon. The thing is, like, and and and, and indeed Azir, like Karthus just doesn't look like he would give a shit. Like he doesn't look like he's available to be hot in that way. And that's the thing is, like again, intellectually, fully understand. Lots of people find the skinny bony, like uh, like lich death singer man. That's, that's their kind of jam. Nothing wrong with that. But I look at that and I go, there just isn't... Hotness just isn't part of that character. It's just not part of how they are. As a character or as a design. Like, not to mention that Carthage just looks kind of wretched. Like, he... Again, it's that thing of like, it doesn't look like you can have any fun with him. It doesn't look like there's any part of him that's sort of designed to be fun in that way. He's designed to be uh, uh, imposing, intimidating, scary cool, fascinating, but hotness, it just kind of isn't in there, I don't think. I think you can have hot undead characters, we'll get to Scion, um, but Karthus just doesn't feel like that to me. He doesn't feel like hotness is part of him, um, like, like, like that's even sort of an, an available consideration for him. So yeah, like, I know people are into him, definitely, but I just don't I just don't see it. Like I just don't see hotness in him as as a as a part of the character in any reasonable way, really. So yeah, he goes in the not hot tier. Um and Cassadin, pretty much immediately, heads up into the hot to someone else tier. And that's largely thanks to his visual update some time back that like went out of its way uh to really make our boy a large shredded lad. And I can also see it, like, with the mask and the sort of Cthulhu aspect and, like, uh, like the, sort of the big grimy hands and all of that. Like, uh, like yeah, I can see it. Like, the, he's, he wears, like, a skirt thing kind of on him. It's like, that, that's visually interesting and fun. But, like, I can see it. I can see it. I'm not... I'm not particularly moved by it, but he has that, like, as someone said in chat, like, Darth Vader with abs vibes. Like, he has that. Like, there's always the thing with a mask character that, like, the mask adds a layer of, like, intrigue because it, like, denies you access to their humanity in a sense, which can be fun. So, like, yeah, this is one where, like, I, again, I would be, I would be tempted to put him in the not hot tier at all, but, like, unlike Karthus, at least it's, like, no, no, there's, like, there's an effort to sexualize him. Like, there's an effort to make him, like, hey, 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 look at this. Like, there's an effort to sort of make him available for that kind of consideration. And, uh, yeah. So, sure, he goes in the hot to someone else tier, um, with most of the rest of them. And so, indeed, does, uh, Katarina. For the same reason as Karma, for the same reason as Aurelia, for the same reason as Kaisa, uh, for the same reason as, yeah as several other champions. Sure, like this is definitely someone's jam. I understand it emotionally, like, like sexy assassin lady with knives. Sure, why not? And I will say, I like the scar. Like I, I, I liked her more before they, like when they did this new splash art, they gave her a face that was accidentally too interesting. Um, Like they, they accidentally made her too 
much fun to look at. And so a lot of people on Reddit complained, and so they pulled it back, and they sort of they sort of constrained her proportions and gave her like a rounder face rather than the longer face that they'd given her. Um, which kind of sucks because I thought she was actually get, starting to look interesting a little bit, which was nice. Um, but yeah, she's like a she's like a girl in leather pants, um, who is who is like crazy and dangerous and uses knives and kills people. So yeah, sure. That is definitely someone's jam. I understand instinctively why that's hot to someone else. It's just not really for me. Just not, just not my thing. Um, the transphobia really jumped out at the time. Yikes. Yeah, I mean, it does that. Like every time Reddit has a thread complaining about how, like if any anytime a splash artist makes a female character a little bit too interesting, the threads on Reddit that are complaining about it, it's always like, oh, she looks like a man. Which like, and it's and the transphobia always comes, comes, comes out there where like someone says that she looks like a you know slur word uh, which is which is tedious which is tedious but yeah it's hot to someone else i don't have much to say about her because Kesarina, much like garen just just isn't that interesting which means we move on to kale and uh kale is like kale i'll put in anti-hot because like yeah like she's got the, she's got the like the standard sexy fantasy babe body type. Sure, that's hot to someone, but Kale's vibes are like much like Talon. Is like Kale's vibes are not only that she's not interested in sex, but that like she would murder you for even considering it. Like that, it, and not in a fun kinky kinky way. Like she's a Puritan. She's a Puritan motherfucker. Like she's deeply Puritan. She's like. Se so sex negative that it bleeds off her like an aura like she she just has the the worst what vibes in the universe like it's just again it's not only that you can't have fun with her but also that if she's within 10 miles of your location she will actively prevent you from having fun with anyone else as well like <clears throat> like it's like she'll, she'll tie you up but it's nothing about it is kinky it's just that she wants to control you and make sure that you don't enjoy even a second of your existence ever um it's just, it's just rancid, 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 awful vibes. Just terrible all the way around. And it is, it is, it is not, it's not that she's not hot because she has a hot body type, sure. It's that it's anti-hot. It's that, it's that it drains hotness out of its very environment. It's terrible. Uh, oh no, Kale isn't ace. I wouldn't even call Kale ace. Like, I don't think she's asexual. I think she's like, she's, she's, anti-sexual like she's 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 not she's not just someone who doesn't experience sexual attraction she's someone who will try to eliminate sexual attraction in every person she meets because she she thinks it's evil like because it 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 tempts people towards unjust behavior or whatever like it ugh. rancid vibes terrible not even a sex repulsed asexual either no it's it's not that she finds it repulsive as such like on on an intimate personal level it's that she wants to take it away because it makes someone else happy, right? Like she's not asexual. She wants to. She wants to remove sex from the environment because someone else might enjoy it, and we can't have that. Like it's puritanism. It's puritanism. Like that's the vibe from her. Not just because she's an angel, but because that's that's how her whole character is built. Right. Moving on. So, Kane. This one's complicated because Kane is kind of like three characters. Um, and the thing is, and I don't have the icons for this in my list, unfortunately. I, we don't have the icon for Rast or the Shadow Assassin, uh, which would have been nice to have. But the thing about Kane is, like, mostly Kane is hot to someone else. Like, he is. I, I get it. I get it. I fully understand it. He's hot to someone else. Um, I don't find him particularly appealing, but I completely understand why people do. Shadow Assassin King, I would say, is not hot. Like, I... Well, maybe that's not really true. Like, it's hot to someone else, but, like, I, I feel like Shadow Assassin King is, like, where, where it tips over and becomes too much of, like, just a Sephiroth clone. And uninteresting. But you know who's hot? Rost. Rost is hot. Like, he, 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 like, he's, he's, like, we said that Aatrox, like, we can kind of see that he's definitely hot to someone. Rost is, like, 
Ross just gets there. Like, Ross gets how, like, a demon like that is horny, right? Like, the, with the sharp teeth and, like, like the focus on, like, shaping the torso and the thing. Like, Rost is hot. So, like, Rost gets there. Like, yes, Rost is hot. Kane, hot to someone else. Shadow Assassin Kane. I mean, to me, it's just trying too hard. Like, to me, it's just a little bit too... It's a little bit... It tries a little bit too hard. It's a little bit too juvenile, in a sense. I guess. Like, there's something about it that's a little bit too immature to me to be hot. I don't I don't know how to explain it. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess anti-hot? Like, I guess I would put Shadow Assassin Kane in anti-hot, really. Um, because there's something about the vibes of it that just kind of... Even though it should be hot, like, this is a, like a Sephiroth clone, right? Like, this is, like, with the long hair and the bare torso and, like, the tattoos and, like, the, the streak of color and the hair and the thing. Like, it should be. Like, it really should be. And I, it really should feel like this is definitely hot, but something about the vibes are just off for me that makes it, like, anti-hot. So, like, Kane goes in, like, three tiers. <laughs> like, he goes everywhere uh, because he's multiple characters. Um... So yeah, but I'm gonna put him in hot to someone else because that's like in between not hot and 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 hot. But yeah, it's like odd little combination of vibes there. Where like if if he gets possessed by a demon, he's hot, but if he kills a demon, which should be a hot thing to do, all of a sudden he isn't. Ooh, still a little hot. There we go. So. Let's see. Who's next? That would be, ah, Kennen. So once again, Yordles, the question to answer there is not like, how old are they in canon? Because that's always hundreds of years. The question is, are they adults? Like, are they presented as adults? Do they, do they talk? Do they act? Do they seem like these are adult characters? And Kennen, I would say, yes, uh, he does. But also, like, there's not really, like, eh. I don't, I don't think that's, again, like, I don't think hotness is really a part of any part of canon so much. Like, he's a hamster in a, in, in, in a, in a ninja suit. Um, I don't really, I don't really know. I, I, mm, I don't know. Maybe some furry is into it, but, but I, I don't see it. I don't really comprehend it. Um. And it doesn't really seem to be part of his character. Like, it's not its not a thing to consider about him at all. And notwithstanding that his character model is also really genuinely terrible and desperately needs an update. So yeah, moving on from him to Cossix. And Cossix is most definitely hot to someone. Like, again, hot to someone else to your right there. Kha'Zix definitely belongs there because, like, there are people who find the alien from Aliens extremely hot, uh, and so Kha'Zix, who is designed to be even more appealing than that, he has, like, the, the sort of bug features. Yeah, this is a monster fucker buffet for a certain kind of person. Not really my kind of thing, I must admit. Uh, it's like, I, I, like, bugs to me have never been that sexy, but I get it. Like, I understand this thing, like, with, with, like, with the teeth and the mouth and, like, the hunched over hunting thing, um, like, the passion for consuming. Yeah, sure. I can see why that's someone else's thing. Just for me, not so much of a thing. So he goes right here. He's hot to someone else, and that's completely valid. It's just not really my kind of teratophilia. We gotta admit that aliens have almost literal cock. No, 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 not almost literal. They have literal cock. Like, if you look at the original concept art for the Aliens movie by H.R. Giger, the aliens have penis heads. And that's partly because part of the meta text of aliens, like part of the sort of thematic underpinning, is the horror of the alien is... Like, it, the part of the horror that it uses in order to make itself scary is the horror of sexual assault. Um, like, it, it, it's a thing that will 
involuntarily penetrate you and seed you with its children, which will then consume your body and burst out from the inside. Like, that's part of the horror of aliens, is there is a sexual aspect to it. That's part of what makes it so visceral and fucked up. Um... And, you know, and, and people, some some people pick up on that and go, okay, but what if it was sexy instead of being scary? Like, what, what's, like, so, you know, that's, that's pretty normal, um, for, for monster fucking. Like, that's, that's usually part of it is, like, it's about taking this thing that's about horror and disempowerment and turning it into something that's pleasant and empowering. Um, but that's, you know... But yeah, like, H.R. Giger, like, if you want to look, if you want to see some artwork that isn't porn, but, like, which really, 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 really extremely feels like it is porn, H.R. Giger is your man. Like, the tableaus that he put, I could probably show them to you, and I wouldn't get demonetized, but you would be like, oh, he should definitely get demonetized for that, because, like, oh, um, so yeah, uh, but be careful while Googling that at work. <laughs> Because I might not get demonetized, but you will definitely get fired. <laughs> so, moving on to the embodiment of death itself, the kindred. Now, the kindred, of course, are two characters. There's Lamb and Wolf. And for Wolf, I am going to pretty definitively put him in not hot category. Just because he's like a floating nothing. Um, and he's childlike. Um, like, it, like, he's either in the not discussed category or not hot, depending on how you view him. But to me, he's a little bit too childlike and simple-minded, and, like, it's, uh, like, not bad vibes. Don't want to, no, don't want to, don't want to get there. Lamb, on the other hand, is very much the adult of the two, is presented as the adult, and, and like, um, and is also character design-wise presented as the adult. I don't know if, if um, I made a short about Lamb and, their, and, and Wolf and their characters and the kindred and their character design. And Lamb has a dance that shows off just 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 how much cake uh, the character designers decided to give her 3D model. Uh, it's it it's a, it's a curvy uh, it's a curvy character model, and I can definitely see why she's so popular with the furries because uh, like obviously she is. For me. <sighs> Like, I'm, I'm sort of a little bit in between hot and hot to someone else. Like, I, cause like, I, I, sometimes I can, I can, I see it. Like, I, 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 I really like, no, yeah, that is, that is a hot character. Like, with the mask, with the bow. Like, I have a thing for archery already, as we've talked about. Like, yeah, sometimes, but then a lot of other times it's more like, yeah, it's like not really. It's like, this is somewhere in between these two. Um, and where I think the most honest answer is probably hot to someone else. Because, like, I see it, I get it, I understand it. But it's just a little bit outside of, like, my... my particular range. Her voice is also good, Cinder, you're absolutely right. Like, that very calm, uh... Like, very sort of downbeat, like, ex extremely serene, confident female voice. Like, that... Mm, that's absolutely a plus. Which moves us on to uh, the rear forward secondary admiral uh, first class lieutenant Kled of uh, <laughs> of the Noxian legions. Now Kled is definitely an adult. Uh, I don't think I don't think we can dispute that. And the thing is, I know he's hot to other people. Again, yeah, not just from R thirty four or whatever, like, but like from like people genuinely you have like like fanfics and and things where it's not just a sexual thing but it's like a thing of like oh shit like that's like, for some people that's kind of their thing so i know that intellectually definitely hot to someone else like someone's into this little horrifying sharp toothed fur shouty fur gremlin um but for me I kind of have to go with not hot. Like, like I know intellectually short. Like, someone's definitely got it. But even though I've seen the fan art, and even though, like, I, I, I know some of the fanfics, I just don't... I just don't really see it. Like, it just doesn't... I don't know how that fits together. I don't know how that works. Like, it's valid. Like, peace, peace be with you if this is your thing. It's just... I just can't see it as hot. I, I just simply can't. 
Moving on to Kog'Maw, who goes in the not discussed tier, because I think he is sentient, but he is definitely a child, so leaving that alone. Right, uh, there's been more super chats. I should probably read them. Ethan Howe sent a super chat saying, saw your video on aromanticism recently. I just wanted to say it's fantastic and I agree there should be more media, which brings awareness to it. It certainly would have helped me figuring out that I'm ace. Yeah, I mean, it's that's that's the thing about being arrow or ace in any sense. It's that so much of media is sort of predicated on the idea that we don't really exist. Like, if, if you ever see a character in media who's, like, loveless, like, who has no interest in romantic relationships whatsoever, it's invariably because they haven't met the one. Like, they just need to find the right one, and then, then they'll be romantic people, right? And, like, a character who shows no interest in sexual relationships whatsoever is always, oh, they're traumatized and broken, and they need to be fixed by, like, the correct genital interaction or whatever. Like, it's very annoying that sort of so much of media is predicated on the idea that we're not real, but, you know... I'm not ace, by the way. I am a romantic, but you know, you can watch my video about it if you want to know more details. Moving on. Le Blink. Le Blink. And uh, I gotta say, her base character design, like like this version of her. Um, this one specifically. This one for me very much goes in not hot. And not only because, like, it's a sort of standard sexy fantasy babe kind of archetype, but also just because the outfit is terrible. Like, it's 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 so bad. Like, this is a really bad, terrible, dumb outfit. It sucks. Like, it's it's not even, like, again, it's the Janna thing of, like, yeah, she's wearing a bikini, but it's not a hot bikini. Same thing with LeBlanc. Like, yeah, she's wearing a skimpy outfit, but it's not a sexy one. Like, it's not even a sexy skimpy outfit. It's just weird and... and like, bad fashion. I don't... What is this? Like, how... No. It's not hot. It is not hot. However, in Legends of Runeterra, where they give her... Like, they keep sort of the ostentatious sort of stage magician kind of, like, look at me. Like, because that's that's the point. Like, that's the point of, 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 of her character design is that it's supposed to look like a stage magician. It's supposed to look like an illusionist. It's supposed to look like someone whose costume is intentionally outrageous and weird and out there so that they can control your attention and then they can go do, like, sneaky things behind your back. Which is a sensible way to design the character. Like, that makes perfect sense. But I do, like, Legends of Runeterra, where they've given her, like, an outfit that looks like an actual outfit, but they still keep, like, she has the big golden crown and, like, this huge collar. And, like, she has the makeup and, like, and, like, uh, like the, the thing around her neck and, like, the cape and stuff. Like, where she's still ostentatious and very sort of distracting and very look at me. But it doesn't look like she's modeling, like, a really weird outfit from some fetish magazine that hasn't quite figured out what fetish it's pandering to. Um, like, because this, to me, just is so... Wait, is this, like, is she supposed to be wearing, like, a sexy bathing suit with, like, a G-string or whatever? Then, if so, then why did you give her this weird half-pant-leg thing skirt hanging down and the thigh-high thing with all those... Like, why do... You... These things don't fit together, is what I'm saying. Like, these things are all over the goddamn place. Um... Where this is like, it's a little bit more restrained. It's still sexy though. Like it's still got the cleavage. It's still got the sort of ostentatious look at me nature, but it's also a lot hotter. Like it's also a lot hotter. Um, like this, this is a character where I'd say, yeah, you know what? She's hot. Like, like not not necessarily that interesting, but she's hot. Um, but given that we're talking about LeBlanc as she looks in League of Legends, unfortunately, sorry, she goes in the not hot tier because she's just a fat. She's just such a disaster of a character design. <laughs> Like, if it got cleaned up, if it got stylized a bit more, if, like, if it gained a little bit more fashion coherence, that could probably be hot to someone else, but as it stands, it's just, I look look at this and I see too much of a design disaster. <laughs> like, it's just too much of a, what the fuck is this? Like, what is this supposed to look like? I don't know. Like, eh. No. No. I don't, I, I, I don't see it. I don't see it at all. Meaning we move on to Lee Sin. Another character who is very badly led down by his terrible character model. <laughs> like, my god, like, have you if have you ever seen the Lee Sin character model move in, like, the model viewer? Have you seen how his animations play out? His legs are, like, raggedy and doll legs. Like, they're, they're ragdoll legs. They're just, like, these complete fucking, like, Woody from Toy Story legs. Like, the way that his anatomy is put together, it's absolutely terrible. 
Now, the way that he looks in his splash art, the way that he looks in more recent artwork of him, yeah, like, he, he has something that resembles a real anatomy, and that helps a lot. Um, but Lee Sin is one of those, like, yeah, he's a, he's a ripped fantasy martial artist dude with, like, who got muscles and stuff. I think his facial hair is really kind of a... Like, is this anyone's thing? Like, is that... Is that anyone's kind of... Kind of deal? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it is someone's. So, like, I, but, like, yeah, between, like, the rip physique and everything, we'll put him in, in, in hot to someone else. Although I'm I'm sort of struggling a little bit to, to, to really see it, because, again, it's too boring. Like, it's, it again, it's, it's too... It's too much. Oh, yeah, no, that's... Fantasy hero archetype body number four. Uh, it's right there. Men have more variety than women, but my god, do they have a lot of copy pasting as well. But yeah, he looks better in Wild Rift. He looks better in Legends of Runeterra. Not so much in, in, in League of Legends, which moves us on to Leona. And Leona, once again, she's not she's hot to someone else because she's a standard hot fantasy babe. They're designed to be hot to other people. I understand why she's hot. I just boring. Just boring. Like it's oh my god. Be and it's especially her armor design. Like it's so like remember like when they put out the the call. One of the things I commented on in my animation breakdown of that video is that the animators at at uh, Unit Image had to work so fucking hard to make Leona's armor something that looks even remotely plausible and not stupid, like something that a person could actually wear and move around in. And her base splash art... Like... is just... I don't... It's with the fucking, like, the titty bikini thing made of gold and the spikes everywhere. Like, if she leans forward, she's gonna stab herself and... These things, which are, in modern incarnations, these things have been turned into, like, uh, cloth streamers. But here in her base splash art, they're made of metal. Uh, they're supposed to be metallic. And, like, then there's then there's this bit here, like, which is leather, I guess, sort of, kind of. Except it's also, like, a tight-fitting skin suit. Except it's also got, like, this metal collar. Which, how the fuck does that work? Is this thing rigid or is it soft? Who knows? The character design certainly doesn't. Leona's character design is terrible. Uh in this for and with the fucking heels like my god like this is another thing that they changed in the call is like they basically sanded her heels down to nothing <laughs> because like, having these fucking things like why why would you even like why would oh my god anyway that's besides the point uh the point is not whether or not leona is a terrible character sign she is uh the point is whether or not she's hot and it's a standard fantasy babe character it's hot to someone else i understand it i just i just my god my god, it's just bad. And uh, this is one of the things I don't feel bad about really ragging on Leona's character design because the person who designed her agrees with me. Uh, <laughs> like, he's been pretty vocal about, like, yeah, no, I didn't do a very good job on designing Leona. Actually, I do it very differently nowadays. So, yeah. Just just a bad character. Like, the model doesn't make it look any better. <laughs> Like the model just kind of reveals even more how how shoddy it all is and how much it doesn't make sense in any kind of three-dimensional space. Um so yeah, no. No, I no, I don't think so. Anyway, uh Lissandra moves up to Triple S smoking tier, and I think we can move on from that and talk about Lucian. Um no, once again I'm kidding, of course. Lissandra is one of those like I've talked a lot about it already, right? Like that, Lissandra's like, she has very much the sort of standard fantasy babe body type. She has kind of the same problem as Camille, which is that she's supposed to be this ancient ice witch that has been alive for thousands of years. But like, if you actually sort of look at her, that age is just not really allowed to come across in her character design. Like there's no, there's no real sense of this, but she's, what she has instead is sort of an ageless statuesque aspect. Like she's, she's ageless like a statue is. And that works, like that works with her dress. It works with the way that she's put together. The one thing I, I, I'm sort of annoyed is that they went with the basic sex appeal, which is that she has cleavage on the front. Like when you look at her character model, 
Um, she has cleavage on the front, which I think is silly. I have a video um, where I talk a little in, in the my What's the Deal with Alessandra video. I propose that it would be much more sexy for her to have a backless dress. First of all, because backless dresses are sexy as hell, but also because Lissandra's whole thing is about presenting a front. Like, she's presenting a strong front, but she's actually inside, she's terrified. And absolutely, like, pissing herself in fear of the Watchers and doing everything she can to delay their return. So, like, she's this character who's supposed to put up a strong, statuesque front, but actually be vulnerable. So, like, I bear back to me would be sexier and also more concurrent with her character design. All of that aside, though... She's fucking hot, though. Like, she's just hot. Like, she's just... Mm, God damn it, she's hot. This is a hot, hot, fucking hot-ass lady design. With the long, like, the arms that are a little bit too long and, like, the long, spindly fingers and, like, the statuesque appeal and the fact that she... Like, this is a woman, not a girl. This is a woman. This is someone who's been alive for a while, who knows what the fuck she wants, so has, who has, a, like, a clear sense of herself, has confidence, and rocks that fit. Like, she's... Women in evening dresses, just like, I am weak to it. My monkey brain is profoundly vulnerable to that type of damage. I, I take triple damage from that shit. And Lissandra has all of that. Like, she has the evening gown thing. She has, like, the ageless wisdom thing. Like, the... Oh, ah. Yeah. Lissandra's good. I can criticize her all day, every day, and I, I will. That's my job. But... That's, 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 that's a hot lady. That lady is hot. It's a hot lady. It's a hot lady. Also, she's got the white hair, which again, we talked about with Ash. She's like, I have a thing for it. I just do. I just have a thing for it. Um, which I just, sometimes you just have to live with it. Like, horny brain doesn't care what character designer brain wants. Quick, someone draw Ilawi in an evening gown. Don't, you'll kill me. <laughs> so, moving on to the wife guy of League of Legends. The ultimate wife guy. The guy who cares more about his wife than anyone else has ever cared about their wife ever in the history of anything. Which is Lucian. And, yeah, again, we're talking very much not my type kind of thing. Uh, he really doesn't, like, for me, no... Not really my kind of vibe, not really my kind of thing. But he's one of those that sort of very obviously goes in hot to someone else. If nothing else, he's hot to Senna. Um, but also, like, plenty of people, like, having the wife guy thing, like, the really deep romantic dedication to a partner is a thing that's hot to a lot of people. Being willing to go to impossible lengths to save the one he loves, to be dedicated even beyond death, that's romantic as fuck. And obviously that's appealing to people. Obviously that's hot hot to other people. And as people are pointing in the chat, yeah, Pe uh, Senna totally wears the strap in that relationship. Absolutely. Um, but he is like 110% ride or die for his wife whom he loves more than life itself. And obviously that is a hot thing. Yeah, and like being, being a rom a romantic, not a romantic like I am, but a romantic, a person whom is romantic that is definitely a hot thing. That's a thing a lot of people find appealing, and I fully understand why. Emotional commitment, that is hot. It's not the only thing that's hot, obviously, but emotional commitment is hot. Right, uh, next in line is Lulu. She goes into the not discussed tier as well, because uh, she's a child. Like, again, she's hundreds of years old, but I don't care. Lulu, in terms of her character, the way that she's presented, the way that she's designed, the way that she's conceptualized, she's a kid, she's a child, so she's not a subject for this particular discussion. Um, Which moves us on to Lux, which is sort of the same situation, really. Um, like, well, it's, it's, it's sort of an Ezreal situation, rather, which is that, like, in the lore, in the Lux comic, like, the one that she has with Silas, in the way that she's been portrayed in, like, the Warrior cinematic, um, she's definitely an adult there, and canonically in the lore, she is, like, 24 years old or something like that. Like, she is, she is an adult, and, like, the storylines that she goes through, she's presented as an adult character. In the game, though, and in the way that she's designed as a character in League of Legends, like the way that she usually appears. This is a child 
Uh, this this is a this is a teenage child character in Legends of Runeterra. She looks a little bit more like a young woman, like a little bit more grown up. But again, like this, like she's Ezreal-ish. She's a little bit on on the line there. But I'm moving her into the not discussed tier because she feels too much like a child to me. Like like she's meant to be more of a young adult kind of thing. But no, too childish. Too childish. Which moves us on to yet another character who's complicated by Legends of Runeterra, which is Malphite. Now, Malphite, I mean, I guess the monster fucker is always like a bit of size different kink, I guess. Um, but I would argue that in his such as he is, <laughs> the way that they've designed him, the way that he actually looks, like he kind of has to go into not hot territory. Now, the caveat there is that in Legends of Runeterra, where they've substantially updated his character design, where they've made it make a lot more sense, like they've given him this like rock beard, like which gives him a little bit more of sort of that like sort of that masculine appearance. They've given him an anatomy that makes a lot more sense, and they've given him the relationship with Chip, who is his adorable, precious, perfect son. And Malphite is a very good dad to him, and being a very good dad to a precious little son is a really hot thing. Like that's that's absolutely appealing. And so Legends of Runeterra, Malphite. Definitely hot to someone else. Like that that's that's where I would put him. But in League of Legends, until he gets a visual update, I'm sorry. This this right here, this is not I'm sorry, that's not hot. So that he has to stay here. Um with, with the caveat that once he gets a visual update, he'll probably move up to hot to someone else or hot. Um uh, one of the two, depending on how they go with it. But no, right now, not hot. Just not just just not there. Why does his model have rock underwear? Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of the same question of, like, um... We'll get, we'll get to him in a second, but, um... Like, why does Maokai have a loincloth? Like, why does he have a loincloth? Does, what does he... Does he ha what does he have that he needs a loincloth for? It's kind of that same question where, like, you have a design feature that raises too many questions uh, that you don't want to answer. <laughs> because, like, the answer is always going to be a got wood joke, um, or he's got a trunk, or, you know. Or whatever. Uh, but yeah. Uh, let's see. We're, we're pretty far along now, aren't we? We're like... Uh, we're about halfway through, I think. And it's only taken... Four hours. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be here for a while, won't we? Um, so. Malsahar. It's hot to someone, isn't it? Like, it, it's hot to someone... Like, like I, I can see it, like, with the whole, like, there's definitely a bit of, like, uh, hypnosis, mind break, sort of, uh, corruption kink there. Like, it's hot to someone. Um, I, I would say, like, even though, like, again, this is because Malzahar is one of those very old character designs. It's hot to someone, but, like, but, like, even so, it's, like, you kind of have to work for it, don't you? Like you have to work for it. Like you have you have to go pretty hard to get to the point where it gets hot. Um. And I I'm like yeah, like I can see that in, in it's again one of those situations. I can see that intellectually this is definitely hot to someone. Like that that someone will like look at the splash art and be like oh no no yeah like like the sort of spindly weirdo dude who's like gonna hypnotize you into something like yeah sure. Maybe, maybe, but, but even so, like, even so, this is not hot. Like, I, I really, just because it's still too shoddy, like, because the, the design is too old and the character model is too bad and, like, even, like, it doesn't take enough, it's too boring, it's too not cool enough. Um, so yeah, 
is like, yeah, uh, like, because again, like in the splash art, like he's got those long spindly hands thing, like that some people have a hand thing that they would find hot, but he doesn't really have that in the character model, and it's not clear how much that's meant to really be part of him. Malzahar desperately needs an update, and then maybe we can talk about him, but until then, I'm putting him in the not hot tier because, yeah, it's not really. Anyway, Maokai, though, is definitely hot to someone else. Um, just because he has, like, he has a much more interesting monster design. Like, he's, he's, right now, he's basically the much better version of Malphite. In the sense, like, we have this big, elementally themed, like, like, very large, bulky, brawny character. Where Maokai just does so much more interesting stuff, um, with the character design. Like, he has much more of, like, a, of a particular, like, he has a gender energy. He has, like, a masculine energy. Whereas Malphite, he doesn't so much have a genderless energy as much as he's like, he looks like he's supposed to be masculine, but doesn't really, but it does it really poorly. Like, because he just kind of looks like a, a nothing burger of a thing. Like, whereas, so he doesn't really have any appeal from any, any kind of direction of gender, and he doesn't even have appeal as gender fluid or anything like that. He just, he looks like a, a, a character design that tries and fails to do masculinity in a way that Maokai succeeds at. Um, so, like, I, yeah, I, I can definitely see that someone finds this hot, like, with the huge arm. Like, with the brawniness and th sort of, like, this, the slightly strange proportions. And he has, like, he has, like, the thing of, like, the tragic backstory and the soulful eyes and, th and, and things like that, definitely. And the Ruined King game definitely cleans him up in a way that makes him probably appealing to a lot more people. But, yeah, this is one of those, like, yeah, no, there, there's, a, there's a monster fucker out there who definitely who's definitely all about this sort of stuff. Like, he's literally got a little beard of leaves and stuff. Um, not my kind of thing, but absolutely a valid inclination. Let's see. Uh, there's a couple more Super Chats. I should probably get to those before they build up. Uh, <laughs> the Chain Warden says, Karthus is only interested in your body once it stops breathing. Yeah. Yeah, that's a thing. Um, Kale is the type of person who would unironically say premarital hand-holding, how dare you, or stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, it's not even that she would be personally offended by it. It's not like, like that's against the law, therefore you die. Um, like, having any kind of fun is against the law, so therefore fuck you. In the words of Akali, why the hot one's always crazy. Yeah. Thank you, Classified. Dr. Nauk, she can make clones, though. That's all. that's true. Like, that's, that's, a, that's a valid consideration with LeBlanc, is that you can have as many LeBlancs as you want. Uh... Cool. Like, why not? Um, new to League of Legends, this is certainly an interesting introduction, Musculus. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know that I would recommend this stream as the introduction. Um, like, if you want if you want the short version of what the characters are like outside of their hotness, uh, I have some hot, short hot takes on that that sort of do a better job, <laughs> I think, of introducing people. This is maybe not the one you want to watch to sort of find out what League of Legends is like, uh, but it is probably the one you want to watch to find out what League of Legends fan art is like. Victor Hendon, looking forward to Mordekaiser. Oh yeah, Mordekaiser is going to be fun. And then there's Lost Phoenix. I'd like to stay longer, but ki but with Kindred and Dragon Ace all placed and in need of sleep, I must go now. Your videos have helped me a lot with character design. Now I just need to learn to draw. Well, all it takes is practice. Like, don't ever believe someone who says, so you have to have talent. No, you don't. Practice. It's work. Work is what makes you good at drawing. Nothing else does. Um, thank you for the stream. Good night. Good night, Lost Phoenix. And then we have Master Yi. And there's... Sort of two ways, because Master Yi, when he has the helmet off, when he's not dressed like a sort of cheap 90s toy with a tie-in commercial, when he's not dressed like he, like he, like every time someone mentions him, they have to say batteries not included. When he's not dressed that way in the lore, in the canon, he is quite a hot character. Like he, he is like a, a sort of handsome, uh, sort of attractive patriarch of, of of a small village like he, he has he has a little bit of that hotness energy where you can sort of see it but the way that he actually looks in league of legends the way that he actually looks in league of legends this is I, he he looks like a, a c tier power rangers villain like he looks like he should be fighting the ninja turtles in like one episode that then later got lost and never rebroadcast like he looks like he fought He-Man in like a shitty 2000s reboot of the franchise. Like he's terrible. He's he's awful and he is not hot. Like Master Yi is not hot. This 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 character design, this version of the character is just not 
not sexy, not hot, not, I, maybe someone's into it, sure, why not? But no, you can't, no, you can't convince me. I will, I will not allow it. Some of the skins, sure, but not this version. Like, he looks like, he, like I said, he looks like he should come with a label that says batteries not included, and not in a fun way. Like, it's not that he doesn't have a vibration function, it's like, he's got real sword swinging action. Like, that's what he's got. Which moves us on to... Misfortune. And Misfortune's character design is one that, once again, like... I don't know if... Okay, actually, fuck it, let me find this, because it helps clarify, uh... Let me find it. I'll read it to you, because it helps clarify things a little bit. Let's see, she's the fifth, third, uh, second... Six. She's the sixth. Right. Let me, let me just bring this up on screen for you here. Back in ye olden times of League of Legends, back uh, when the game basically first came out, and the whole game was centered around the, the, the Institute of War and the League of Legends being an actual, like, blood sport competition within the world of the lore, and all the champions were, like, sort of, like, athletes or fighters fighting in this, this grand tournament thing. The champions would go through a process called the judgment. Like they would enter, I want to be a champion in the League of Legends and they would have this magical judgment thing where like a summoner would look into their minds and expose their weakness and stuff. And these were sort of the introductory bits of storytelling that was sort of meant to tell you who this character is, what are they all about, what do they care about. So let me read this to you now. <clears throat> Misfortune spills into the great hallway with the same tenacity that she spills into her silk blouse, both taxed to contain her. She is cramped inside any structure not bobbing across the salt ocean. Her eyes pan across the recessed ceiling filigree with disdain, the toil of Valorant's finest artisans a pitiful substitute for the night sky's celestial collage. The disapproving shake of her head would be imperceptible if not exaggerated by the wag of her ornamented tricorn, the defining accessory of a captain. An avalanche of cherry locks tumbles from the hat, engulfing her shoulders in scarlet waves. Her every feature seduces attention, a weapon as, or perhaps more potent, than the enormous gilded muskets clinging to her hips. She bounds across the tiles. The impact of every footfall ripples up the curves of her figure, the distraction of her beauty magnified in motion. One can practically see the hearts of those who have beheld her trailing in her wake. That's misfortune. That's how she was introduced. That is how everyone was told this is what the character is about. This is like, she breasted boobily down the stairs. Like, she, she she turned her tits in an eastward direction and then she titted forwards while tittering. Like, it's just, it's just, that was who she was. That was how she was constructed. 110% uncomplicated, absolute wank material eye candy. That was the only function that she had as a character. And you can tell from the character design. Like, the character design is very much on board with that particular idea because we have this tiny little, I don't know what the fuck that is, a bustier, uh, whatever that is, like, just sort of barely covers her the nipples on her giant fucking titties while they're sort of hanging down, being supported from below by these plant leaf nothing things that are, like, tied with a little bow, and she's got, like, the fucking cum gutters showing up out of the... Like, and, like, the, the pa leather pants don't even fully clothes over her legs they sh like they slit down this like she's a fuck doll like that's that's basically with the way that they created her is like this is a masturbation aid for young men like that's how they created her as that kind of character and that's ugh. like it's it's too much like it's it's cringy like it's it's again this thing of like something can like pirate girls are sexy like hot red-headed pirate girls with big titties that's just hot. You don't have to try so hard. You don't have to fucking... Like, you don't have to do all of the... She can just be a red-headed pirate girl who has big... That's enough. Everyone understands that that's hot. You don't have to go fucking spelling it out in neon giant letters as though that's the only thing about the character that even remotely matters. Like, it's... Oh, it's cringe. It's cringe is what it is. It's too much. It's just so... It's so try-hard. Like, it's so masturbatory to the point where it's like... No. 
Like, it, it's, it's, it's not, I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. Um, and her character model has sort of, with texture updates and things, they've sort of desexualized her a little bit over the years to make it like a little bit less extreme, but you can still see where it came from. And I would like to say that Captain Fortune, like the, the skin that she got after Gangplank's rework, like because where she's become the pirate lord of Bilgewater, that it's better. The splash art is certainly a lot better, but the character model, I mean, it's, it's still using the same character model, and so it doesn't look cool or badass so much as it looks very awkward. Like, it, it's a very awkward fit. Um, it doesn't... <sighs> she looks good in Ruined King. Like, in the Ruined King game, in, 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 like the, in like the comics and the media that have been published about her outside of the game, she looks good. Like, and, and that character... That character I would definitely describe as hot. Like, Miss Fortune in the Ruined King game, hot. Definitely fucking hot. Miss Fortune in the comics about her, definitely a hot character. Miss Fortune in League of Legends right now? Anti-hot. Like, it's it's just, it's too cringe. Like, it's just, it's so try-hard. Like, it wants to be sexy so bad. Like, it's so desperate for it. That I just, I just, I just, I just lose, I just can't. Like, I just fucking can't. It's like booth babes at E3. Like, it's that shit. It's like, because like, this character design thinks that I'm a fucking moron. Like, that's, that's the vibe I get from this character design is like, it thinks I'm a fucking moron. It thinks I'm a mouth breathing, like brainless idiot who will just stare empty headed at any set of tits that walks into the room. Like I have no inter, like it, it, it really feels condescending. Like, it feels like it thinks I'm an idiot. Um, and that's not hot. Like, like... And again, if they hadn't been so fucking... extra, like, if they had just had the slightest bit of restraint, this would probably be a hot character design. This would go in hot to someone else. Uh, because, like, it would still be a little much for me. Maybe maybe it would go in hot, actually. Like, maybe my, my, my monkey brain would be convinced to sort of... But it's just... It just goes too far. It goes too far. And I look at it and I all I just see is like is like this attitude of men are stupid idiot apes who think with their penises and therefore cannot be held responsible for their actions kind of thing. And I don't like that. That's it's anti-hot to me. Like it's it's just cringe and cringe is 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 not hot. Again, misfortune in the Ruined King game, misfortune in the Captain Fortune splash art. Definitely a hot character because she's definitely hot, but she's not falling on her own ass trying to prove it to anyone. So yeah, for the moment, until she gets a visual update, which she very badly needs, she goes in the anti-hot category. Let's see, uh, there's some things in chat. Do you think Kalista is a good example of what a Kaisa-like champion should actually look like? It's one idea. Like, Kaisa as this sort of, like, Kaisa being, like, emaciated and clearly, like, undernourished because she's just getting by on whatever nutrients her suit is giving her, and she can never really kill enough void monsters to really, to really sustain herself. That would be a more interesting idea for the character. Like, that, like, having her sort of be emaciated but sustained by the suit, like, wiry and skinny and muscular. Definitely. That could definitely work. Yeah, sometimes the model freaks out a little bit, um, because, like, my camera tracking does a thing, and then I... Yeah, you can see it, it pops like that. Um, but yeah, moving on. Mordekaiser. Now, Mordekaiser is yet another one of those who, to me, is, like, a very, very easy hot to someone else. Because, uh, again... Not really my style of thing, but, like, yeah, obviously. Like, obviously people are into this shit. Like, people are horny for Sauron. Obviously they're horny for Mordecai. So he's, like, huge. He's buff. He's shredded. He has, like, he has, like, very large hands with which he will grab you by the throat and hold you up and give you orders and tell you what to do um, and tell you how to please him. Obviously people are into that. Like, clearly. 
clearly people are into that. Uh, people like the armored thing. People like the faceless thing. People like the sort of like um, the sort of inhuman aspect of it. Uh, people like the whole thing of like he's a conqueror. He takes what he wants. Like kind of dominant daddy thing. Obviously, people are into that. Not my kind of thing. Once more, but this is very easily into the other people are into this kind of tier. Clearly. Which gets us on to Morgana. Now, Morgana is a champion like so many other champions. Like, my complaint about Morgana, once again, is that it's that body type again. Like, it's the, it's the same one. It's, the, it's this one again. And I feel like she was supposed to be the opposite of Kale, right? Like, she was supposed to be the, like, the polar opposite, like the yin to her yang, the dark to her light. She was supposed to be the polar opposite of Kale. And so the obvious thing is to, like, give her a different fucking body type at the very least. Like, like do something that... It's not like where where she has the same face like they're twins they have the same face they have like sort of the same general physique but they live very different lives like where Kale is all about military training and discipline and like uh, never feeling any pleasure or having any fun what if Morgana was a hedonist like what if she was someone who indulged like who, who had that kind of vibe to her like someone who's not constantly trying to keep a skinny waist because discipline or whatever but like maybe enjoys to find it like slightly chubby maybe like anything just anything I don't care like make her buff make her anything other than just exactly the same thing as Kale in a different costume would be nice, right? So I have my criticisms of Morgana that a lot more could have been done to make a contrast between them, like to show that they are twins, but they're also opposites. More could have been done with the character design, and also it would have been a little hotter, in my frank opinion. Having said all that, I am I am I am not too good to be swayed by hot goth all an angel GF. I am, I am, <laughs> I am not too good for that. Yes, this works on me. This absolutely works on me. I, I can see how it could be better, but yeah, this works on me. Morgana is hot. She is hot. She is hot in all the ways that Kale isn't. And that's one thing that they did succeed in is like Kale is anti-hot, but Morgana is definitely hot. Like, definitely she is. Clearly she is. Uh not not super as a smoking like again if she had had like a different body type she if she had had like any kind of different body type than just standard fantasy babe i would probably be a lot more smitten with her but because there's that aspect of being boring on top of it yeah it has to go in the yeah no she's hot but not that hot tier she can summon chains to her will yeah of course that's also an appealing thing is uh, there's the whole bondage thing that you can get into, um, if that's your kind of bag. I need a drink. Right then, let's move on to uh, more fishy business. And here we're sort of into, I feel like Nami in a lot of ways does all the things that I would have liked Cassiopeia to do. Well, not all of the things, but she does a lot of it, which is to say that here we have a mermaid, right? So classic monster girl concept. And here they actually do some proper mixing and matching of features. Like her hair is made out of sort of the same stuff as like the, the tail um, of a goldfish kind of thing. She has like the frills. Like, they incorporate much more of, like, the physicality of a fish fully into the shape of the character, fully into the person, in a way that's much more interesting and much more compelling um, than I think it is with Cassiopeia. Um, and so, like, if nothing else, then just for that reason, yeah, Nami's hot. Uh, definitely hot. Now, I do think her Legends of Runeterra incarnation, once again, um, does a better job with the character, just because... They do, they do, they smooth her out a little bit, but they also, like, the one thing that sort of bothers me a little bit about base Nami, right, is this, the, the whole fish titties thing. And it's not that she shouldn't have a bust, like, it's not that she shouldn't have, like, a, like, a, a bust as such. I think that shape language is good. Like, having the shape language of a bust works for her. It's just that these are so clearly breasts. And again, the thing I like, the thing that's interesting about her is the mixing and matching of like humanoid and fish features. And why would a fish have titties? 
as such. And what the Legends of Runeterra incarnation does, like, it keeps the shape of it. Like, you can see there's still the shape of, like, a bust there to give her that feminine aspect, to give her that appeal. But it's less, ha look at the cleavage, look at the cleavage, look at the cleavage, and more, hey, we're using the shape language of a human, like, a, a, a beautiful human, in order to sort of enhance the fish. Like, there's more melding and blending going on there, and I like that better. Uh, that this feels less like it's sort of inviting you to stare at cleavage, and more like this is this is an aesthetic part of the character um, in an interesting way. This is a minor complaint, by the way. Like, I don't think there's not that much of a difference between her base design and her Legends of Runeterra design. The Runeterra design just kind of updates a lot of her gear and stuff to make it look more sort of coherent. Um, but yeah, like, I, I like the updates that have been done. Nami herself, hot character. Generally speaking, a decent character design. Um, and, like, man, the mermaid designs in Legends of Runeterra, I should do a fucking maybe we'll do a tier list stream of legends of rune terra cards by how hot they are because like there's some fucking cool ass mermaids and shit um in legends of rune terra that i need to talk about as well but no yeah nami definitely a hot character She's also poly in Legends of Runeterra. Yes. In Legends of Runeterra, Nami is part of a polycule with two other mer people, I believe. Is it three or two? I think it's two. Uh, a male mer person who's sort of an, a, the a, Abyss Guard card, and then a, a Siren Singer mer person who is female, I believe. Or non binary? One of the two. Um, but yeah, she, she, she's in, a, she's in a, a queer polycule in Legends of Runeterra. So, uh, okay, I see people are bringing up the knots in chat already. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I should maybe have anticipated that. Uh, um, I, I will not be bringing that into my discussion. Um, anyway, Nasus. Again, this is fairly easy. Uh, this is like it's fairly... It's a fairly simple thing to say that Nasus is definitely hot to someone else. Again, not really my type, not really my kind of thing, but no, yeah, like it, he's... He's a big buff bara dog furry. Obviously, he's hot. To, like obviously, he is clearly. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's not even. It's not even. That's not even hard to argue. Of course, he is. His character model maybe lets him down a little bit. Like it's a little bit. Like it's 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 one of the first sort of big successful um, visual updates. But it's also old and it's showing its age. Like there's some disproportionality with the arms and the torso and stuff. But. But as a character, like, yeah, no, obviously people are into that shit. It's really, it's really, it's really, it's really not difficult at all <laughs> to see why. Um, which moves us on to someone who's maybe a little bit more, uh, more difficult to see, which is Nautilus. Um, and Nautilus, I'm a little bit in two minds about because, like, because I know people find this hot, and I can kind of like. He really should go in hot to someone else. But there's also a part of me that wants to put him in not hot. Be for, for some of the same reasons as like, um, as like Asir and, and, and like other characters we talked about. In the sense that he just doesn't feel like he's available to be hot. Right? Like he just doesn't feel like that would really be an available thing for him. An available part of him to really thirst over, and because of that, like, it, it's sort of, like, that to me is, like, a thing of, like, but then why would you even, like, why would you even, if, if he's so completely unavailable from that perspective? But then, on the other hand, like, you look at the way that he's presented in Legends of Runeterra a little bit more, and it's, like, it's also a part of, like, the presentation of the character. He's such a cartoon character in League of Legends. Like, he's so cartoony, he's so kind of, he's a Scooby-Doo villain. Like, that's the thing, is, like, he, he looks like a villain from a Scooby-Doo episode, is the thing. And those can't be hot. Like, I'm sorry, a Scooby-Doo villain just cannot be hot. There's just, like, no, I'm sorry. That is, that is, that is not a particular option. But then the way he's presented in Legends of Runeterra is more like, oh, no, no, yeah, okay. No, this, ma this makes it clearer. Like, this presentation, this change in presentation of the character. No, yeah, okay, I get it now. I see it. I can understand why. Why that's a thing. And so... For all my misgivings, um, he probably does have to go in hot to someone else tier. Because, like, yeah, obviously. Like, uh, like, obviously someone's into this. 
not this so much. Like this is, yeah, this is a little bit Scooby Dooby Doo. Where are you? Um, but this is more. Yeah, like this is this is more. I get it. I understand that. Let's see. Uh, oh God, there's more super chats. Um. Hi, I would like to. Uh, no, no, that one. Smile dog. I would let Mordecai to smash me with that giant mace if you get what I'm saying. I do. I understand you completely, my friend. Also, Mordecai can always host, which I can appreciate. <laughs> yeah, Matthew Bradley. Uh, Drunken A, you found your channel yesterday and I love your character design breakdowns. I'm attempting to get into the world building and character design and was wondering if you had any advice. My advice is do whatever the hell you want. Like, do what makes you happy, do what you enjoy. Um, like, there's no way to burn out faster to kill your own passion and, and and drive than to think about, like, how am I supposed to do this? Like, what what am I supposed to do? What's the right thing to do? What's what's the approved way to do it? What would the critics like? It will kill you. Um, you are not a corporation. You are not Riot Games. You are not Disney. You are not Netflix. You are not any of those things. Like, you don't have to conform to those standards. Do whatever the fuck makes you happy. Whatever you think is fun, whatever brings you joy, whatever whatever... Whatever tickles your fancy, do that. And I promise you that the other people in the world who enjoy the same things will find you. And I can't promise that there'll be a lot of them. Like maybe maybe your thing is very niche. Maybe it's only a few people. But those people will find you and they will share their appreciation with you. And that's where you find your community. And that will, that will give you strength to go on. But don't worry about how you're supposed to do it. Like if you, if you go looking for advice and like like um, like rules for writers, books, or whatever. Take whatever advice is useful to you, like whatever advice makes you more passionate to write, and discard anything that discourages you. Because you're not a corporation. You don't exist to make product for people to consume. Make stuff that you want to make that makes you happy. It's the only way to sustain this shit, I promise you. Like, like even for my YouTube channel, like this thing I'm doing right now, right here, this dumb little horny tier list stream that I'm doing, that's partly because I just want to do something dumb and fun, man. Like, I, I didn't do this because I thought it would be particularly good for business. Like, it, there's been a lot, there's a lot of people here, so clearly it is, but that's because I just want to have some fun. I just want to do something low stress and enjoyable that is fun to me. And if I, I, I could have chased a lot of money and I could have gotten like a lot more popular a lot faster, I think, if I had been more of a play the game of YouTube, but I would also have been very unhappy and I would have flamed out and burned out and I wouldn't be here right now. So do the thing that makes you happy. Like do that thing. And don't let anyone push you into into commercializing or monetizing your thing for the purpose of, of like infinite capitalistic growth because it'll kill you. It'll kill you. Anyway, uh, that was that got a little bit serious all of a sudden. Um, let's talk about uh, Brave put a uh, very, very strong tomato, which is Nico. Now Nico is one of those champions who's a little bit like you can read her as an adult, but you can also read her as like more of a more of a childish character. I can see it either way. I don't read her as childish. Like I really don't see her as childish. Uh, but I can see why someone would, and consequently, I can see why someone would feel, like, really uncomfortable about, like, rating her hotness and things like that. Because, like, if you see this as a childish character, that's, like, ugh, that's a yikesy shit. I don't. I see her as an adult. Uh, like, the thing that makes her feel childish, especially, is that she's she has this very awkward English language thing where she does this sort of caveman speak occasionally that, that, sort, of, that sort of infantilizes her a little bit. It's a little bit of that born sexy yesterday trope. Uh, that I think kind of sucks. But Nico to me is an adult character. Uh, I think she's supposed to be read and understood as an adult. And But to me, like, hot to someone else, probably. Because to me, she's more just cute. Like, she's, she's, she's intensely adorable. Like, she's just such a cute little thing. But hot? Mm. No, like I guess someone, someone probably definitely isn't like the the Sapphix are definitely into this, but for me this is not really hotness. Uh, like there's the shape shifting, like the fact that she can transform, definitely put some points on the scale in that sense. But still, for me, eh, no, not really. And it's also like Nico is Saf, like Nico is a lesbian, 
So she would never be interested in me. And that to me is also one of those things that kind of like, yeah, but then so why should I find her hot, really? Like, <laughs> it's like, why, why waste my time with that? So yeah, it's like, eh. Again, and I have my many complaints about Nico that I've articulated already. It's like, if you have a character who's meant to be part chameleon, then at least, like, give them more than just, like, a tail and green hands. Like, they do more with that. Like, again, the monster girl problem in League of Legends is that they never make monster girls. They make ordinary girls in monster-ish costumes. Um, where I really wish that they would have gone a little bit further. Like, at least giving her, like, chameleon legs or, like, like something more to really incorporate the aspect of, like, a chameleon into her, rather than just give her, like... Because, like, this is this is a Disney face. Like, this is very much in the mold of, like, like Tangled, Frozen, Moana, Encanto. Like, like, all of the modern Disney features. Like, it's very much this facial construction with the big eyes, like, the little button nose and the big lips and, like, the smile. Which, again, it's too boring. I've seen it too many times before. I, I, I just can't get interested or excited for it. Um, so yeah, like, this is definitely someone's thing, it's just not really my thing. Which moves us on to, um, well, I'm gonna put her right here anyway, right now. Uh, which moves us on to Nidalee, who goes in anti-hot, and I'll explain why. She goes there for the same reason that Misfortune does. It's, yeah, like, this, this is a hot lady in a skimpy outfit. Cool. Hot lady in skimpy outfit. I, I fully understand why that's supposed to be hot. But she does a fucking stripper pole dance. Like, she, she pole dances on her spear. And she has the mating season joke. And it's so... It's so... It's cringe. Like, it's so... It's so cringe. And again, if you find her hot... That's because she's designed to be hot and you're just responding to that. That's normal. Like, you you don't need to feel bad if you find Nidalee attractive. It's just, I... For me, it just loops around and just becomes like... It just, it just saps any sort of attraction out of the room. Because, again, it's this design that sort of... It, it, thinks, it thinks my brain is in my dick and that I don't care about anything else. And I find that tremendously unattractive and unappealing. Um, and, oh, I should actually find that. Uh... This Nidalee, this one right here, that one would go in hot. Like, that one would go in hot, maybe hot to someone else, depending on how I f I'm feeling that particular day. But this Nidalee, uh, am I showing it on screen? No, I'm not. Oh, this one. There we go. <laughs> Needed to click a thing. This Nidalee right here. That's cool. Like, that's a, that's a Nidalee that could definitely be hot because it's a character who is more interesting, first of all, who doesn't look like a, like a sex doll. Like, she doesn't look like, like... Like, she was, she was pumped up specifically to be appealing. In the same way, like, this is cool, this is interesting, this is a good character design. This is a character design that has something to say outside of, haha, look at my titties. This one, no, it's anti, it's too much. Like, it just, it just wants too badly for me to think it's hot, and I just, it's too try-hard, and I can't stand it. There's also the problematic aspects of the character, which is, like, the sexy jungle woman is an old colonialist stereotype. Like, it's, 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 it's as old as colonialism itself. It goes back a long ass way. It's part of, like, it, this is, like, way beyond the scope of the stream, but, like, it's part of some really ugly ass racial stereotypes about the racialized other, both, like, both in, like, the Asian subcontinent and in, like, parts of Africa, like, the sexy, hot, sexually available minx, jungle woman, cougar kind of thing. Like, that whole thing, it has an ugly history. And I really fucking wish that Riot hadn't so uncritically imported the whole thing, like, with the bone earrings and, like, like straight out of, like, a 1940s colonialist cartoon design aspect of the character in the game. Because, like, it's... Oh, uh, my God. Like, the character's already kind of too much, and then you slap all of that cultural baggage on top of it, and it just gets bad. Not to mention, like, and this is the other thing about Nidalee, that has nothing to do with her base character design, but they make her white in so many of her skins. Like, they just straight up make her white, which is like another layer of like, why would you do this? Why, why, why would you do this? Riot, who, who, who signed off on it? Like, why, why would you do that? 
So, like, Nidalee just comes with too much baggage. On top of which, her base character design is already, like, just way too... Way too childish. Not in the sense that, like, Zoe is childish, but it's childish and juvenile in the sense of being like, yeah, I know, I was 13 once, but, like, I don't want to be reminded of that anymore. Oh, God. Uh, so, yeah, no. Yeah, no, Nidalee is, is anti-hot to me, because, like... Uh, no, no. Are you not going to talk about the fact that Nidalee turns into a cat? Yeah, that's the other thing is like, oh, the wild jungle people of the far distant regions have magical powers and a special nature connection that gives them nature magic powers is also another. Like, it, Nidalee is just a whole sandwich of, of, of unfortunate things that just all congeal together into a big unfortunate sandwich. Um... So yeah, like I just, uh, don't don't want to talk about Nidalee anymore. Don't want to talk about her. She's anti-hot to me. Moving on to Nocturne, a character who like who looks pretty cool and badass in the splash art, but then you look at the character model and it's a little bit. <sighs> yeah, so Nocturne to me looks like a really. Like, he looks like a World of Warcraft enemy from, like, from b way back when the game launched. He looks terrible. Like, he, he just... Yeah, it's like... Uh, but even even if we look at the splash art where he, like, looks cool and well-proportioned and badass and shit, even this, like... Again, I struggle to find this particularly hot. Like, I, I struggle to see the idea that Nocturne, even as he's presented here is hot like it no like maybe maybe he's cool from with from sort of like a juvenile 13 year old sketching on the back of their high school math book whatever like math homework kind of thing like maybe he's cool in the sort of a sense of you might have put something like him on a metal album cover in the 80s back when back when we didn't know how lame that was going to turn out to be in hindsight maybe but hot no, 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 I, 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 I really, I really don't see that. I really don't see that. Anyway, Nuno goes and not discussed. I hope I don't have to explain why. Uh, Willimp is also, I'm not 100% sure how sentient Willimp is, but even then I don't want to, I don't want to get into it. Uh, so not discussed is Nunu. Which moves us on to, uh... <laughs> the character with the worst helmet in the game. Uh, no, he and Trindamir share that honor. But Olaf and Trindamir with their fucking horned helmets because, hey, Vikings had horned helmets, right? As a person who's trained as a historian, that just annoys me on a fundamental level. But outside of that, yeah, sure. Olaf is definitely hot to someone. Like, he's a big bara muscle daddy dude with the big beard and, the, like, long hair. And he's weirdly clean-shaven. Like, I don't know why... He why he doesn't have any body hair outside of outside of his beard or whatever that's that's a weird thing for him to care about but yeah sure he's hot to someone else why not why wouldn't he be um because obviously like yeah. <laughs> any character with that body type obviously hot to someone else i don't find it very appealing again like you probably worked that out by now and also his character model is um is a little dire uh but you know yeah definitely someone's type Which moves us on to Oriana, our lovely little robot sort of uh, dancer character. Now, I will say her character model, it's one of the old models that has held up the best just because like, yeah, it's its its stiff and in sort of uncanny and robotic and weirdly proportioned. But that's correct because she's supposed to be sort of clockwork ballerina. And also she's hot. She is like she, yeah. It's this is cool, and it's really well designed. And I love I love the thing about her that like she's separated at the waist and she has this clockwork skirt that goes around. Like she's interesting, she's fun, and she's strange and odd. And like there's something there. Like and again, I have my criticisms of this is still the same sort of hot babe archetype body, but it makes sense because she's like a clockwork ballerina. Like having the standard sexy hot babe archetype body type 
works for her character. Like, it interacts with the way that her character is constructed in that she's literally constructed. She's literally a fake person who's built specifically to be pretty according to conventional beauty standards. Like, it makes sense for a constructed person to have that rather impossible, unattainable body type in real life constructed into her because she's a she's a puppet. She's literally built to be pretty. Huh. So yeah, like, Oriana... Oh, hang on. Um, Oriana, definitely hot. Like, yep. I definitely see it. Like, and I feel it. Which, like, notwithstanding, like, there's some anatomical questions to be answered about if you were to have spicy times with this particular... How would that even work? Um, which fan artists have answered many, many times. Um, but, like, that's not the thing that makes the character hot. Like, it's not about whether or not you can have sex with them. It's about... It's about more than that. Like, there's there's more than that to hotness, specifically. Uh, although it is an important component, I, I should note. Um, which moves us on to... Yeah, you know what? Let's, let's, not, let's not beat around the bush. Um, Orn is definitely hot. Like, yeah. Uh, again, he's not really my type. Like, it's not really... It's not really the kind of thing that I... I find hot generally. But, like, this is just, like... No, yeah, I'm not an idiot. Like, he's hot for the same reason that Braum is hot. Like, obviously. You kind of have to be blind not to see it. You kind of have to, like... Yeah, obviously he's hot. Uh, so, yeah. Of course he's there. <laughs> like, why wouldn't he be? Um, Yeah, do I need to explain this? Like, he's... He's 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 a fucking, like, big, buff, burly, furry bara dude with, like, a huge, well-manicured... Like, that's the other thing. Like, it's not just that he's hairy. Like, he's groomed. He's manicured. He, like, he keeps his beard very tidy. And, like, he clearly does a little bit... little Just a little bit of... A little bit of self-care there. He's got, like, the big, burly, meaty hands. He's got the ability to generate heat from within himself. Like, he's just always gonna be light and warm. Uh, which is, like, that's also a thing that's appealing. Like, because he's not only, like, he's hot, he's a good cuddler. Like, he would give the most amazing hugs, except, of course, he would never give you a hug, ever. Like, he would let you hug him. Absolutely. Like, he would let you hug him, but he would never give you a hug. He would just never do that. Um, like, except in the most extreme of circumstances. Like, if you were, like, lying on the floor crying because your heart had been broken by some boy or whatever. Like, yeah, oh yeah, he'd comfort you. He, he like, at that point, he would, like, oh, come here then. And, like, he'd, he'd sort of pick you up and hold you. And it wouldn't be a hug. Definitely not a hug. Like, he, I'm not hugging you. But, like, you could feel that he, like, squeeze you a little bit, just a bit to comfort. Like, that's the kind of vibe he has. Like, he's got that emotionally distant dad who tries to express his love in in like in every way other than actually saying it kind of vibe and some people are super into that i'm not so much but i fully comprehend why that's hot to people like i fully comprehend it absolutely and plus as someone points out in chat he also there's also the size different kink kink because like orn is big like he's very very large like he he, he looks kind of squat and stout but he's like nine ten feet tall like he's enormous so if you have a size kink that's definitely also available for you right there so yeah this like this is this is not hard to explain is it at all i don't think so if only riot would give him like some more attention and love honestly but i mean he did show up in the call so you know that's something and we can kind of we can kind of do the same thing with pantheon can't we like yeah, obviously. Like, is there any... It, <laughs> do I need to explain this? Is it not... Is, is this a thing that needs to be... That needs to be articulated? Or do we just understand this instinctively and can we move on to something else? We'll talk about it a little bit. I will say, this version of Pantheon, the splash art version... Is, I don't know. Like, uh, because, like, he's, he's so fucking clean-shaven for some reason. Like, my headcanon is, like, because Pantheon in his splash art, this is right after he has revived. Uh, he was he was struck down, like, Pantheon, the aspect of war, was struck down by Pan by uh, Aatrox. And then Atreus, the man, managed to will himself back to life, and that's what we're seeing here. And when we see Atreus in his other appearances... Um, he's pretty fucking hairy. Like, he does not, he does not do manscaping. Uh, he does not do a lot of personal grooming. 
but the Aspect of War, so my headcanon is that the Aspect of War Pantheon is really super into manscaping and grooming. Like, he really shaves, like, he shaves his body parts, like, like not, a, not a hair on my body except on my head. Like, he's very much that kind of guy. Whereas Atreus is more like, I shall have natural hair grow on my body like a man does. Like, he's more that kind of character. Um, like, that's my headcanon anyway. And certainly, human Atreus with the helmet off. Yeah, I see it. That character is definitely hot. This one is more like, eh, it's more hot to someone else kind of thing. Like, it's not really my vibe, 100%. But this right here, yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I understand. I comprehend it. I feel it too. Everyone does. Like, I don't, I don't care what your orientation is. Like, you know, you understand that Pantheon is hot. Like, you understand that this is sexy. Like, doesn't doesn't matter what you're into. You understand. Even if you're not into it, you understand it. You feel it. Because obviously. Because obviously. Yeah, I don't think I need to explain this anymore. This this is pretty obvious. Which moves us on to... Poppy. So once again with the Yordles, is the character meant to be understood as an adult? And I think with Poppy and Tristana, they are. Like, these are meant to be adult characters. They have tiny little bodies. Um, it's sort of it's just uncomfortably close to childlike proportions. Like, they, it sort of depends on which depiction of them you see. But Yordles sort of vacillate between being a short stack, like a short adult in their proportions. And sometimes they're presented more like childlike characters, which is like... Ugh. I really wish Riot would be more consistent about that because it's like... Ugh. Um... But Poppy, as far as I, I, as far as I see her, she's an adult character, um, and I don't think I find her hot. Like, not really. There's definitely fan art of her where she's hot, but that's a completely different story. Uh, but Poppy, as she's presented in game, not really. Like, I, I really don't think she's cute. She's adorable. She's pretty, but I don't think I find her hot. Um. And I'm not sure I see her as, like, a hot-to-someone-else kind of character as well. Like, again, it's not... Not that she's not cute, not that she's not adorable, not that she's not appealing, just she's not hot. Like, I really don't think that's part of her character design. I really don't think she's designed around that to have that kind of appeal, even a little bit. Um, so for me, she goes into the not-hot tier. Because she's just kind of... Yeah, like, it's just... It just doesn't feel like part of the character. Uh, and again, I know there's plenty of Rule 34 out there. That's fine. But to me, it's like, I don't feel that this character is hot, even to someone else. I don't feel it. And so that's basically where she goes. Once we get to Tristana, maybe we'll have a different conversation. But for now. Uh, and then there's Old Poppy is anti-hot. No, Old Poppy is just not hot at all. Even a little... Like, she's just... She's just horrifying. She's just a... Uh, uh, terrible, terrible, terrible thing. Why would you remind me of that? That's... That's... That's mean of you. Um, moving us on to Pike. Who, um... Who, yeah, like... <laughs> He has a scene in the Ruined King. Like, he has a thing, like, he has his ultimate, like, his, his most powerful ultimate attack, where he, like, literally pulls down the mask and spits on his victim after he has brutalized them. And I saw a lot of people just go off with thirst about that when those clips got posted on Twitter. Like, they really, like, oh, haha. <laughs> the disrespect and, like, the, the, and, like, the meanness um, and the sadism of that. Like, a lot of people went off on that. So, yeah, sure. He's going in the hot to to someone else tier, obviously. It's just a matter of, like, how hot is he to someone else? And I think I used to say that, like, he was sort of... Yeah, he's definitely hot to someone else, but I don't see it very much. Like, I might have put him in the not hot tier just because I didn't feel it. But no, like, yeah, seeing, seeing the way that people went off about, like, Pike when he's a little bit more animated and has a little bit more, like, a little bit more passion towards people rather than there's this cold, murderous detachment. Yeah, sure. Some people are going to find that very, very hot. The one thing that's missing here, and that's the other thing that, like, that's the reason why I definitely see him as hot to someone else. Pike, in the Ruined King game, has sharpened teeth. Um, like, he has shark teeth, basically. He doesn't have that in his base model, and that makes him a lot less hot, but with the shark teeth on there, it's like, yeah, no, obviously people are fucking into that. People are deeply, deeply into that. 
clearly. Um, but yeah, he's someone I used to maybe have more complicated thoughts on, but he became a much simpler thing to place after the Ruined King game. So, that moves us on to Kiana, who again, like, hot to someone else for the same reason that uh, Leona went in there, Irelia, Kaisa, Karma, and Katarina. Like, the same reason that they're in there, that's why Kiana is in there. It's like, yep, that's, uh, that's, that's, this is a hot fantasy babe character. That is definitely one of those, and that's definitely hot to people, and I, I fully understand why. I'm just not that interested, personally, myself. Um, people are asking about her age in chat. She is something like 25, I think, 20, 24, 25. She's meant to be a young adult, uh, like in, in like her early 20s, as far as I know. Um, but she's meant to be relatively a relatively young, young adult, yeah. But yeah, it's just... Just, just, yeah, I, someone finds this hot. This is definitely hot to people. I like that her body type is a little different from the standard fantasy babe thing. Like, she's more bottom heavy. She's got more of a pear shape, um, which is nice. Like, that's a, that's a neat little thing. But it's still that same aesthetic of beauty, like, asserting itself over and over and over again, very much from, from the same place as the other ones. And thus, I'm, I can't get, I can't get passionate, I can't get interested, it's just, yep, that's, that's a hot character. Um, cool, I get, moving on. <laughs> I see people in, in chat are very happy about the thighs. Yeah, that's fair enough. Like, the, if the thighs are your kind of thing, obviously. Obviously, you're going to be into that. For me, that's not really... That's really not really enough to count to outweigh how boring I find her generally. And it's not really Kiana's fault either, I should stress. Like, it's not that Kiana herself is necessarily... In isolation, Kiana is not necessarily a boring character design. But she's boring in context of Irelia and Kaisa and Karma, and Katarina, and Fiora, and even, like, even Caitlyn, and, like, she's, she's boring in context of there is, like, 40 other League of Legends women who are beautiful in exactly that same aesthetic of beauty. Like, that, that just, that just do the same, the same exact aesthetic of beauty and just kind of apply different costumes to it. So it's not really Kiana's fault, it's just that she enters a context within which she is just completely not unique. Anyway, uh, Quinn. So, like, I'm a little bit in two minds, uh, Quinn, because, like, I mean, being honest, I think she's hot. Um, and that's because I like women in armor. Um, proper armor. Like, actual, like, oh, this looks like actual, like, this looks like actual sturdy, like, it's fantasy armor, it's not really, it's not really practical, it's not really realistic, because of course it's not, but this looks like proper armor, like, this looks like someone who's actually dressed for the life that they live, um, but still, like, and, and where, it, where her character design incorporates a lot of aspects that sort of, uh, still keep her femininity and her feminine appeal, like, she's wearing full face of makeup, of course, which is like, oh my god. I've talked about that already. It makes no sense on Kaisa, and it makes no goddamn sense on Quinn either, because, like, why would she give a... Sh she's, she's out in the wilderness scouting. There are no mirrors, and, like, wh why would that be a part of her character that this is something that she cares about and puts time into? It can be. Like, maybe that could be a cool part of her character is that she actually has, like, a, some vanity and cares about her beauty. That could be a cool idea. But it isn't. Like, it's not part of her character. It isn't in there. It has never been there in any of her depictions. So you can bring it up in, ch in comments all you want. Like, what if it's because, like, yeah, what if it is? Like, what if, the, what if the sky was gray? And what if the moon was made of cheese? And what if, like, your mom loved you? What if? Like, what if many things? Um, you can, yeah, sure. But that's not actually the case. It's not actually the thing. Like, there's no point for her ma wearing makeup because it isn't part of her character. Um... But, anyway, 
she has feminine appeal. Like there's there's parts of the character design that are used to retain feminine shape language in her. Like for example, um, these like uh, side pauldrons along 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 her sides. Like they look relatively practical. They aren't, but they look that way. And they sort of emphasize a little bit more of that hourglass shape, giving her a little bit more of that feminine appeal. She has the boots, which are like sort of made to look like bird claws, because everything about her characters on her costume is about bird. Like her her cloak is like wings. She has like the, the helmet that's like a beak. She has like the repeater crossbow that's shaped like a bird. Like everything about her is about evoking bird because she has this partnership with Valor. And so what they've done is they've made these boots that sort of evoke bird claws, which also sort of give a little bit of that high heeled look. She doesn't actually have high heels, thank God, but they have a little bit of that look, which adds some feminine. I really like that. I really think she's well constructed and well put together. I don't know 100% like again like I'm sort of vacillating between like is this hot or am I just do I just find it really appealing because it's a little bit different? But what's the difference really, right? Like like I find it appealing, I find it hot because it isn't the standard thing that's everything where else in League of Legends. And I'm sort of in two minds about whether I like her League of Legends design or her Runeterra design better. The Runeterra design sort of simplifies a little bit. It gets rid of the boob plate thing um, that she has in this form. Like, she has the, like, the boob cups. And they're there here, like, like all boob cups, they're there to emphasize the fact that she has breasts. Like, they're there to emphasize that aspect of visual femininity. And Quinn is one of the few characters where I think, like, that kind of works because, like, so much of the rest of her character design is so not specifically feminine, that maybe maybe it makes sense to have the boob cups there to sort of emphasize that visual aspect of femininity. Not all women have breasts, of course, but, you know, that's the way we uh, create characters visually. What I do like more about um, the Runeterra design is that it's more streamlined, it's more clean. So, like, but anyway, point is, I think she's hot. There's some very weird and complicated reasons for it that don't really have that much to do with actual hotness as such, but I think she's hot. Uh, let's see, there's some super chats were there. Okay, no, there, there weren't a, there weren't a lot of them. We can leave that for a little bit later. Moving on, we are now talking about Rakan. So we'll we'll deal with Zaya um in just a second, but for the moment we are talking about one of the better himbos in League of Legends. Like it's it's really it's really Rakan and Galio um are the two big himbo characters in League of Legends. And I know Rakan is, like, everyone loves Rakan. Like, Rakan is, is very popular. He's popular for good reason. He's charming, he's fun, he's hot. And he is hot. Um, and that's where we'll put him. But I'm sort of... Like, I'm not 100% sure. Like, it's it's sort of the Orn thing where, like, it's not 100%, it's not really what I'm into, but I can see it so much that, like, yeah, obviously, sure. Obviously he's hot. Clearly he's hot. So you kind of can't say just hot to someone else. But again, it's not, yeah, not really, not really my style of thing. Uh, although he's closer to it than, than Orn is. Um, but no, yeah, he's a hot character. And I don't think, you don't really need to explain it much, do you? Like, again, like with so many of the other, like, League of Legends characters, he's supposed to be a bird man. You could have done a little bit more with that. Like, you could, you could have done more to make him bird-like. Uh, like, give him more bird aspects. Like, he's got the bird feet. And they've got a little bit, like, with the little fringe thing on top of his head kind of thing. I think he could have gone further. I think he could have been more ostentatious. I think he could have been a little bit more out there. I think he could have put more feathers on him, like, physical feathers on his body, rather than just, like, the cloak thing that he's got going on. Um, but no, yeah. Good character design. Definitely a hot character. Which moves us on to Ramus, who is going in the not discussed tier. I don't have any particular reason except that I just I don't I don't want to discuss Ramus in the context of hotness because that I don't think that applies to him really. And uh, yeah, Rexai goes the same way because Rexai is not sapient uh, or sentient. She's essentially an animal, and so yeah, no. And Rel goes there because she's a teenager. <laughs> People are saying okay in chat. Thank you very much. Um, sorry, Rek'Sai isn't... She's not sapient. Like, if they can't consent, then I don't want to discuss them in terms of hotness, please. 
Which moves us on to something I think a, lo a lot of people have been waiting for. Um, which is, like, no surprise to anyone. Renata Glask. And again, like, much like with Ilawi, it's not necessarily that, like, like this is like, ooh, this is definitely, like, the thing I find the hottest in the whole goddamn world. It's that it's different. It's that th Renata Glask is the only goddamn champion in League of Legends who looks like Renata Glask, who looks this way. The only one who has, like, who, who really brings that maturity, that age, that experience, that mommy dommy energy. It's novel. It's new. It's something different. And that is just desperately appealing. Like, that makes her so fucking hot because she brings something new, something novel, something interesting to the table. Something that you don't get from another 50 different champions in the, or ostensibly different champions in the game. She's hot. Like, she's so fucking hot. Like, even if, if she wasn't different, like, if there were, like, eight other older woman champions sort of like her in the game, maybe I'd only put her in hot tier. But... Man, she is special, and she's the only one who's like her. And she has the confidence, she has, like, the experience, she has the self-assuredness, she has the drive. And, like, that, again, much like with Alawi, like, if, if you are lucky enough to grace Renata Glask's bed, you will know exactly what to do, and you will do it, and it will probably be some of the best shit you've ever done in your life. Because she will not have it any other way. Yeah, like, yep. And the robot arm is a plus. And the fact that she could get you, like, like, whatever whatever sort of sensation-enhancing drugs are available in Piltover and so on, she has access to them. Uh, that's a plus for some people. <laughs> but no, yeah, she's just hot. She's just... She's got the suit, like, she rocks the sort of, like... I hesitate to say masculine fashion because it's not like suits are feminine fashion as well. But like she has that, like she she rocks a little bit of that mask energy, like a little bit more of that butch energy, which again makes us so different from so many of the female champions in League of Legends who are just hyper feminine by default. That she has a little bit more of that mask energy also. It's like oh, yeah, butch, butch, not mask. Uh, butch is what I'm looking for. Like it's just, mm, mm. it's choice. It's choice. It is good. Oh, it's good. It's very good. It's very good. It's very good. And her walk cycle, as someone points out in chat, the walk cycle as well. Yeah. Like, what? The, the just the strut that she has? Mmm. Fuck yeah. That is... The one thing I, I, I dislike about the character model is that they really smooth... Like, they really put her through the Facetune app. Like, really just got rid of, of a lot of, like, the, the the lines on her face and really smoothed her out. And that's, like, on a character model in League of Legends, that makes a certain degree of sense because little details like that, when you zoom out, when, like, when you're watching it from a League of Legends perspective like this, having too much detail on the face just makes it look muddy and kind of weird. Um, and, it, like, it doesn't read well. So, like, it's, it's one of those things that, like, sort of probably done from the perspective of making it more clean as an in-game look. Um, but it is also just one of those things that, like, but uh, you really wanted the character model to fully reflect what the character looks like. It's a, it's a disappointment, but it's one of those, like, I, I will accept that as a consideration for the purposes of game clarity. Like, that's probably where that comes from. And if she had a character model, like, if she got a character model in, like, a... Uh, ruined King style game, like something where the character model gets to be more up close and emoting and acting, they'd probably do that a lot more justice. Um, like, same way that they did in Ruined King. On the Rift in League of Legends, sure, fair enough. Like, she has to be smooth, I guess, even if it's disappointing. Which uh, moves us back to a little bit of a furry section uh, of the evening, which is uh, we're going to be dealing with Renekton and Rengar. So Renekton is like, he goes here, obviously. He's hot to someone else. Again, not my kind of thing. Uh, the big furry baras, are like, like unless they are as special as Ornn, I don't, I don't see it. I don't, I don't really, not really my vibe, not really my kind of thing. Like big teeth and a long tongue, that's always kind of, that's always kind of kinky and hot. But, yeah, no, not my kind of deal, but cannot blame anyone else for finding this tremendously attractive. Like, just please don't bring up 
cloaque has in chat. I don't. I, I'm pretty sure that could get me demonetized. <laughs> Which moves us on to Rengar, which again is one of those obvious hot to someone else situations. He's a big fluffy lion boy. Uh, he, like he's, he's League of Legends only cat boy, technically. Um, <laughs> um, and yeah, obviously someone is into the for same like big, scary, dangerous, murderous bara furry with like big sharp teeth and lots of fuzz. Yeah, obviously someone's into that. Someone, someone really wants to get with that. I am not one of them, but someone definitely wants to get with that. Cat man. No, he's a cat boy. Like, that's actually kind of... that's. I would actually argue that that's part of his lore, is that Rengar is sort of perpetually in a state of arrested development because... Well, because, like, because he's been forced to... Like, he's been forced into this very juvenile mindset of constantly... Constantly having to prove himself, having to prove his masculinity, having to prove his manhood, having to prove how powerful and strong he is, like, where he becomes obsessed with, like, collecting trophies and shit. In the way that his lore is written, that's very much a thing of, like, of, like, being put in a state of arrested development by neglect by his parents. So I'd say he's, 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 a, like, he's a more of a boy. Like, he's a little bit of a, like, angry Ezreal. Like, he's a little bit of that same vibe, like, that same desperation to prove himself. That same style of arrogance just mediated through anger rather than smugness and arrogance, like, which is how Ezreal does it. But that's, that's, that's a discussion for a different time. He's hot to a lot of people for obvious reasons. Which moves us on to, um, Riven. And Riven is, like, her base model, and especially, like, her character model in-game, like, the, the way that she's designed from the first, to me, kind of goes in... I mean, it's hot to someone else, I'm sure, but that's not hot to me. Like, she, no. Like, this is, this is really busy and kind of weird and kind of... No, this is not hot. Like, this is something, but hot isn't one of the things that it is. In Runeterra, on the other hand, in more recent depictions of her, like, in, in the uh, cinematic... Which one was it? It wasn't Rise. It was uh, the other one. When she fights Draven in the arena. More recent depictions of Riven... More recent versions. More recently... Uh, I... Awaken, yes. Uh, like just that little bit of a cleanup and the fact that she wears a corset and the thighs um, and the eye makeup, like the Furiosa, like eye makeup and the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, sometimes it doesn't take much. Sometimes it just takes a little cleanup. Sometimes it just takes a few, like some simplifying changes. And all of a sudden, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah that works. That works for me. It works for me. I am um, yep. Yeah. Like when when she when she fucking punched out those four gladiators in the Awakened cinematic, I was I yeah, I she had me. She had me. <laughs> uh there's just like kicking Draven's ass like that. Mm, yep. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Again, base form, in-game model, all of that, that's that's a little bit, like, that's to me, is just not hot. But the updates, the changes, can't, can't, can't deny that, 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 uh, what a glow up, right? Going from this to, to that. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, that's that's where she goes. Um, which moves us on to Rumble, and Rumble once again is like he's one of those yordles where it's like you can read him either way. You can read him as an adult, but I've always seen him as much more of a teenager, like much more of like he, he's much more of sort of like a again a sort of insecure child trying to prove himself and because of that uh, no not not a subject for discussion tonight um, if you see him as adult, an adult which is valid especially like in um in legends of runeterra he's more of an adult like he's he's definitely much more conceived as an adult character but in base league of legends and the way he's presented there nah don't want to talk about him do do not wish to discuss 
Um, which gives us over to Rise, who is, um, is he hot? Like, I, I kind of have to ask the chat here, is Rise hot particularly? Like, he's, he sort of has the, some of the trappings of it, like the big beard and like the, the being, yeah, it's sort of, uh, <laughs> it seems to be a little bit mixed. Some people are into it, but most people seem to be not really. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of on that one as well. Like I, I've sort of wanted to put him in hot to someone else tier because, like, surely someone's into that. But on the other hand, I just, I just don't really know anyone who's into that. Like I know people who are into everything else, but I don't think I've ever seen anyone be like, oh yeah, rise, ooh, daddy. I don't think I've ever seen anyone be like, be like that about him. Um, so I think rise kind of has to go into. Uh, because I don't see it. Like, I just, I don't, I don't see him as hot at all. I don't see him as hot. I just don't. I just don't. Anyway, uh, Samira. Hmm. Is, um, yep. Yep. It's, yeah. Am I predictable? Am I a little basic sometimes? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Obviously, I am. But this is not about whether, like, it's not about nuanced character design critique. This is about fucking Samira's hot, dude. She's hot. She's very, very hot. She's a sexy lady. She is... She is gorgeous and she's hot and she is... She's, she's just good. Samira's good. Uh, and she's, again, one of those character designs. Like, she has that Bayonetta thing, right? Um... Where it's, it's again, I sort of sorry to just vent my frustrations about the general YouTube community, but again, it's like, oh, you just hate everything that's hot. No, fuck you. I, I love it when it's hot and it makes sense. Samira is a fucking showboat. Like, she's she's very much like in the Dante Bayonetta mode. Like, she loves showing off. She loves being hot. She loves other people to look at her and go, holy shit, she's super hot and super cool. Fucking hell. Like, she loves that. She's a show off. She's a braggart. She's a showboat. In, a, in all the ways that Draven kind of isn't. Like, Draven doesn't give a shit if you think he's hot, really. Um, he just wants you to praise him for whatever. But Samira wants to look good. She wants to perform. She wants to be admired. She wants to be looked at. So, of course she's hot. Of course she dresses in deeply impractical clothes that just look cool and look hot. Because that's her character. That's who she is. That's how she is in the world. That's... It does storytelling about her. It tells you what kind of person she is to have this character be designed to be overtly sexualized and hot. Because of course she does that. Of course she does. Like, that that's what she's like. This lets you know something about her internal life in a way that it just doesn't with Kaisa, in a way that it just doesn't with Misfortune or Katarina. Like, the, the fact that they're sexy is like, yeah. Like, Katarina, you can sort of argue the show-off thing as well with her a little bit, but for her, that's not the same thing. For her, it's about she wants to be the best. But Samira wants to look the best. Like, she wants to be the coolest motherfucking thing in the room. And Katarina's a little bit less like that. She's more about, I want to be the best fucking assassin and do whatever the fuck I want. Like, it, it's a different vibe. Anyway, but Samira. Samira good. Samira hot. Samira super hot. Samira very hot. Uh, good. Like her. Very... Mm, mm-hmm. Yep. Yep, yep. 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 Samira good. Okay, well, we're getting there. Uh, we have 14, 28, uh... That's 42, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 50, 52 champions-ish left to go. So we've gone through 100 now-ish. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just saw, okay. Wing of Shoes sends a super chat saying, he does not get a rise out of me. Very nice. Very nice. That's very good. Uh, <laughs> and let me look at the other super chats that came in. Uh, final, first live, finally, love your content. Been binging all eight hours of tier review streams the past week. Pantheon, please step on me, the fiction and I'll thank you very much. Victor Hendon, Renata is like a silver fox. She has she has age. She is good like aged vine. She reminds me of the hot milf one from Arcade. From Arcane, you mean. Yeah, no, um, I actually don't think so. I don't think she reminds me of Ambessa. Like, Renata has a very different vibe than Ambessa. But... Ambessa also, if we were doing an arcane tier list, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I trust I don't need to explain why. Um, 
What was the other one? Hi from Denmark. Well, uh, hello to I ask. Emily Creative. Uh, Doctor Nauk sent Awaken Riven is absolute queen. Yes, yes. It's a that's a good it's a good cinematic. It's a very good one. Anyway, Sejuani. Not triple S tier for me. Not not quite up there. Um, but she's definitely she's definitely hot. Uh, and I I don't I don't think I can explain why she's not fully up in triple S tier. I don't think I can really explain it rationally. She just kind of is like it's just in terms of like she's hot. Like she's definitely a hot character, but she's not like Samira in the way that she's just like mm, like. There isn't that thing, and I think it's partly because her character design is really not sexualized. Like, in her character model, which is another, like, again, she has the fucking cleavage and, like, the open throat and thing, which is something that really isn't in her splash art. Like, her splash art has the helmet, like, doing a proper guard of her thing, and, like, it really doesn't seem to be designed to have any kind of cleavage on it, but... But, yeah, like, it's... She, it, and again, it feels like Sichuani is less designed to be a sexy character. And Sichuani is one of those characters where, like, again, I think the boob plate is okay on Sichuani. Because in the Freljord, very specifically, they are a matriarchal society. Being a, a woman, being a war mother, is associated in that culture with power. Like, with martial power, with, with command, with power over warriors, with power in battle. And so, like, yeah, okay. For that, for this specific case, you can argue that having Sejuani have an armor design that emphasizes, like, womanly attributes, which, again, not all women have breasts, um, but, like, which emphasizes that, like, that particular kind of femininity. Sure, in that case, it makes sense. It would be better if Leona didn't also have boot plates. It would be better if boot plates weren't just all over the fucking place, if they were specific to the Freljord. Like, if this was a thing that the Freljordians do because they revere motherhood and femininity uh sure like yeah so it's like it's one of those things like but anyway Sichuani to me just doesn't feel like like a sexy character in that way she doesn't feel like like she's meant to be like oh my god she's so freaking hot she feels more like she's meant to be like this is a hot character but other stuff is more important about her and I don't know, like, it's not rational. None none of what I've said tonight, like, what, none of the explanations I've given tonight are rational. They are emotional. They they come from, from, from the irrational inner emotional space where, like, where feelings dominate. And so my feeling about Sejuani is she's not really there in the super hot tier. She's hot, but she's not, you know, it's not, it's not quite all the way up there for no rational reason whatsoever. Like, I can try and rationalize it for you, but there isn't one. Like, there isn't a rational reason. It's just that's where she is. Listen to your heart, and that's where she is. Which moves us on to Senna, who also goes in the hot tier, because Senna is hot. And even more than Setuani, she's not, like, she's very much for me not in the triple S tier. Um, because, again, she has much more of that standard fantasy babe archetype body. It looks weird from the front, by the way. Like, Senna, viewed from the front in her character model, always looks a little strange and off-kilter because it's not designed to be viewed from this angle at all. But she is hot, and the reason why Senna is hot is that she has a giant cannon. Like, there's this joke that goes around, bitches love cannons, but that's not really the truth. The truth is, boys love bitches who love cannons. Like, that's, that's, the, that's how that full line should go. Like, the cannon is like, definitely women are into that too. Like, women do love them some big cannons, but... But men really love women who love big cannons also. Like, it's it's a thing. It's a thing. Like, it's just the, the big weapon, the big boom. Like, I like cannons. I like girls. Cannon plus girl equals more better. Uh, it's I'm very much like a Warhammer orc in that sense. Like, more Daka, more better. Uh, big cannon, big gun. Yes, good. So that's why she's hot. Uh, to me, anyway. Otherwise, if she hadn't had the cannon, I would have put her in hot to someone else, along with the rest of the sort of standard fantasy babe body type situations. But she has the cannon, and that's, that's, that's hot. Like, their entire, like, their entire franchises that are based solely on the fact that whim, woman plus big cannon is hot. Like, girls front line, well, it's not, it's more girls, like, girls front line, Kentai collection. Like, there's lots of anime and, like, sort of uh, Japanese franchises, they're just entirely based on the idea if woman plus military hardware equals sexy somehow. 
But no, yeah, I just, I, big cannon. Like, the very big gun, and she, like, just throws that thing around, and, like, that's hot. That is, that is a hot thing to do. That's a hot thing to do with your time. Uh, don't forget, girl so pissed at her, at her husband, she literally unfridged herself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right, anyway, uh, moving on. So, uh, Seraphine is down here, and she is a teenager, so she will not be discussed. She's very cute, like, adorable, cutesy little thing like Gwen, but she's a teenager, and therefore is not available for hotness assessment. Right, uh... Oh, right, so, uh, Dr. Nauk sent once, I believe it's fair to say that a lot of people would swap with Bristle without any hesitation. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I think I'd crumble like a sack of potatoes, because that's a big armor she's wearing, but no, yeah, you're not wrong. I know it was a while ago, but that Jin fantasy description made me feel things. Also, trans rights, absolutely wired. Awesomeinator, God, this stream is long. Yeah, welcome to the channel, we do this, uh, this, this happens. Um, <laughs> But she's 100% hot also because she's loyal to her husband. Loyalty is hot as fuck. That is also true. Like, that, that again, much like with Lucian, he's hot because he has that deep, deep romantic commitment to this woman that he loves more than life itself. That goes the other way as well, and that is also very hot. Hyphen Argentina, love your content. Sorry I couldn't donate more. No, 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 please, please. Juani 108, do, never, never, I, I know, I know where it comes from, and I, it's fine. Never apologize for, for not being able to donate more. Never do that, because seriously, you don't owe me a cent or a dollar. You don't owe me anything. If you give me something that is a gift, it is a present, and I treasure it, you owe me nothing. You owe me nothing. Do nev never apologize for not for not donating more. Like, like, whatever you can give is a gift, and thank you very much. Um, anyway, yeah, so... Set sort of depends on how you look at him. A little bit. Because if you look at Set primarily as the boss, like primarily as the pit fighter, like the absolute sort of like stereotypical alpha chad kind of meme thing with like women swooning over him and his muscles and like sitting there with like his tits out and like stepping on people with his golden shoes and shit. There can be no question then that Set is hot. If you look at him from a different angle, if you see him instead as the posturing mama's boy, um, who's kind of doing everything out of a massive male inferiority complex towards his dad and a lot of sort of a lot of, a lot of sort of toxic masculinity resentment, he might run down a few tiers and land somewhere between not hot and anti hot. It sort of depends on where you pl place the emphasis of the character, because Set has like a mom thing, like he has a mom complex. Like, he, he, like, boy, boy, does he have a mom thing. Um, which is, which is not hot. <laughs> um, um, unless you have a mommy kink thing yourself, like, and you want to roleplay that, which is completely valid. But I would say, but I find that not hot. Um, but I choose to look at Set, like, I think his, his mama's thing is not so, like, it's not really a complex as much as it is just a part of his personality. Like, it's... It's sort of a part of him layout where if his life had turned out differently, he would probably have been a himbo. Um, like, if, if, if things had turned out differently from him, he would have been a himbo. Like, he would have been a sort of, sort of a, a, a very sweet, pure-hearted, little, enormous himbo man. Um, and had that kind of appeal. But because things turned out the way they did, they turned out he's really good at fighting and he really likes it. He's not a himbo. He's more of a... What's what's the, what's the word for a himbo who's who's like um, who's mean? <laughs> um, but he's definitely like he's definitely like I think he definitely drinks woman respecting juice. Like I really think he, I really think Set is like sort of like everyone who like all of the other dudes in the fighting pits are like, oh yeah, no, he's gonna be like a bro. He's gonna be like a misogynist kind of guy. But I think if they ever talk shit about women around him, I think he just punches them in the face because he doesn't he doesn't tolerate that shit. Like I think he really is like a woman respecter. Um, which is hot. Like that's a that's a very hot thing to be. Jock, yes, jock is the is probably the word. He's more of a he's more of a jock. 
Like, and he's not a nice person. Like, he's he's not he's really not a nice person. He's, but, but I think he he drinks a lot of women respecting juice, and that's hot. Yeah, him bad. I think I was looking for him bad more than Jock, but I think Jock is probably the proper term. Um, and so from that perspective, he's hot. Like, it sort of depends on how many mommy issues you really want to give him. Like, how deep his mommy complex really, really goes. But I don't think it goes that deep. I think it goes deep enough to explain his ship with Soraka, which I should really make a video about one of these day days. But like, yeah, the reason why people ship set with Soraka is like 50% of it... Like, it's, it's like, it's, it really splits 50-50. Like, 50% of it is, like, set with a massive mommy kink and Soraka being, like, like playing that role in the relationship. And the other 50% is, like, set being, like, total alpha Chad. Sort of, like, a, so the, very much overwhelming the nice girl Soraka. Uh, and sort of, like, th it's that kind of thing. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> and, and set in Aphelios is just because... Well, it's because they were released close together, and it's because one of them is a, is a, like a, a tiny, silent, quiet little twink, and the other one is a big, loud, braggadocious uh, jock character. Like, that's why. It's because they have an obvious dynamic. Anyway, Set is the bottom in that relationship. I will not be taking questions. All right, moving on to Shaco. And this is like, like if you have a thing for the Joker, I guess, like if if you really do think we live in a society, um, like I I guess maybe, sure, but 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 uh, Shaco, I'm like, until he gets an update that turns him into a, like a sexier kind of demon or something, he's not hot. And he part of the reason why he's not hot is because he has no personality. Like there's nothing to him. He has no lore. He has no story. He has no concept. He's just a guy. He's just like a murder clown with knives. And it's like that's not enough to be hot. Like that's a yeah, murder clown with knives with some kind of a concept, with some kind of a backstory, with some kind of a motivation or like a like he kills people in funky weird ways or whatever like maybe that can be hot to someone but this is just he's too much of a nothing like he has no lore he has no concept he's just like he's basically just a piece of a, a, a piece of artwork from deviant art um that someone copy pasted into the league of legends video game with no context and therefore not hot sorry Uh, oh, Deviant, I have a complicated relationship with that website, like, because it's where I used to post all my art, like, for, like, for, like, a decade. I posted all my art on Deviant Art, and then, like, this YouTube thing started, and I, I just took all my art down, because I never used the site anymore. And then, like, someone, uh, like, a, a couple, I think, like, a, a couple of years ago, someone messaged me, hey, I found this artwork of you, like, this fan art of you on Deviant Art, and it's, like, Maybe you don't want to have that kind of fan art of you, and I went and looked at it, and it was like, oh, no, yeah, no, def definitely don't. How is that legal? Under the site's rules? Terms? And if you're thinking it's something sexy, no. I mean, it's it's it was sexy to the person who drew it, I'm sure, but it was like... Yeah, no, it was, um... I, I did not want to have that out there of me, so I had to, like, I, I had to serve some DMCA takedown notices, uh, because... Because that was unpleasant, uh, but that's probably going to happen more and more uh, as the channel grows. So, and that's going to show up on DeviantArt apparently because because there are no rules against posting that stuff anymore. Apparently, so that was not fun. Uh, all of this to say, like, hey, if you watch this and you feel like you want to draw some odd kink art of my avatar character or whatever, I can't stop you. But please don't post it on DeviantArt. Uh, Please don't do that. Post it on like a private account if you must, because that was not a fun experience. Anyway, uh, that was not what we were talking about at all. Uh, we're talking about how characters are hot, so let's let's talk about that instead. Because boo. Um. Anyway, Shen. So like, I really feel that Shen goes here. But like. No, like, people find him hot. Like, people, people are into Shen. Like, they're into, he's a, he's a big burly ninja, he's got the swords. 
um, thing. But I just like, but he's so straight. Like the only person Shen would ever get horny for is Zed. Like I swear to God, it's the like like hate fucking Zed is the only is the only way that Shen is ever gonna get really horny. Because, like, even his fiancé, like, he used to have a fiancé in the lore, right? Like, their interactions are so, like, wow, neither of them are really into each other. Like, boy, like, may maybe they sort of have a romantic attraction, but there's no eroticism between the two of them. Um, like, the only person towards whom Shen feels passionate enough to, like, to get sexual would be Zed. Like, honestly, that's how I feel, but no, I know. I know he's hot to someone else because he's a big burly ninja with a cool face mask and glowing eyes. So, of course, that's hot to someone. It's just, I feel that he's such a, such a non-sexual character. <laughs> like, not asexual, but just, like, non-sexual. Like, it's just not really part of him. Um, but no, yeah, he's hot to someone else. Of course he is, but yeah. Anyway... But yeah, there he is. Um, moving on to Shivana. Who, uh, again, complicated situation because her character model, no, no, not, that's not hot. Uh, I, it is, it just isn't. It's just not hot. Uh, to me, anyway, like maybe it's hot to you, that's fine, but it's not hot to me. And I would put that not hot tier. But, uh, Splash Art, though. Splash Art, on the other hand. And again, this is like, it's the standard fantasy babe body type. But the thing that's interesting is that she has, like, she has an interesting nose, for one thing. Like, a nose that's more present and actual, that burning intensity and those scales and the skin and the thing and, like... If she looked the way she did in her splash art, this is where she goes. Like, if she looked anything like her splash art, maybe once she's had the rework, this is where she goes. Until then, yeah, she's hot, but like... But not that hot. She's hot, but not that hot. Like, until that contradiction is resolved, and I really hope, like, when they update her, even though I think this is... Yup, this is absolutely my shit. This is very much targeted directly at me. I really do hope they do something more interesting with her than just... Sexy, curvy, skinny, thick, fantasy babe archetype body. Like, I want... Like, she really does need something. Like, the dragon... Again, it's the thing about Monster Girls, right? Sh I want Shivana to have more dragon-like aspects in her physicality. Like, I want something more than just purple skin and claws. Like, something that's a little bit more than that. For the same reasons with Cassiopeia, for the same reasons with not, with the, um, with Elise, like the other Monster Girls, I want a little bit more than just this before it's a good character design. But no, yeah, this, the splash art, the splash art is, is, is definitely, definitely hot, even if the model isn't. Oh, someone asks in the super chat, can I put Leona next to Diana? Yes. Yes, yes I can. That's Super Kirby, I think, who did that. There we go. Because <laughs> why not? Um, which moves us on to uh, someone I don't have a splash art for, unfortunately. Uh, which is Silco. And yeah, like, Silco is not my cup of tea, not really my kind of thing. Uh, but no, yeah, I, I, I would have to be quite... I would have to live under quite a heavy rock not to know that Silco is... is turning a lot of gears in a lot of people, and I'd have to live under a rock not to understand why. Obviously he does. Like, have you heard him speak? Have you seen him move? Yes, of course he does. He's an awful scum villain trash man and of course villain like of course people find that hot he's 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 a bad person who does evil things sexily so yes he's hot clearly and he's a good dad like he's a bad person but he's a good dad and that counts for a lot <laughs> hmm 
Man, oh god, the Discord. Like, I, I don't know if people are, are here are on TikTok very much, but wow. Wow, TikTok has some discourse about Silco. Like, like there's a lot of people on TikTok who are like, how could you possibly say that Silco is a good dad when he abducted Jinx and stuff? Like, where it's like, did, did you not watch the sh show? Like, that's the point. The point is that he begins from a place of evil, but he come like, his arc is that he comes from a place of of cold detachment and ends up in a place of connection and love. Like, yes, their relationship is fucked up. That's the point. It starts out really fucking fucked up in like a really, really messy, messy, ugly place. And then they, like, they develop as a, fa like, that's the point. The point is that it starts badly. The point is that it starts in like, in a supremely fucked up toxic, mire of kidnapping and, and misery and then he learns to like he learns to be a better person for her he learns to take care of her emotional needs and care for her and in turn that changes him to the point where when he gets the chance to get the like the reason why he killed people the reason why he abducted jinx the reason why he did everything that he did was that he wanted his nation of Zaun, right? That was his whole driving motivation for the entire fucking series. And then by the end, he realizes, oh fuck, I care more about her than I do about my own dreams. Like she's more important to me than anything I have ever wanted in my life. That's his development as a character. Like that's, so yeah. So yeah, it's fucked up. That's the point. It's not, oh, he's a bad dad because he did a, bad thing to start with. Yeah, but there's more nuance to stories than, like, making a binary judgment of the character based on one moment. It's... Uncle Iroh is a war criminal. Like, have you not watched Avatar? Uncle Iroh is a war criminal. Like, he... He conquered places and murdered people. Anyway, uh, that, that's besides the point. I just, I just get tired of Puritanist discourse like the whole thing of, of like needing characters that you like to be morally pure which like what the fuck's the point of fiction if you can't explore things that like in in a fictional space that aren't that aren't so clean and simple and, and like in real life you need safety and protection from people like Silco but in fiction you can explore them and it can, like, be a way to process... Anyway, fuck it. Anyway, moving on. Fuck it. I don't want to get... No, I don't want discourse. Fuck you. If you want to start discourse, go away. I don't want discourse. Uh, like, do it Do it away from me. You're... Like, I can't tell you what to say, but do it away from me. Anyway, Singed. Another character who looks substantially better uh, in Arcane. He's one of those where, like, I know that he's hot to some... Like, I know that there are people for whom this is their shit. Like... This is like, oh yeah, the, like the old, the greasy, lanky, weird, skinny, fucked up, uh, chemical man. That's, that's definitely their shit. Um, but, uh, no, uh, not to me. I, I don't, no, I don't see it. Like, he, he doesn't even, like, cause he doesn't even have the Silco force of personality. Like, that's something like Arcane, again, like in Arcane, he's a lot better that way. He has a personality. He has something to, to sort of attach to. In League of Legends, Sil Singe doesn't really have a personality. He doesn't really have anything. Like, there's nothing, there's nothing really about the character except, ooh, obsessed with doing science things because of, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, because of wants to be immortal. Maybe I don't know. Is that still canon? It could be canon still. We don't know. Um, but yeah, like, there's definitely people who like sort of the greasy, weird, fucked up, like oil covered, slimy science man with the chemicals but i don't i just don't have an like an emotional way into seeing that or understanding it <laughs> and also boy he needs a visual update like man he, he he needs one yesterday he needs a lot of them uh <laughs> let's not forget he had a daughter so he canonically fucked yeah arcane singed did not League of Legends singed. League of Legends singed has never fucked in his life, but Arcane singed definitely did. Anyway, Scion. This is another one of those that is very much for me, like, I'm just putting him in hot to someone else tier. Because, like, no, yeah. Yeah, I get it. I understand. I completely comprehend it. I see it. Uh, I, I fully... I understand it, and I support you. 
Um, but not my kind of thing. Not really. Just, just not really for me. So here he goes. You, you find him hot, and I am with you in that. Which leads us on to Sivir, who is like yet another one. Like, it's, it's this again. It's the same body type. Uh, all over again, and it's a character sign that doesn't make any goddamn sense for her environment, because if you live in the desert, you cover up. Because the desert sun is really bad for you, actually. But we needed her to be hot Cena warrior princess, so just, just expose some skin because sexy, I guess. Uh, with no real motivation in the character who isn't... Like, again, this is the opposite of Samira, right? Like, Samira is the showboat. Sivir is the one who doesn't give a shit. Like, he, she doesn't give a shit about being cool. She doesn't give a shit about people liking her. She wants to get that money and get the fuck out. So why is she doing the show off wearing skimpy outfit in the desert, even though it's bad for her kind of thing? I don't know. No goddamn reason. But it's hot to someone else, I'm sure. <laughs> Which leads us on to Skarner. So, like... Yeah, this is like a monster fucker thing, but it's a monster fucker thing that's a little bit outside of my my will. Again, I know that someone somewhere is 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 hot for Skarner. Like I know someone somewhere finds like it with the deep voice and like oh, I miss my kind and uh, and all of that stuff. I know that that's definitely someone's thing. And once Riot retcon him into a hot anime boy uh, with a scorpion tail or whatever, uh, I'm sure I'll 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 put him in hot to someone else tier, but until then, I kind of... No, I don't... I can't see Skarner as hot. Um, I I can't see him as... as really sort of interesting or attractive in any in any meaningful way. Uh, so he goes in not hot tier, because that's, that's where that belongs. Which gets us on to Sona, aka League of Legends Hatsune Miku. Uh, quite literally. <laughs> and, I mean, she's busty. I think that's sort of the main thing about her, is like, she has large gaboobas, she has gahongadonks, she has uh, bongolongas. Uh, just... That's like the main thing about her that makes her hot, and that definitely makes her hot to other people, but... Uh, for me, I've just seen this too many times. Like, I've seen this exact kind of thing too many times. I, I'm too familiar with it. It just doesn't get me interested or excited anymore. I just, uh, yeah. It's definitely something that's hot to people, but, uh, doesn't, doesn't do much for me. Then we have my girl Soraka. Now, Soraka is a champion, like, I find her really, really, really hot in concept. Like, the concept of her as this, like, like divine entity that sort of come down to Earth, and, or Rune Terra, as it were, and, like, lives in this body that kind of can't contain her radiant essence. So, like, she's always kind of burning up from the inside. And she's always, like, kind of suffering a little bit in pain, but she doesn't say anything because, like, the pain is nothing to her. Because what she cares about deeply, more than anything, is healing, helping, and guiding mortals. Because she finds just the truth of mortal existence so beautiful so radiant, so compelling. That concept to me as a character, like that that sort of nurturing and like that compassion and that self-sacrifice, very, very hot to me. Like that, mm, that, that, that is the good shit. Um, but the way that it's expressed in the character design, like I really, I, I've said it before, but I think Soraka should be like a, like if she's, if she is to be a sexy character, she should be a MILF. And I don't think she really should be a sexualized character. Like, I think she gets her hotness and her attractiveness from other things. But, like, the way that the character is written, like, to be this nurturing, self-sacrificing, like, sort of very caring, always thinking about guiding others on their way, that's the perfect writing for a mother character, like, for a mother figure character. Someone who is, like, like based around the visual identity of motherhood, of, of being, like, a little bit more matronly. And so, like... Soraka is one of those characters who could really use a Renata Glask kind of character design more. Like, maybe a little bit plump, maybe a little bit, like, sort of soft and, and kind and nice the way that moms are supposed to be. And then in that aspect, sh that can be quite hot. Like, if, if, if that's the kind of thing you're into. But the way she is in-game is just, like, 
she's so skinny. Like, it's weird how skinny she is. Like, it's like, like even for League of Legends champion, this is weirdly skinny. And then the titties are just like all of the body fat just sits there for no, no discernible reason. Yeah, Pixar mom. Like maybe that could that could be that could be the kind of style. Um, but she's just so bony and skinny and like so standard fantasy babe. Like absolutely, absolutely conforming to the archetype in the most boring possible way. Like it's a little better in um in wild rift like they've sort of updated her character design a little bit it makes a little bit more sense anatomically but it's still just it's so very much in the this is like she's a girl like she looks like she's a girl like she looks like she's at most like a young 25 year old something like that and that's really not she's supposed to be ancient and ageless and like why is it mature beyond like the countable age of the universe like she's supposed to have that ancient divine energy that's supposed to be the appeal that's supposed to be what makes her interesting what makes her attractive appealing like like someone that you want to be close to but the character design just isn't there like it just it just doesn't go there and so for that reason conceptually she should be hot but i'm like yeah hot to someone else i'm so disappointed i want to make her not hot but she is yeah i know i get it like, she's standard fantasy babe archetype. She's there for the same reason Sivir and, like, and Irelia and the rest of them are. But the disappointment for me, like, the disconnect between what the character is written to be and how the character design is actually expressed is just so wide that I'm, like, you can't find that hot. This is... Everyone has to find this disappointing, surely. Like, this has to be disappointing. You have to be disappointed by this, right? Right? I know you're not everyone. Not everyone shares my tastes. That's fine. Not everyone has to. Not everyone should, I think. But I know it's hot to someone else, but you go and not hot, Soraka, because there's just too much wasted potential. Anyway, Swain. Uh, he goes in hot because it's like, yeah, I'm not blind. Uh, again, on the topic of bust. super not my type. Like, not into it. Uh, he's a little too fashy for me, for one thing. <laughs> um... Like, the imperialist thing, but no, yeah, Silver Fox Daddy, obviously everyone's hot for him. Like, uh, again, it's one of those things, it's not so much that I'm into it, so much as it's like, it's just undeniable and impossible to get around. Uh, like, it's like evil dictator tyrant murder guy with like crows that tell him like he knows he looks at you one time and he knows all your secrets he knows everything about you he can manipulate you into doing anything he wants but he doesn't even need to because you'll want to do it anyway because he's so hot like yeah clearly like there's not really any question there is there silas for his part uh lands in hot to someone else because like yeah, like, much like Swain, like, obviously he's hot, but he's, like, he's sort of hot in that sort of rancid little rat man kind of way. Um, that is that is more of a niche thing. Like, this is not so universal. It's, it's much more of a niche thing, like the, the little sort of fucked up uh, gremlin rat man uh, with his giant chains. Which, like, yeah, that's definitely hot to people. Like, there are some people who really want Silas to, to chain them up. Uh, and and do many many fascinating things with them, but uh, yeah, <clears throat> like yeah, he's hot, but not hot enough that I would put him in that category. <laughs> Greasy rat man, as uh, Yara Marcus said. Yes, absolutely. Um, but but I can fix him, says Miklos. Yes, that's the other part. That's another part of his appeal, and we'll get to that when we get to Viego. Like the whole like little shitty rat man, but you can fix him kind of vibe. Oh yeah, like that's that's a big sort of appealing thing about these kinds of characters. Let's see. Okay, there's been some more super chats. Uh, I should probably look at those. How old is Jinx in Arcane? She's like 21 or something like that. In the main League of Legends canon, she's like 25, 26. As far as I know, like some somewhere along those lines, she's she's in that age bracket. Um, Shen is SSS to your fight me. Yeah, well, I'm sure he is for you. He just isn't for me. Hello from Brazil, says Petro Junior. Uh, love your content and content, man. Your views inspire me writing career. Oh, thank you. That's very kind. Super Kirby's objectively had a great concept for Shivana. Yeah, I liked it. Like, it's not it's not 100% where I would go with her. 
But it was solid. It was pretty solid. It was better than what's in the game anyway. Shen is hot because mutual trauma recovery plus hugs. I mean, fair enough. Like, that's definitely an appealing uh, look at him. Good dad, bad person, says Scorn. Oh, yes, absolutely. Scarner unbound skin when? God, I hope not. And Pixar mom, Soraka needs to happen. Thank you, Scorn. I agree. Claudio says Soraka should be like Toriel from Undertale. Yeah, like that should be the vibe. Like that should be much more the vibe of where she's at, I think. Have I seen Guilty Gear Strive's Biken? Yes, I have, Jonathan Simos. I had a tr thread about her on Twitter, actually, which you can go back and find. Um, Moving on to Syndra. Syndra is hot to someone else again. Like, like I said, most champions are going to be there. Because, like, yes, this is, like, this is a badass sorcerer lady with, like, a leather corset and big titty floating around, like, thighs out, sure. Someone finds that hot. Uh, I can't be bothered. Um, I'm just not interested. Like, she's not even, like, she's supposed to be this dark empress thing, like... And I just, like, if you wanted her to be sexy, then make it more kinky, at least. Like, make it more of a thing of, like, she'll, like, she has the power to pick you up with her mind and throw you around. Like, how do you make that not? Okay. Anyway, but no. Just standard sexy fantasy babe archetype body. A kind of stereotypical dark empress sort of character design that doesn't really fit her lore very well at all. Uh, so, yeah, I just, I just can't really... I just, I just can't really get interested in it. So she's hot to someone else, not so much to me. Ooh. Which gets us on to uh, old Tommy Two Coats, Tom Kench himself, the River King, and he is another one of those like. He's niche. Like, I don't think everyone is into this kind of thing. Like, first of all, because in order to be into Tom Kench, like, you have to be at least okay with the concept of being eaten. Uh, like, not necessarily have a war kink, but, like, be okay with him wrapping his tongue around you and, like, chewing on you a little bit. Like, just for the kink factor, I guess. Uh, and certainly, like, that tongue. Like, what can he do with that? Many things, I'm sure. So, like, definitely this is the sort of thing, like, uh, niche... But I would argue, I'm putting him in hot to someone else, but I'd say, like, he's definitely a hot character. Like, maybe you don't see it, maybe, maybe like, fatness turns you off for whatever reason. Okay, um, sure, but he is a hot character. Like, again, it's the swagger, it's the confidence, it's the, uh, like, it's the charm. It's his willingness to seduce you. Like, Tom Kench is a seducer, remember. He's just, he doesn't seduce people sexually so much as he seduces them with the promises of servicing people's addictions. Whether that's for food, whether that's for money, whether that's for pleasurable company, I'm sure. Like, he's, that's what he eats. He eats people's feelings of addiction um, and despair of over addiction. Like, that's what he, that's what sustains him. That what, That's what he feeds on. And all of those concepts are kind of kinky, but they're definitely hot, even if it's not your bag. Which moves us on technically to Talon, but we've dealt with him already. It moves us on to Tarek, who again, like so many other champions before him, goes into hot to someone else tier uh, for me, because, yep, you, like, absolutely, I know why that's hot. That is definitely something that gets people excited. That's definitely something that people find extremely attractive. And I do like that we have, like, a character in League of Legends who has that more sort of, um, so, like, soft, gentle, like, version of masculinity, like, a version of masculinity that isn't, like, Rengar, Renekton, Darius... Uh, or even Garen, like that, that isn't just masculinity is anger or masculinity is, is smugness or smarm or like confidence, but like masculinity is this so, sort of soft self-assuredness, like this kindness, gentility. Um, I like that that's in there. That's a good addition to League of Legends, even if that's not really, a, not really my, my type. I completely understand why that's hot. Uh, Timo goes in the not discussed tier. I think he's an adult as a character. Like, I think he's meant to be an adult. I just don't want to talk about him because he's Teemo and I, I, I really do genuinely kind of dislike him. Um, 
Is Kench like a Glabriso from D&D? &D? No, like, well, mm, I mean, the demons in, in, in League of Legends, they feed on emotion. They feed on feelings, but they don't just feed on them. They actively create them. So, like, Evelyn feeds on suffering, like, in, feeds on people's emotional and physical suffering, right? So she wants to inflict pain on people. But in order to do that, she has found that people experience much more pain when they fall from the heights of ecstasy and pleasure, which is why she goes around as a sex demon, like, seducing people, giving them a lot of pleasure, and then stabbing them literally in the in the back or the face or where the kidney wherever it hurts the most with her tentacles in order to just drain them dry of like the true depths of fear and, and horror and despair that come and tom kench is like okay i he feeds on the misery of people who have like felt the heights of of pleasure in another way like he's also a a, 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 sed a seductive demon that in that sense he offers people hedonistic pleasure but for him it's more like fame, fortune, like money, power, any sort of material gain that can give them pleasure. Like gambling is one of his favorite addictions, like where he takes people to the height of success, of joy, and of like exhilaration, and then he takes it all away step by step, and he savors the desperation of people trying to hold on to what they have as it slips through their fingers. That's what he eats. And then eventually, when people have nothing else left to give him, he eats them physically. Like, he eats their bodies, and then he savors, like, their despair and misery while he digests them. That's that's Tom Kench. Uh, so he is a Vorkink like, personified, basically. Hmm. Anyway, Thresh. So, like, Thresh is hot to someone else tier for me. Like, we'll just put him there right away. Because, like... No, yeah, the chains, the sadism, like the, the willingness to inflict suffering on others and delight in it, and the voice, and all of that, like, yep, there are some monster fuckers that are definitely into that shit, and I completely understand why. Just, like, I I don't really vibe with the skull thing. That's not, mm -mm, not really, not really my kind of bag. I, I don't really have, <laughs> I don't really have any inclination towards being tortured for pleasure. Uh, not my kind of thing. But I fully understand, like, why people are into this. And then there's Thresh Unbound. I don't want to waste too much time talking about him, but Thresh Unbound... One of the things that's so shitty about that skin, or... Well, they, they did do a little bit of changing to it, but one of the things that's so shitty about that skin is that when you make Thresh human, like, when you make him a pretty boy with, like, a pretty little face and stuff, that makes all the kinky shit that he does as a monster less sexy. Like, that's just... It, it's just less sexy when some little shitty pretty boy with a dumb grin on his face and who just looks kind of smooth and 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 like supple and whatever when he does it that's le that's a lot less hot than when the scary skeleton monster does it like that's that's just less hot that's less sexy you made a sexy skin for him that somehow managed to make him less hot like and that's that's just failure on every front then they went back with the uh, animated short, like a night at the inn thing, and they did some substantial changes to Unbound Thresh to give him a lot more texture, make him a lot more of a man rather than a boy. Uh, like that sort of, it didn't make it better that they gave him flesh. I still think that's a stupid, stupid fucking decision. I think it's it's aesthetically and, and lore-wise terrible. It's a bad direction. But at least it's like, okay, like now this sort of kink factor is still there a little bit that this is like a... Like, this is a man and not some little shitty K-pop e-boy. Um, it helps a little bit. But still, like, like Thresh is hot when he's a monster. Like, a monster monster. Not when he's just, like, a, a fucking Patrick Bateman person. Uh, that's my opinion. Anyway. Which gets us along to Tristana. And yeah, Tristana is like, yeah, my favorite short stack among the Yordles. Like, she is, I'd say Tristana is hot. Like, because she's the one, she's the one of the Yordles that actually feels like she's designed with a certain level of appeal. Like, she feels like she's designed a little bit more along his lines. Like, where Poppy really doesn't feel that way. Like, a lot of people are into Poppy, whatever, they have a short stack thing for that. Fine. Poppy doesn't feel like that's really, like, that kind of passion and fun isn't really part of her. Tristana is someone who feels like, yeah, she would have fun. She would enjoy things in that sense. 
And that's appealing. Uh, she's not very sexy, I don't think. She's not really designed to be very sexy. But yeah, she's an adult. And she seems to enjoy having fun. And I think that's hot. And it's different, you know? And I hate that I have to specify this, like, like sort of go into all these caveats about like, yes, the yordles are small, but they're clearly designed. Like, I hate that we have to do this, but the fucking discourse around this shit sometimes was like, if you like a yordle, then you're a pedophile. Like, no, that's not. Like, I really, I really don't want to entertain that bad faith Puritan nonsense because it's not. No, that's not how anything works. Jesus Christ. Um. So yeah, moving on to Trundle. Yeah, I'm just monitoring chat here for a second, just to just just to be sure no one fucking uh, starts that dumb shit. Um, Trundle is hot to someone else. Not 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 really my kind of thing. Uh, but like we all saw that traditional Trundle skin, right? Like that was the one where they really made him fucky. Uh, but more than that, like, as in there's another thing, he's like, it's the monster fucker thing again. He's, he's a big, burly, hairy, kind of strong monster with big hands. Uh, and of course, people answer that. Legends of Runeterra Trundle makes him, like, substantially more bara, like, substantially more of a muscle man. Whereas in, in League of Legends, Trundle is a little bit more wiry. Like, he's kind of supposed to be a little bit skinny. He's supposed to be slightly smaller than the average troll, like, a little bit less muscly, a little bit less powerful. Um, but Legends of Runeterra is like, he's been Troll King for a while now, and he's gotten really fucking shredded. <laughs> Does he count as a himbo? No, because he's evil. Like, he's cruel. Uh, he's mean. So, he, he, he does not he does not drink respect women juice. At all. Just so... Uh, so, he can't be... He can't be a himbo. Um, but no, yeah. Like, people are definitely into this. Uh, just not so much me, maybe. Trindamir, though, I know rationally, I know rationally that people are into, like, because he's a big muscly man with hair on his chest and whatever, and obviously some people are going to be into that, obviously, I know, like, like, clearly people are into this, maybe, maybe, like, fun fact, his appearance is based on the appearance of Mark Merrill, uh, the shitty billionaire tech bro who co-founded Riot, that should make him... And like, and that's one of the reasons why, like, no, not hot, no, no, like, it's just, sorry, you can't, you can't get over that, not while the character model still looks like that, uh, you can't, I cannot move past that, that is not, that's not ever gonna leave my mind that that's a thing, uh, so that's not hot, um, but also just generally, Trindamir, I don't know, like, he's just so lame, like, his character design, like, with the fucking skull belt, thing and he's carrying this giant jagged sword with the shitty edges thing and like fucking like he's lame he's just a lame character son he's lame he's lame he's he's not cool in any way and if if you're if you are super lame you can still be hot sometimes but trindamir can't so he's not hot he goes there no hotness he, he doesn't get to he doesn't get to have that do you think Trindamir can ult to last seven seconds longer? <laughs> oh lord. Oh god. <laughs> uh, no comment. Also, Twisted Fate. Another pretty easy placement. Really not my kind of thing. Not really, not really for me. But Graves is super into him. And I know that some of you all degenerates are as well. Uh, Twisted Fate, like, with his lanky, sort of, card gambling, why, howdy there, ma'am, demeanor. Absolutely, that is a lot of people's thing. Even if, uh, even if I don't see it very much. But yeah, no, he's, he's, he's Graves' husband, and we should probably put him there. There we go. They, they can, they can be kissing and making out up there together. Which is what they do all the time. They kiss and they make out, and they sleep in the same bed, and they have sex with each other. And they are boyfriends, and lovers, and also husbands. Just, just wanted to point that out there, that that's what they are canonically. Uh, I've decided. Uh, so that, so that's that's how that goes. And if you disagree, you're free to disagree. You are welcome to disagree, and you are wrong, objectively. 
objectively, like just science. It's science and math. I have done the calculations. And they're husbands. They just are. I say these things specifically to trigger, uh, like, to trigger, like, the kinds of comments uh, that people will leave, like, hey, they're just bros! Why can't any man be friends anymore? Why do they all have to be fucking all the time? Why does it all have to be sexy? Why does it all have to be sexual? Why is it always, like, you just can't have two men who are bros and friends with each other? The reason, as I've pointed out many times in the past, the reason why two men can't just be friends anymore is homophobia. That's why. It's because straight dudes who are fucking insecure about themselves, deeply, desperately insecure about themselves, see two bros sharing a hug and go, <laughs> gay! And they do that for like 40 years until they turn, grow up into being adults who can't express their feelings or have any kind of emotional intimacy with any other man ever. And that creates a media landscape where people who are gay and who like really do value like emotional and physical intimacy between men never get to see that ever in any context except where it's either mocked for being gay or where it is genuinely gay. And so like, yeah, no fucking shit that queer people latch on to representations of two men who have like positive emotional feelings towards each other and physical intimacy. No fucking shit. They get a little bit eager to ship them. Are you surprised by this? Well, if you want that to change, if you want people to be less like cringe about shipping gay carries all the time, then fucking create a media environment and a social environment where men having physical intimacy with each other is not something that needs to be constantly either shouted at or commented upon or made into a big fucking deal. Deal. Just make it normal for men to be socially and emotionally intimate with each other without it being a sexual thing. Straight people are the ones who make it sexual all the time. All the time. Like fucking a man can't touch a woman on the shoulder sometimes without like like fucking like I remember this from when I was a kid. Like if I there was a girl in my class who I liked, I enjoyed hanging out with her. Someone inevitably immediately would be like, "Oh, is that your girlfriend?" No, motherfucker, I'm 6 years old. I don't know what that is. But that's shit like that's that's straight people do that shit. Like that's straight culture is to like just to inherently and deeply sexualize all forms of emotional intimacy. So fuck off with that. And let the gays ship in peace. Because they're not hurting anyone. Unlike the emotional repression that comes from, like, fucking toxic masculinity culture. Anyway, uh, let's talk about Twitch. Here's another one for the furries. Um, not really for me. I know that they're def- like, he's- <laughs> We talked about Silas being sort of a stinky, smelly little rat man who people are nonetheless massively attracted to. Yeah, Twitch is that, but for furries. Uh, so he goes in the hot to someone else tier, because that's that's where he belongs. Uh, not really my kind of thing, I gotta admit, but it's the kind of thing that I... Like, I have enough furry friends that I know why that's sexy to people. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's where that goes. And then there's Udyr. Right now, right at this minute, like, I know his splash art looks like this, but right now... Udyr is not hot. He isn't. Udyr's not hot. He's just bad. He's a terrible character design. Once he gets his rework, when Udyr gets his rework, he's gonna jump immediately up here. Like, based on the artwork that we've seen, that's where Udyr is going to go. But right now, no. Right now, no. No, he's not. He's just, no. Like, like Spirit Guard Udyr, arguably, here. But current Udyr, the way that he's constructed, the character design that he's got, no. Sorry, nope. Does, like, the splash art makes him look way more sexy than he actually is. Because the, the, and it's about the character design itself, like, the fucking gi and the thing of, like, the, this Heihachi ass looking outfit thing with the fucking clog shoes. And, like, the bearskin hat on the thing. Like, he just looks silly. This is a cartoon character. This is ridiculous. This is dumb. Um, like, this this is just very, very silly. He, like, it's the same way that Gangplank before his rework. Yeah, sure, he had the chest out and he was like a big burly man or whatever. But that's not hot. Like, that. no, he's a cartoon character. He's a Scooby-Doo villain. And this is like also a cartoon character. Sorry, it's not. This is, this is, this is, this is not hot. It can't be. Like, don't get seduced by the splash art. This is not hot. Is my opinion. Anyway. Then we have Urgot, and that's another case of hot to someone else. 
because like he, he does have that like, like I was made in the darkness, molded by it. You think the darkness is your ally? Like he he has that sort of uh, he's a Bane copy. He's sort of like fifty percent Bane, fifty percent Immortan Joe from uh, from uh, from Mad Max. Um, and like, there's people that are into that. Like, I do like that he has like a more, again, the more dad bot physicality. Like when you look at his actual torso, he has a gut. Like he has an actual, like he's not just all abs and rippling muscles. He actually has like the gut and build of like a power lifter or a strong man, like someone who actually uses their muscles to be powerful with. And I like that as his character design. There's always something a little bit kinky about like sort of having a like prosthetics, prosthetic, like prosthetic legs and shit like that. Like being part robot, being part cyborg. Uh, it's always a little bit of that there. Someone is definitely into that. I understand why. I just don't find it super f sexy, though. Just, eh. Not really. It's it's just not really my thing. So he goes in where most of the champions have gone, sexy to someone else. And Varys kind of has to go there as well. Uh, because, like, oh, yeah, like, he's, he's got sort of the, the twunky... Kind of like uh, like slen slender and a little bit skinny, but plenty of muscle abs thing going on. That oh yeah, like I gay dudes go nuts for this shit, um, and that's fine. That's completely fair. Lots of women are into this sort of this sort of thing as well. For me, eh, like it's not really hot. Like it's it's sort of aesthetically appealing. Like it's pretty, but hot. Yeah, no, no, not really. Like it's yeah. Someone finds this hot, but I don't, I don't, I, I just don't really see it. I, I just don't really, I don't vibe with it. Not my kind of thing. And I don't think I have much more to explain there. Like, I can explain, like, there's also just the disappointment. Like, again, um, Varys, the, the lore update that he got was that now he possesses the body of Valmar. And he's, like, also, like, joined inside Valmar by the spirit of Kai, his lover, right? And that's the thing where I'm going, oh, wait, you have a darkened weapon that possessed two people at the same time? That's some pretty fucking prime opportunity for some body horror right there, my man. Like, that's, you have two bodies that are fused together into one, essentially. You could do more interesting shit with that than just, like, one pretty boy walking out of a pool. Um, like, this, there's a lot more visual shit that could be done with that that would be more fun, more interesting. Like, maybe, like, if, if like, the two bodies are fused together... What if sometimes he just, like, swaps from being one person to the other? Like, like there's this flash of void energy, and then, like, where Valmar's body once was, now Kai is there. And he has, like, a switching mechanic where he can switch between, like, close range and long range abilities. Like, th there's a lot more shit that could be done with that, is what I'm saying. But that's not really any... That doesn't really have much bearing on whether he's hot or not. It's just that, you know, I, I have a lot of disappointments with Varys that probably influence my feelings of eh about him. Which moves us on to Vayne. And like, with Vayne, I'm a like, on the one hand, on the one hand, this is the kind of shit that I thought was hot in like the late 90s and early 2000s. Like, this is the kind of shit, like, if she was like on a comic book, I'd be like, oh shit, that's a babe. Oh, man. like, it's, it's like my younger self definitely find her hot, finds her hot. My younger self is definitely into this kind of, like, the leather pants thing. I, my younger self had just watched The Matrix, and now things in, in leather are just hot and sexy and cool to me. But I've grown up since then, and, like, as a grown-up, I look at this, and it's, like, it's not quite as bad as Misfortune, right? Like, it's not, like, Misfortune, like, where it's trying way too hard to be sexy kind of thing. But there is a part of it that's trying way too hard to be something. Like, there's part of it that's that's just that's trying way too hard and moving towards an aesthetic that's just ends up being kind of like ugh, like kind of kind of like too much and kind of cringy and i think it's all the spikes like partly like i think she's got the spikes on the wrist she's got the spikes on the on like the gauntlets because why she doesn't fight with her gauntlets so she's got the spikes around the collar for whatever reason like the spiky thing here and the spiky thing there and the spiky thing everywhere and the long heels and the knives that she doesn't use for anything and like it, it has that 90s comic book character design syndrome of like just shoving way too much extraneous detail on there that doesn't really aid anything about the character so she looks cool kind of like she looks sort of like sort of like bat assy but it's like in hindsight it's like it's just way too much kind of i don't know either way someone for the same reason as all the other champions with this exact same goddamn body type she goes on hot to someone else tier because 
yeah, that's what she is. <laughs> it's Bayonetta if she had no personality or taste. Yeah, it's a little bit of that, really. Like, because Bayonetta, like, as a character design, if you notice, Bayonetta is very, very sparse about details. Like, it's it's very economical the way that they apply details to Bayonetta's character design. Um, which I find very interesting. Which moves us on to Vagar. Anyway. Don't want to get bogged down. My voice is giving out a little bit. Like, I can feel that my... My throat is like getting to the point where it's like, okay, we need we need to wrap this up soon. So I'm I'm gonna go a little faster with the last ones. Um and this is where we get to Vagar. Again, a champion who I would say is characterized as a, an adult. Albeit it, it sort of depends. Like in, in League of Legends, he's I think he's more adultish, whereas in Legends of Runeterra, he comes across more like a more like a sort of excited boy in his cool clubhouse. Like, sort of playing evil overlord with his friends kind of thing. And because of that, like, he sort of goes in, like, I don't... I don't think necessarily that he's meant to be a child, but he's too childish for me to really consider. Like, it's just... I, yeah, I don't know. Like, hotness doesn't really apply to him for me, I don't think. Which gets us on to... The Tentacle Monster. And it's he's an easy placement here. Like, he's hot to someone else. He's not really my kind of thing. Uh, like, ha I know, like, being able to spawn tentacles, like a person that can spawn tentacles, automatically hot. It has to go up here. But being a tentacle monster, I'm a little bit more squirrely back and forth on that. And it's mostly because of the way Velkos is designed. Because, like, yeah, he's a tentacle monster, but he's not that much of a tentacle monster. Like, he only has three. But like, he has three limbs... And that's like, if you have the sort of the kinky restraint fantasy and like, like sort of being touched everywhere by, you know, the things that circle around your wrists and waists and like that, that full body immersion into, into sensation kind of thing. Velkos kind of can't do that. Like he's not really a tentacle monster. He's an eyeball with three limbs. Um, so like, I don't, I don't like if, if he was more of a genuine tent, like if he's more of a Shuma Gorath, right? Um. Let me see if I can find some art of that. Like there, if this was more the vibe of Elkaz. Like, if, if like it was more of a tentacle monster and less than just a, of a floating eyeball with three limbs, that would be hot. Like, I that, that would move it up into hot tier because, obviously, tentacle monsters are just hot. That's an established fact. But because he's, like, so... He only has the three limbs and he's mostly about eyeball things. Eh, someone finds that hot. I'm not really... I'm not really... Eh. Uh, that's, that's not enough to be a hot tentacle monster to me. Which moves us on to uh, King Simp of Fuckboy Mountain, whomst is Viego. Whose splash art I apparently forgot to put in my folder? What the fuck? Okay, I can find that though. Uh, give me a second. There we go. There he is. And like... Yeah, I know a lot of people didn't want uh, Viego. Like, they didn't want Kevin. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people didn't want Viego. They wanted, like, the Ruined King to be this, this sort of hollowed-out ancient wraith, blah, 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 kind of thing. I know it wasn't exactly what everyone was looking for from the Ruined King. I know, like, there's a lot of ancillary disappointment and shit in there, but, like... But, like, let's be real. Let's be honest with ourselves. Like... I'm sorry, but, like, don't be silly. He's hot. Obviously, he's hot. Like, it's, yeah, not not your bag, maybe? But obviously, he's hot. Like, <laughs> he's designed very specifically and very effectively to be hot. And even if he's not the Ruined King you wanted, like, come on. 
He's got he's got like the fucking Sakimichi Chan like smooth like bishiness with like the defined cheekbones and the star dark staring intense eyes and like the will to dominate you like like this drive to 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 dominate and control and like this massive rabbit like it just like Jin like we talked about with Jin like one of the things that makes him hot is that he if he loves you like if 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 he if you catch his attention rather he will believe to the bottom of his heart that you are the most beautiful thing in the universe. Like, and he will kill you and like strain your guts out with fishing hooks and wires in order to show you off as an artwork so everyone else can see that you're that beautiful. But the appealing thing is that he will be obsessed with you. He will, like, you will be everything to him. Like, everything he thinks, everything he does, his every waking moment will revolve around making you as beautiful as he sees you. Like, that's that's the obsession. That's the, that's the hot part. Viego is that same way. Like, and as people are saying in chat, Viego will only ever feel that way about Isolde, obviously. Like, he, he's he's a wife guy to the bone. He's as much of a wife guy as Lucian is. Uh, just just a toxic, shitty one who... who treats his wife ter terribly, honestly. Um, but, like, if Viego loves you, you are everything to him. Like, he will worship the very ground that you walk on. Like, anything you ever want, he will walk through hell to get it to you. Like, he will send other people into hell to get it to you. Like, the, he will move heaven and earth. He will commit every atrocity. Like, if you are separated from him, there is, there is like, nothing he will not do to be reunited with you like no matter how terrible because he loves you more than life itself he like you are more important to him than everything else that exists obviously this is terrible like in real life run away run away a lot run away far run away fast change your name get plastic surgery like just get away from it because that is very bad because that's also going to end up with you dead as much as the is just as surely as Jin is but like you can see the appeal, right? Like this beautiful, handsome, gorgeous creature that is devoted solely to you and your pleasures, that is devoted only to making you happy by whatever means, except, of course, the only thing he will not do to make you happy is leave you alone, <laughs> which uh, that's the problem, isn't it? Uh, but like, let's not kid ourselves. He's hot. Like, my, g he's hot. He is extremely hot. And that's just, like, he's designed to be, and he's well-designed to be. <laughs> Tell us more, yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I know, I just said I was going to speed these up, and then I didn't, because I'm an idiot. I know. How the hell... Oh, I did have Viego splash art. Oh, God, it's just everything is jumbled up in the wrong order. Right, okay, there we go. There we go. I got it. I got I got the next one. I got the next one, though. There we go. Victor. I'm about to disappoint some of my friends again uh, a little bit because... Um, not hot. Vic Victor, League of Legends Victor. In-game League of Legends Victor. This Victor, this one right here. He's not hot. I'm sorry, he isn't. Like, he's not. No. No. And it's for the same, like, for the same goddamn reasons that, like, so many of the other ones. Mm-hmm. Arcane Victor. Arcane Victor? Do you know where Arcane Victor goes? Arcane Victor goes here. Arcane Victor is a snack. Arcane Victor is, like, I don't care how straight you think you are. You're not that straight. Like, no. Arcane Victor goes there. But in-game Victor? This one? Oh, wait, shit, you couldn't see. Uh, Arcane Victor goes here. Like, he, he goes up there. I don't care. Like, you can be as straight as you want. Like, the Arcane Victor goes there. All right? But in-game Victor, League of Legends Victor, this version of the character? No. No, he's not. Like, from the goddamn stupid hair poking out of the mask and, like, the goddamn edgelord, like, evil Darth Vader shit, shitty dumb mask here... And the lack of, like, any sense of style or coherence. And, like, the robot arm, weirdly, for some reason, on the one hand, but then he doesn't have replaced his leg. And, like, 
he, I've said for many years now that Victor is the most disappointing cyborg ever. Like, he's supposed to be this herald of the glorious evolution, right? He's supposed to be this, like, like the, this robotic master of physicality like, who's willing to cross every ethical boundary in the, in the pursuit of perfection for the human species. And then you look at this and it's like, it's like some fucking dork as someone in this shitty little armor with like one prosthetic hand and a robot arm that can shoot a laser and a scepter. Like scepters are lame, man. Like you have to be, you have to be really fucking cool to pull off a scepter. And he isn't, he's got like his mask with the little hairs sticking out and the leg brace. No, this Victor is not hot. This one is not hot. Like the character, the concept of the character is very hot. Like the concept of the character is really fucking good and cool. And like I, I, I really like him and he would be very hot, but much like his boyfriend, Jace. Sorry, this execution? No, the execute, like same, same reason with Soraka, right? Like conceptually, this should be extremely hot. And conceptually, this should be very kinky actually. Like, like with the replacing robot parts, you can have any number of limbs that you want. God knows how you can augment you're very like you can install vibrators everywhere like it should be very hot conceptually it should have a lot of possibility for hotness but in execution no this this is this is not hot this is lame compared to what the concept says that it should be so sorry no, and uh, gonna make so many of my friends mad at me. Uh, like, I've, I know I already made uh, I already made Dinka mad with my Darius comments. Like she fucking called me out on Twitter, <laughs> uh, which I deserve. I deserve that. That's fine. Um, but yeah, no, Victor, Victor no bueno. Victor not hot. On the other hand, though, on the other hand. I am personally weak to Riot Girl aesthetics. Like I'm, I'm, I'm so weak. I'm so weak to this punk shit. Like this, like that whole thing with the little frilly skirt thing and the corset. And this Vi's base character design is really silly. Like it's a pinup character design. Like it's, it's really not. It's really not that good. It's it's one of those skins that has one of those character designs that has aged quite badly. I think she really needs an update. It's all very male gazy. But like I'm a male and I gaze. Um and yeah. Yep. Yeah, this like this is this is it's not because I think it's a good design, <laughs> but it's just that this is the kind of bad design that appeals very directly to me. Like very much, very much, uh, very much my kind of thing. Um, so yeah, like that's she, 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 she goes in the top tier for me, just because, because of the way that I am as a person. Um, but I will say that like, Arcane Vi, substantially better character sign, and Arcane Vi. Like, for me, would not be quite up here. She would be down here. She, it's like, she is hot. Like, there's absolutely no denying it. The reason why Base Vi gets to go up there is because it's just like, yeah, she's hot, but then she's also specifically targeted at me in particular. Like, this, this character design was made to be found hot by me, no matter how lame it is in every other way. Uh, like, no, no matter how silly or badly aged it is. Mine. I, yep. Yeah. That's, that's, that's me. This is my exact kind of cringe. Uh, so that's where that goes. But Arcane Vi is better. Like, it's a better character design. It's arguably hotter. Like, arguably, like, if I was trying to be objective, I would say that Arcane Vi is hotter than Base Vi. But I'm not trying to be objective. And so that's the way it goes. And yeah, there's Viego's splash art. Completely out of order. Like, uh, the, the gut... The order of, of uh, this thing is, like, just different from the order of splash arts that I have. That was Victor. Okay. Uh, which moves us on to Vladimir. Oh, Vladimir. Oh, Vladimir. Vladimir should be really fucking hot. Like, Vladimir should just be 
absolute an absolute snack like he should be just fucking gorgeous like an absolute dorian gray like little erotic little sex bomb of a horny ass blood sucking vampire hemomancer kind of guy he should be he's supposed to be he was meant to be but in reality he looks like that and i just don't <sighs> eh. like come on like how do you f how do you fuck this up you have a vampire character. Like, he, I know he's not literally a vampire, but a character who's very clearly a vampire character. One of the horniest monsters in the entire fucking world. How do you fuck this up? How do you get this so wrong? How do you make him so lame and so shitty and so fucking... Just fuck, look at him. Look at what he looks like. What the fuck is that face? What is that hair? What is that outfit? What's that fucking overcoat like he looks like fucking riding marshal prussian overcoat from like the late 1900 for like the early 1900s and then those pants and those shoes what the hell like he needs at least to have a baseline sense of style this is not eccentric this is like a man who like stumbled into a thrift shop covered in glue tumbled through it and like fell out the other side like no oh god terrible Absolutely terrible. Absolutely. And I can't even call him anti-hot because he's not, he doesn't have the remote potential to be hot to begin with in this version. Like, Legends of Runeterra has done a better job with him. His splash art, like, sort of tries to make him a little bit horny in an interesting way, but, like, it just, you can't, you can't. like, there's no, there's no, there's no recovering from this. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Ugh. Volibear, horny and sexy to someone else. Because, like, yes, it's a big bara furry again. I do feel like, by the way, there's other kinds of furries than just big bara furries, you know, right? Like, if you, if you want to do horny furries, like, there's, there's more ways to do it than th just, than just, like, big buff muscle hairy daddy thing. Like, there's other kinds. Uh, you can incorporate those at any time you'd like to, honestly. Um, but no, yeah, like, I don't think I need to explain this very much. Like, look at him. He's a big, buff, furry dude with, like, some really nice braids and big hands and claws and angry and lightning powers. Like, if you're into electro play, uh, Volibear is the furry for you. But yeah, no, not my kind. My Not my kind of thing. Uh, which moves us on to uh, another, another one for the furries, which is Warwick. Warwick, as I want to call him, but Warwick, as he's actually called. Um, Hoomst is a little bit, like, still in the Bara furry territory, I'd say. Like, not quite as much as Volibear is, but still, like, in, in that particular territory. And thus, goes the same place. He goes in horny and sexy to someone else. Not so much to me, um, because... Yeah, no, like, I, I get it. I understand why this is... Like, werewolf fantasies are popular for a reason. There's a reason we have the Omegaverse. Um, there's a reason why that exists. So, like, this is definitely extremely horny to many, many, many people. Especially, like, Vo Volibear is, like, one kind of horny in the sense of, like, being the big sort of dominant, like, ah, oh, use my strength to take what I want. And, like, kind of, that's his kind of thing. Um, and then we have, uh, like, Warwick, which is much less, like, he's, he's sort of barely on the edge of control. Like, he's always driven by passion, by the smell of the blood, and, like, by the physical needs that rage inside him. Like, it's very much, again, like, it's very much the Omegaverse thing of, like, this, the, like, this, this instinct-driven, feral kind of, it's called Primal Kink, I think. Um... Uh, thing that's going on where like that that really sort of like where he can barely control himself and like when he once he gets inflamed with passion is like like the the ride is on and you're not getting off until he's done kind of thing um <laughs> who the fuck said omega verse vander i'm putting you in jail yeah but like what do you think people haven't written omega verse vander shit yet do you think they haven't done that oh they've done that they've absolutely done that um, <laughs> it's like, that's, yeah, uh, of course that's the thing. Um, so yeah, like, absolutely see the appeal there, just not so much for me. Uh, staying with the furry theme, Wukong. So, like, Wukong is like, I know that there's furries that are gonna be hot for this, 
I know that there are. Like, rationally speaking, I know that there are. And, like, maybe the splash art, I can sort of kind of see it. But I don't think Wukong is hot. Like, no. Not... It's just, like... Just not really... Like, he's really not designed to be hot in any sense. But, like, he's fun. He's a funny little character. Uh, but I just don't think he's designed to be hot as such. Like, I really don't think that's part of his design, and I don't see him that way. Like, even though I know furries are horny for, for it... No... No, it just doesn't get there. Um, not for me. Is he human or furry? Uh, is he furry? Pick one, not both. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, they could definitely go further in. But, like, he's a monkey furry. Like, that's that's what monkey furries look like. Uh, you, could, you could do more with it, but, like, it's just, he's too clunky. Like, the way that he's put together, like, with those big arm things, like, the big clunky hands... Like, no, there's no sleekness, there's no smoothness to him. He's, he's, he's erratic, he's, like, wild, he is, he is energetic, but he's not sexy. Like, he's not hot. I just, I just, I just don't see it. Which gets us to Zaya, who, um, I mean, very much the same, like, she's this body type again, very much many times. Now, I'm, I'm, like, more willing to drag Zaya into hot territory. Like, it's, like I would, kind of, because, like, she's a, she's a, she's a dark emo gothy girl, and that's, that's very much my kind of shit. But, but no, like, again, it's too, she just, she's too disappointing as a concept. She just doesn't do enough. She just doesn't do enough. Like, because, especially in contrast with Rakan, right, in context with Rakan, like, in that relationship, Zaya wears the strap, right? Like, she absolutely does. But she just doesn't really have that energy. Right? Like, she just doesn't have enough... Like, she's too... She's too smooth. She's too pretty. Right? Like, rather than... Like, rather than being gorgeous, she's pretty. Like, rather than being... Like, rather than being, being powerful, she's... She's slight and slender and slim. And that's partly... Part down to game design considerations. She's an ADC, she has to have a certain, like, kind of body profile, whatever, whatever excuse they want to come up with in that sense. But for me, Saya just doesn't give off the energy. Like, she just doesn't give off the sort of hot goth dommy GF kind of thing that she's supposed to be going for. And so I can't really find her hot. Like, I can see why other people do, but for me, it just doesn't get there. Which gets us on to Zerath, which is another one for the monster fuckers, uh, like a particular one because he doesn't really have a body um, as such to speak of, which makes it a little bit difficult maybe to see him as hot. I I I can sort of like no yeah like I've seen people get hot for energy bodies before like like sort of being formless things made of swirling power kind of thing. Sure, I can see that, but also like no. Not really. Like, it's... Yeah, like, intellectually. It's one of those where intellectually I get that there's people who are horny for it. But I also just don't... Like, even in his updated form, like, I think he looks a lot better in his Legends of Runeterra form. Like, that makes him much more cohesive, gives him much more of a sort of vibe. He's got a little bit more of that Darth Vader vibe thing going on. But no, still, like, I just... I just don't think Zerath is hot. Like, I can see you... I know intellectually he is to some people, but no. No, I I don't. I don't see this as a hot character, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> energy fuckers, yeah. <laughs> How can you be horny for someone with no body? I mean, people get horny for ghosts all the time. Okay, getting towards the end game here. So here's Xin Xiao. And 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 here's Xin Xiao. Yeah, the splash art is ca is writing a lot of checks that uh, the character model cannot fucking cash. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, Xin Xiao looked very different back in the day. He was meant to be a much older character, like he was meant to be sort of a, sort of a middle-aged aging fighter who was like the mentor to the king kind of thing. 
But then... Yeah, for whatever reason, Riot's splash artists uh, decided that, oh no, wait, actually, we want him to be like a young, hot... Young, hot man, younger-ish, like maybe in his early 30s, kind of smooth-faced, pretty boy kind of thing. Uh, I'm not really clear on what, but they never updated the character model to fit. Uh, so we get a bit of an age gap <laughs> and a bit of an eyebrow gap um, between these two characters. That's like, uh, yeah, that's that's a funny thing. But anyway, the upshot is that uh, Xin Zhao is not hot. Um, in either form, I think. Like, even, even in, like, his, like, when he's meant to be hot, like, he's made young and kind of... This is not particularly hot, I don't think. This is just... He's just pretty. But that's not the same thing as being hot. Uh, so, yeah, no. No, I, 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 don't, I don't think so. Anyway, Yasuo, no surprise where he goes. Uh, hot to someone else. I'm like a little, like, I'm not really, like, much more like Silas. Like, Yasuo is meant to be sort of a little bit of a, a little bit of a, of a wandering disaster man. Like, he's, he's, he's a bit of a drunk. Uh, he doesn't really take care of himself. He, he suffers with a lot of, like, like, internal demons and, like, yeah, he has a lot of problems. He's a fixer-upper. Like, you can fix him. Yeah, exactly. As people are pointing on chat. I can fix him. Uh, he's, a, he's a garbage man what can be fixed. But Yasuo, unlike Silas, perhaps, Yasuo can be fixed. Like, that's that's much more part of his story is that he does get better. Um, so, yeah. I fully understand why this is hot to other people. Uh, he has looked very, very sexy in a lot of the uh, in a lot of the animated shorts that have featured him. But for me, yeah, no. not not really Not really where I would spend my time. Um, cause like, <laughs> like, uh, I, I am require at minimum that someone showers, uh, which Yasuo doesn't. Um, so yeah, bit of a different story perhaps with his brother Yone, who first of all has better personal hygiene. Um, and second of all, just like. Like, he's, he's a very edgelordy champion. Like, he's very kind of, again, a little bit back to, like, there's a little bit of that 13-year-old thing. But instead of being a 13-year-old boy's fantasy, I feel like Yone is a little bit more of a 13-year-old girl's fantasy, in a sense. Like, there's a little bit more, like, or maybe a mix of the two, rather, I should say. Um, like, because it is a little bit, like, it's a little bit silly. Like, it's a little bit with the with the bandages and, like, the half mask, because he's, like, a half demon, half human. And he's got, like, the one normal sword and the demon sword. Like, it's it's a little bit... It's a little bit there. Like, yeah, he's a Bleach character. Like, he's very much he's very much in that vibe. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and he's also hot. He, he's, he's hot. He is hot. Like is not not again not not a reflection that this like a super great innovative unique character design or anything, but he is he is hot. Can't can't really say he isn't. Can't really say that he isn't. Um, which gets us to Yorick, of course, who is obviously going like in the anti-hot. Because like I don't even know how how can anyone. Possibly this guy, this oh boy, like this, this, this terrible looking, definitely unappealing. Like oh, no one, no one could possibly, no, no, no one could possibly find him uh, hot at all. Like that, I, I don't know why anyone would, um, I don't know why anyone would find this, this garbage grave digger man, um, hot. I can't see it. Absolutely not. Nope. No way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I think I got you there in chat. I think chat got mad at me for a second. <laughs> but no, yeah, Yorick is hot. Can't can't get around it. Yorick, Yorick is definitely hot. Um, and it's again because he has a different energy. Uh, like, he, ha he has an energy that's a little bit... Like, he has more of that sort of morose... Sort of, I have accepted a terrible fate upon myself, but I will carry it out. And, like, he has this thing about clinging on to humanity... 
in spite of inhumane circumstances kind of thing going on, like more of an internal struggle that I really quite like. Like, I think that's that's part of what makes him appealing as a character is that he has that gentility to him, that he's a man in brutal circumstances, like who, who does brutal things with like the, the, the ghouls that he raises and everything, but who nonetheless holds on to a certain level of, of gentility and compassion. Like that, that, all, that all ties in to making him ultimately a very attractive character. Yeah, he is. He's hot. Then there's Yumi, who goes in the not discussed part, because obviously she does. I'm gonna move Siri in there as well, because she's a teenager. Uh, which means we get to Zack. And Zack is another one of those situations where it's like, in the lore, technically, depending on which version is canon, like I'm not 100% sure how the timelines work out, Zack is somewhere between 2 and 15 years old, something like that. I think they recently retconned him to be older, perhaps. But that's basically how he was conceived, right? And so, if you focus on that, like, obviously, like, yeah, no, that, that goes in the not discussed tier. Like, because that's, that's not a subject for discussion whatsoever. But if you actually, like, the character as he's presented, the way that he, like, the way that he talks, the way that he's presented, the way that he's written, the way he goes around, Generally, he's written entirely as an adult. Like, if you didn't know his age, you would never know because he's written as a fully realized, like, fully competent, grown-ass adult character. Again, I don't know if that's still there. Like, I, I really don't... Riot gave him a retcon a little while ago that made a lot of his story a lot worse. But I think it also moved him towards being more immature. Like, moved him more towards being sort of a teenager. Um in the way that he's conceived, and so, like, I don't really know where to put Zack. Like, I don't know if I'm supposed to conceive of him as an adult character anymore. Uh, which, like, that used to be the thing. Is Like, the thing used to be that he was someone who, like, who, who absorbed humanity and experience very, very quickly, but who was probably quite a lot older than people knew, just that he needed time to learn how to be human. Um, and it's like, I don't know really how to, con how to conceive of Zack. Like, if, if he is an adult, then he's hot to other people because he's a slime monster. Like, duh. Uh, there's, there's really no way around that. But if he's not meant to be an adult, then uh, yeah, I don't know. So for the moment, I'm going to put him in not disgust because I don't know if he's meant to be conceived of as an adult. I don't know how he's written right now. Uh, so that's where he goes. Uh, which moves us on to Zed. And Zed is hot to other people, I guess. Like, he has the whole... Like, he has the, the, the ninja mask thing. Like, he's master of shadows, evil dark. Yes, I am the master of darkness. Blah. Like, he has that kind of thing going on. But I'm also... I'm really of a mind... That, like, he... There's also a part of him that, to me, just kind of feels not sexy at all. Um... Like, I'm, I'm really sort of, I'm halfway between hot to someone else and not hot with Zed. Just because, again, like, this, it, it's the same situation with Shen. Shen and Zed, like, they're hot for each other, but it, I just, I just feel like they're not hot for anyone else ever. <laughs> um, but look, Zed is more, like, Zed is more, like, he has passion within him, at least. Like, Zed at least has the passion and the, like, internal emotional drive to be an attractive character, whereas Shen is just so infuriating. I am the Eye of the Twilight. I have no emotions. Ah. Um, well, like, Shen, like, Zed at least has the capacity to, to feel passion, which, like, so, yeah, hot to someone else. He can be there next to his boyfriend, and they can just stick around there and hopefully be happy together. <clears throat> then there's Ziggs. So, Ziggs is definitely an adult character, um, but... I would struggle to call him hot, like, unless you have a really big thing for the Cheshire Cat. No, uh, like, there's not, he's fun, he's charming, like, he's much like Heimerdinger, uh, like, he's fun, he's charming, he's, like, adorable to be around, he, he's a cool little character, but just find him hot in any way is like, you know, no, I, no, I don't really see that, um, I don't really see that at all, so, no, uh, not really, he, he, he just goes in, into, into not hot. That's I think that's where he belongs. Which leads us on to an interesting case as we're getting towards the end here. 
which is um, Zillion. Because Zillion is not hot. Zillion here is not hot. Like, nothing about him is hot. I don't, you can't, I'm sorry, you can't. You can't convince me that this is hot to anyone ever in any way. Sorry, it's not hot. It 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 goes it goes into the not hot category. But Zillion here, on the other hand, Zillion, uh, the other character, uh, the different character that we're talking about, Zillion, Zillion here, yeah, I mean he's 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 a little bit on the older side, but Zillion is kind of hot. Like not so much to me. Again, kind of outside my age bracket. Not really my kind of thing. But no, yeah, like, like definitely, I can see that Zillion, unlike, unlike Zillion here, Zillion can definitely be hot to people, but not Zillion. Zillion can, but not Zillion, if you take my meaning, right? So Zillion is going to end up in the hot to someone else tier, because uh, he's a lot hotter than Zillion is. <laughs> Which moves on to Zyra. Zyra, Zyra, Zyra. And she got, for me, Zyra is very much, she's very much a misfortune situation. Like, not only is she a shameless ripoff of Poison Ivy, like in every way, just in every single possible way, which, you know, that doesn't help. She's also just like, this is, Wow, wow, this character really wants me to find her hot. Like, she really wants... Like, this character is just so fucking desperate to be jerked off over. Um, And it's like, the thing that she's missing that, like, that, like, Poison Ivy has in so many of her incarnations... Like, Poison Ivy has a bit of camp. Like, Poison Ivy has a bit of fun. Poison Ivy seems to sort of, sort of enjoy and revel in being a bit, bit ridiculous. Zyra just kind of takes herself so seriously. To the point where, like, I, I feel like a lot of the fun goes out of her. And so, to me, Zyra goes in the category of anti-hot. Because it's, again, it's that thing of misfor that Misfortune is doing where it's just, like, way too hard. Like, trying way too much. And being, like, way too eager to pander. In a way that, like, again, it's like Caitlyn's old character design. This feels like a porn parody. Like, this feels like the porn version of itself. And I just, I can't... I can't find it sexual. I just, I can't. It's, 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 well, I can't find it sexual, but I can't find it hot. I just can't. It sucks, it sucks the hotness out of the room because I just look at that and I go, oh, okay, yeah, mm, fine. You, you really fucking desperately want, want this. Wow, you really want me to find you hot. And that desperation is just not hot. It just isn't. It just isn't. Well then, seven hours later. That was all of them, plus Silco and Alune. So let me just take a drink here, and we'll do a little recap. And I'll look some super chats. Uh, there's been a few super chats. Let me, um, hang on. Knight of the Inn's Unbound Thresh is a sexy devil. Yes, he is. Re Tristana, short people exist. They do. Uh, Scorn sent a super chat saying, imagine not being able to hold hands with your bro. Yeah, like, motherfucker. Like, I, I remember as a young man, like, the, the hostility towards intimacy amongst, like, the, my peers, my friends, in school, like, just the sheer, the sheer fear and, like, performative anger and, like, performative violence that was directed towards the concept of any kind of intimacy, like, emotional or physical, any kind of intimacy with other dudes, like, no matter how fucking platonic, it was so alienating and that was one of the reasons why I never I could never have male friends in school really I've, I have plenty of male friends now but I couldn't in school because like part of how I express myself like how part of how I express affection part of how I I am affectionate with people how I express that I care for someone is physical touch like I need I need to be able to touch people's shoulders or like like give them a hug or something like fucking those fucking shitty bro side hugs they're not enough 
And I felt so fucking alienated by that shit. Like, I just could not... I could not form an emotional bond with another dude because anytime the least hint of sincerity was about to poke through, it was like, oh, what, are you gay or something? Which, like, ugh, fuck that shit. Like, ugh. It's so gross. And it's Puritan. Like, as, 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 as the Racing Flames says in chat, it is a Puritanism. It's a form of Puritanism that holds that... Like, any hint, like, the least tiny hint of, of homosexuality or homoromanticism, like, of, of any kind of affection between men, like, any kind of affection between men is the same as being gay, right? Like, that's, that's, that's the sort of the, that's, that's the contention of that kind of toxic masculinity. And that there is nothing more disgusting, nothing more effeminate, nothing more unmanly than being gay, like, than, than having romantic affection for another man. So, like, it's homophobia, but it's also puritanism because it sees all male intimacy as sexual. Because being homosexual can only be a sexual thing, it can only be a sexual deviance, it can only be a perversion, and homosexual, and thus, like, in this conception of masculinity, homosexual people can only be interested in other men for the purposes of sex. Not for the purposes of friendship, or kindness, or togetherness, or, or, like, just liking each other as people. No, it's only a sex thing. And, and that's the same thing, like, homophobes think that gay men don't feel love, essentially. Like, they f they think that gay men don't feel actual love and affection for each other. They think they're just using each other as masturbation aids. Like, it's- and it is a form of puritanism. It's a form of puritanism that says, like, sex overtakes and eradicates and destroys all other emotions. It's base and it's vile, and it is lesser. It makes you less human to be sexual. And that's- that's the core of puritanism, is that its sexuality is inhumane, in a way. So yeah, it's a form of puritanism, and it's toxic, and it's destructive. Like, imagine not being able to hold hands with your bro. Yeah, like, that's normal. There are lots of parts of the world where men holding hands with each other is normal, because they don't have our fucked up stupid hang-ups. And they don't all of a sudden just fall to their knees and suck each other's dicks, because, like, that's not how it works. So yeah, yeah, like... Like, it, I have been denied so much in terms of the human relationships I've been able to have because the relationships that are available to men to have with each other, it's either either you is a gay and you is fucking and doing gay shit with your gay man or else you are bros, which means you have to performatively hate each other and like, like the only form of affection that's available to be expressed is like when you call your bro like a, a like a gay homo or whatever when he does something emotional, but then you you sort of like both go, ha, 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 who are both kind of gay homo. Like, like, or else you have to get shit-faced drunk. Like, that's the only situation in which it's 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 acceptable for like these hyper-toxic masculine men to express affection. It's like when they get shit-faced drunk, then they can kind of put their arm about around their bro and be like really aggressive. Like, yo, you know, like, you know how I love you, right? Like, you're my bro. You know, I do anything. You're like, fucking, I fucking love you, man. And punch him in the arm and like push him over or something. It's like, uh, 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 because all affection has to be expressed as aggression. Aggression is the only emotion available to men, and you can't have any other ones because then you're gay. Like, fuck that shit. Anyway, fuck that, because that is poison. It is poison to men's mind. I don't care what sexuality you are, I don't care what gender identity, like what version of masculinity you subscribe to. Like, whether you're a trans man, whether you're a cis man, it's toxic, it's poisonous, it kills you. It will kill you literally kill you like it'll shorten your lifespan and then you'll die so yeah uh it's bad anyway that was going off on a thing there uh matthew cameron i don't know why but i remember vagar was league's primary victim for rule 63 art in the early part of the game's life and i don't get it he still is like there's still rule 63 vagar artwork being made and no i don't get it either uh i don't know why that started <laughs> and i don't understand where it's coming from but, you know, the people are having fun, so uh, peace go with them. Uh, Sky Blossom sent a super chat saying, Wonderful to catch you live. Hope your stream is going well and you're having a nice day. Love your content. Thank you. <laughs> Nicholas Fransen, How are you not done yet, bro? I went out clubbing, cut back, and you're still not done. Respect to the analysis of every champion, by the way. Yeah, these are... Uh, this is this is how... Uh, <laughs> uh, this is how my streams usually go. I'm going, hey, it's going to be like a three-hour stream. I can do this quickly. It's a tier list. It's not no, seven or eight hours... There's no in-between. Check your Twitter for a treat. Uh, if there's something you've added me, I might not be able to see it. Uh, because I have a lot of filters on my Twitter. So, like, I, I, a lot of my mentions, I just don't see them. 
because I, I've asked Twitter to be really aggressive about filtering them out. I'll, I'll go take a look later, but uh, 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 I'll try and find it. But thank you, for, thank you for the heads up, because I probably wouldn't have known otherwise. Right, anyway, uh, recap. I wanted to do a recap. I sort of lost my train of thought there. I wanted to do a recap. Where are we at? So to recap, Triple S Smokin' are the champions that are just like, yeah, no, like my monkey brain goes, ah, 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 and it's not rational or reasonable, and it's not, uh, it's not, it's not, it's not because I've thought it through very carefully and sort of arrived at a logical conclusion. It's just that these are the ones that are like, oh, ha, he, he, me likey, me likey for reasons because of make feel good inside. Um, yeah, and that's typically champions that are in some way either very much appeal to one of my own hangups or champions that bring something interesting and different to the table. So, Ilawi, Lissandra, Renata, even Samira, like they bring something interesting and different to the table, so does Akali. Those are the ones that go there. Then we have the hot champions. Ari, not really supposed to be there, but the Ruined King version of her, mwah, absolutely retconned me into liking her all of a sudden. Uh, Aurelian Sol, because obviously, like, he's the most charming, handsome, sexy space dragon that's ever lived, and my god, the voice work that he gets, even if his character design is not that hot, the rest of the character makes it. There's Ash, who really shouldn't be here because I kind of hate her character design, but she's an archer and she's got white hair, and those are two things that work for me for whatever fucking reason, so she's there. Braum is there because... because Braum. Obviously, he's there. Uh, but also, like, I, I would argue that Braum just isn't really a sexual character. Like, like you would have to work really long and really hard to get him to a point where he would ever even consider that sort of thing. But that's part of the fantasy for people that he's pure. So, like, yeah, obviously he goes here. Camille goes there because dump truck ass. Like, mostly. Mostly because dump truck ass. Also, just, like, stern, long legs. Like, a lot of good stuff there. But mostly dump truck ass, if I'm being quite honest. That's a big part of the reason. Galio goes there because he's a big, well-designed, cool, like, like cool women respecting juice drinking himbo man. A uh, bit of a size kink there as well. That's also nice. Uh, Cassiopeia, because I have a thing for monster girls. I especially have a thing for snake girls. I have some criticisms of her design, but, you know. Jin, because Jin. I don't, does anyone need me to explain that one? Jinx, because she's interesting and cool and fun. Uh, and she's, like, less unique these days than she perhaps was once upon a time, but she is, like, one of the few characters that has that particular body type, and I really enjoy her. Morgana, because... because sexy big titty goth GF is another one of my weaknesses that always works on me. Nami, because monster girl. Oriana, because monster girl but robot. Orn, because... because Orn, like, because he's, like, the, pr the primo daddy of League of Legends, like, he's the one. Obviously, he's hot. You cannot say he's not hot. He's not just hot to someone else. You see that he's hot. Even if you're not personally attracted to it, you understand that he's hot. Same thing goes for Pantheon. There's no way around it. The man is hot. He's got hotness sweating out of every single pore on his perfectly masculine body. It's like, there's no way around it. Quinn, because I like her bird lady, cool, practical armor design, like, just really nice character. Just enjoy her a lot. She's hot. Rakan, because perfect himbo boyfriend. We won't go through every single champion, but we'll go through the ones I've decided are hot. Rakan, because he's a perfect himbo boyfriend. Like, he he, he will do anything for you. Um, because he's super head over heels in love with you. But also, he's just a handsome lunk of a sort of very physical, um, very touchy-feely, lovely lad. And obviously, that's hot. Sichuani, because... Yeah, strong. Strong, powerful. Uh cool, badass. For some reason, not smoking to you, which she sort of kind of should be, but no, just like, she's just hot. Senna, because cannon, big cannon, big cannon good. Love big cannons. Uh, like, bitches love cannons, and boys love bitches that love big cannons, as I put it previously. Set, because, again, it's like one of those, like, yeah, obviously he is. Like, unless you think of him mostly as a mama's boy uh, with a big mommy complex, in which case he probably moves down a few tiers. Yeah, no, like, again, it's one of those things, like, regardless of whether you're attracted to him specifically or not, you have to recognize that this is hotness incarnate. Shivana, because... Because, yeah, I splash art, monster girl, hot, cool, badass... Sexy dragon girl, yep, 
could be a lot better as a monster girl, but still. Swain, again, like, yeah, he's not really to my tastes personally, but you can't deny it. Uh, like, he's brought down a few, like, he's brought down a few by the fact that he's like a dictator and like a bit of a fash, but, but reviewing him only as a relatively hotness of a character design. Yeah, sure. Tristana, because she's like the one yordle that feels like both that she's an adult and also that she's someone who like cares about that sort of thing, like that would be into having fun in a, in that particular kind of way. Like Poppy, for example, wouldn't. Uh, Viego, because like, duh, obviously, like, duh. Yone, because, <laughs> yeah, it's edgelordy and it's a little silly, but like there's a reason why that shit is an evergreen, why it always appeals to people, and he does look good with those half bandages, sort of roughly. And Yorick, because he's just, he's good. He's a good character. Like, he's be more, like, Yorick really more because of the character than the appearance. For me, anyway. Like, Yorick is more like, I just dig that particular story. Like, I dig that particular character arc. That particular mix of, like, being, like, doing horrifying things, but, like, holding on to that tenderness and humanity all the hot to someone else champions obviously it's just like i can see that they're hot they're they're definitely hot just not to me they don't appeal to me but i have to recognize that they definitely appeal to other people in in very obvious and clear ways not hot champions are not hot like i know someone's gonna find all of them hot someone wants to ba bang and bone every single one of these but i don't find them hot i don't i don't i just don't see it I don't feel it. I don't. I don't have that that spark of like, oh yeah, no, I get it. I know why someone finds Kiana hot. I know why someone finds Lee Sin or Lucian or or Aurelia hot. I understand the appeal behind Ivern. These guys, no, I don't. Intellectually, I know. Emotionally, I don't. Anti hot champions that probably should be hot, that probably could be hot, that might even be meant to be hot. But the moment they enter the room, their ri vibes are so rancid, or something about them is so off or so wrong, that they don't belong here. Alune is there because she's the one who makes it weird with her brother. Like, like I could swap their places and it would still count, because they're the ones who make it weird with each other. If they weren't there, it would be less complicated. And then we don't talk about them. And that's it. That's it. That's it, we're done. The objective ranking that the whole world will accept and everyone will agree with me. I'll post this on Twitter and people will hail me as the prophet and arbiter of what is hot in League of Legends. Nobody could possibly ever disagree with a word I've said. <laughs> uh, no, but this was fun. So yeah, if you were just here for the for seeing of the thing of the thing coming together, that's it. You can turn off the stream now, and thank you very much for tuning in, and bye-bye. If you want to hang out for a bit, and just chat, talk, then I'll stick around. Whew, and catch my breath, because that was a lot. That was a lot of talking. Seven hours, Jesus Christ. <sighs> so how y'all doing? Have y'all had fun? Have you all enjoyed the stream? Even despite my my controversial opinions, have you all been? Have you all had a good time? Like that's the most important thing. Like have, have have you all had a good time? Have I spent seven hours making your world better a little bit? That would be nice. Okay, it looks like uh, looks like people are saying yes. Someone asks. Oh, let's see if I can find it scrolling by pretty fast. Yeah, J. Gillette, out of the SSSS tier, um, who would you want to share a drink with? Oh, Renata. Renata Glask, absolutely. Like, I want I want I get a two bottles of wine, Renata Glask, and me, and just spend an evening. Fuck yeah. Like, it's like, not even not even for sexual reasons. It could be sexual. Uh, but mostly just because, like, she'll have the fucking best stories. Like, my God, can you imagine the kinds of stories she tells when she gets a little tipsy? Fuck yeah. That's a great evening. Am I going to make a cut recap for this? Oh man, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I am. Hey, Nikki boy, if you're still watching, are you available for like an editing gig? <laughs> you could probably do that a lot better than me. Um, I'm not planning on it initially. Like if, if people want it, uh, I can certainly consider it. 
Do you still think Cetphelios is a good ship, by the way? <sighs> Again, it sort of depends. Like, it depends on how you conceptualize Set. If you think of Set as like a mama's boy, then I think the Cetphelios ship kind of, kind of doesn't, doesn't really work. But if you think of them more in terms of like the contrast between like sort of little, little quiet emo boy and big loud himpo jock boyfriend kind of thing, then it's definitely a good one. If set is the bottom, like if, if set is definitely the sub in that relationship, then yes, it's a good one. <laughs> hey Skyn, why no tr uh, triple S boys? Cause Riot hasn't designed any boys that are hot enough to go enough to go there. Like that, that's not on me. That's on Riot. They should have done a better job. <laughs> Stop saying set is the bottom. No, sorry, I'm speaking the truth. You can hate me all you want. <laughs> oh, there's some super chats. Uh, calling Bluebird, thank you. Are you okay? I left to play Jackbox for hours and you're still going. Also, Jin, best boy. Yeah. <laughs> this is how my streams go every time, Calling Bluebird. I was ready for it. Jel Van Morik. Sona is objectively the prettiest champion. Why isn't she in Triple S? No, she's not. Like, she's... She, well, no, I mean, you could argue that she's the prettiest, but she's not the hottest, like, by any stretch. Like, there's, not, there's a difference between being pretty and hot, you know? Uh, Ledriff, I appreciate Galio being in the hot tier. I've been called weird for thinking he's hot. Who the hell calls you weird for thinking Galio is hot? What the hell? Have they seen him? Have they looked at him for five seconds? Galio is hot. He's obviously hot. Come on. <laughs> Sona Psyops is triple S tier. No, DJ Sona might go. Like, DJ Sona definitely goes in the hot tier. Psyops, eh, maybe in the hot tier, maybe. But it's still like, Psyops, I just don't like that skin line. So, yeah. Zeri is definitely an adult. No, I don't think she is. I think she's a teenager. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure she is. You want me to play Hollow Knight? <laughs> I have good news for you, Georges Dragon. I have played Hollow Knight twice, and they were both recorded as Let's Plays. Uh, you can find those over on my Let's Play channel, which is youtube.com slash 2bskind with a 2 instead of TB. Um, so if you want to watch me play Hollow Knight, oh, you, you're well served there, my friend. Pentakill Sona Goth GF. Oh, Pentakill Sona is hot. Absolutely, definite. Like again, because of my particular weakness to hot goth girls. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, definitely. <laughs> a thoroughly enjoyable stream. Love your content a lot and all your insights to design choices. I would love to have a drink with Nata Glask as well. Yeah, everyone should have a drink with her. God damn. Uh, what was your favorite part of doing this tier list stream? Oh no, I don't know. Fuck. Uh, people ask me about favorites all the time, and I'm so bad at giving favorites because I don't, I don't think that way. I enjoyed a lot of it. Mostly, the the parts I enjoyed the most was anti-hot, actually. Like, I really enjoyed diving into a, the weirdness of why a champion is not just not just not hot, but the opposite of hot, like anti-hot. I quite liked that. That was that was fun. That was that was that was interesting. This was the first stream I got to see, and I'm surprised I sat through its entirety. I really enjoy your vids. Please keep these coming, Sky. Yeah, I won't do these streams too often. First of all, because I think my streams are probably better if I don't like if I don't do them every week, because uh, I think people will get tired of it. Uh, but also because it's it's really is genuinely quite hard on my voice. Because <laughs> like when I talk on YouTube, like when I'm talking to you right now. Again, like we talked about earlier, YouTubers are always lying to you a little bit. This is a performance, ultimately. Like, I'm trying to be honest, I'm trying to be I'm trying to be as, as close to my real self as I can, but it's always a performance, and this voice... Hello, everybody, my name is TV Sky, and welcome to... This voice, that's a radio voice. Like, that's... I, I, I tense some muscles, I, I do some modulations, and I put that voice on, because I need to be able to talk for, like, seven hours at a stretch, so I need to do some, like... So like shit, but like when you hear me talk in real life, like I I have much less careful vocal control, like so. Again, remember it's always a performance. We're always lying a little bit, which is why you should never like. 
Having spent seven hours listening to me talk, um, obviously it's it's you, you kind of get to feel like you know me a little bit, but the parasocial relationship, like always remember that you don't. That like everything I say could be a lie for the purposes of getting super chats out of you. Like, and that's not, I don't especially enjoy thinking that way. It's very cynical and ugly, but that's, that's the reality of it. It's like, like, we disappoint you, YouTubers, influencers, you know, we, we do disappoint you. At some point, the mask comes off and you don't always like what you see. Um, and even, even if I'm one of the good ones, even if I'm one of the nice ones that will never betray you, you should still keep that distance. Because otherwise you give me the power to hurt you a lot. Um, and you shouldn't do that. That's bad for everyone. Are you bald? No, I, I actually, I did cut my hair today. Um, like, I, I usually kind of shave it down. Um, every once in a while. Like, just just because I, I don't want to spend money on the hairdresser. So I just kind of, I have, a, I have like a hand clipper and I just... Zzz. Uh, so it's pretty short right now, but I'm not bald. I am balding. I have male pattern baldness, uh, which means my hairline is receding. It's not gone yet, uh, but it's like, I'll probably be bald by the time I'm 45 or something. Opinion on a small femboy champion. I'm honestly done with buff male champions. Maybe a venti Genshin-like character would be nice. Yeah, that would be nice. Like That would be something new. Because like... Male champions in League of Legends are all, like, they all have the problem that they're power fantasies for boys. Like, over and over and over again, they're power fantasies for boys. Um, and that means, like, in the scope of, of like, of, like, a Western conception, that means always buff. Always muscular, always buff. Like, always big, always large in some way. Being slight, being small, being petite, being even, like, even a little bit feminine. Ooh, no, no power fantasy, can't do that. Um... Like, cause even Ezreal, who's not really that femme and not really that much of like a, not really that much of a, of a feminine character, like the, sh the amount of gay jokes, like that used to be the joke, right? Like Tarek and Ezreal, haha, they're gay because Tarek is like, he's sort of metrosexual, I guess, whatever. And Ezreal is like, oh, he's a little twink and that means he's gay, haha. -ha. Like that used to be the fucking meme in the League of Legends community, right? So like, like there's this very hostile reaction to anything male that isn't like hyper masculine. So like, I, I don't have high hopes for it, but it would be nice like to see other kinds of masculinity, like like than the ones we've got, which are all very sort of power fantasy-ish. But yeah, so, uh, I wonder if it was a, it was a choice to have a model without any body parts, just a head and a t-shirt. The reason for that is because paying for, like a, these VTube model rigs, right? Um, everything that you want them to be able to do costs money. And if I wanted my VTube model to have hands, like to have a, like a body that was that was doing stuff, like like sort of get that all rigged together, that would be more expensive than I had funds for. So I chose a very simple character model that's just like a floating head, basically, um, because it was cheaper. <laughs> that was why. Non-hypermasculine men and non-hyperfeminine women. Yes, I would like that very much, Morgana. I would like that very much because, like, like for all that League of Legends has like a, a a solid diversity of character designs, it really does. Like, it not perfect, but it has a solid diversity. the The gender binary is really, really strong in League of Legends. Like, it's it's really strong and it feels very inviolate. Um, like it, it feels sacred, sacrosanct. Like it really, it really, right, right, really don't have the bravery to really try and push it, to push things that sort of fuck with gender. Um, and that sucks. That's sad because that sh shuts them out of so much interesting character design. How has the stream been? It's been fun. I've enjoyed myself a lot. Uh, like, I especially enjoyed fucking with chat, like messing with him saying, oh no, yeah, Yorick, oh fuck, ugh, ugly. What a, what a terrible character, what a non-hot character. That was funny. Like just seeing everyone freak the fuck out. <laughs> oh, that was good, that was good. Ranking Overwatch characters based on how hot they are when, oh, that would be nice. That would only take four hours. Um, but also Overwatch characters, I find a lot less interesting in terms of character design than League of Legends characters. Like, I don't think I'd have as much to say about them. I can tell by your skin, you're a 
Oh, can you now, Grim Princess? I can tell by your triple S tier that you're a bit of a beta bottom and are into dummy mommies. Odd that Sedge and Elise aren't in the SSS tier to hate spiders. Can you now? Are you sure about that? Do you think that that's what you can tell? By the selection up there? That I'm submissive? Okay. All right. <laughs> if that's what you think, sure. <clears throat> There we go. I should be back now. Just a little disconnect bug. It's something OBS does sometimes. <laughs> Breedable sky in back. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh. But yeah, that's like we've had a lot of horny fun tonight. We've 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 done a lot of thirsty shit. We've we've enjoyed being horny about characters together, and it's all been very fun. But again, I, I would like to stress boundaries, please. Like we, like you, 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 like you think maybe you have figured out a lot about my tastes and stuff, and you want to joke with me about it. Remember, I am not always telling you everything, and you don't really know me. So, so, so boundaries, okay? Uh, like it's it's okay to have fun with it. It's okay to be thirsty. It's okay to to sort of go, haha, Sky and Daddy, and etc. And I do appreciate it very much, but. Let's remember I'm a stranger on the internet also. Like, I'm not mad at anyone. Like, this, I, I understand that when I do a stream like that, you encourage, you encourage some horny behavior. That's fine. Just, just want to remember, remind everyone that boundaries also. <laughs> Stop doing the horny voice. I can't. It's just my voice. No triple S men, kind of sad. Yeah, but you know, like, that's Riot just needs to design better characters. Do I know about the Adeptus Sororitas? Yeah, oh, the Battle Sisters? The Sisters of Battle? Of course I know about them. <clears throat> They're good. Like, they have the same silliness that all Warhammer character design does. You know, like, it's, it's all very, it's all very juvenile. It's all very silly and over the top. But like, no, yeah, I do appreciate me a good Battle Sister. The facade you present to the public, at the very least, is very lovable in a platonic way. Yeah, I mean, and that's, again, like, I hate being so cynical, like, I hate spread, spreading cynicism, but, like, I present a very lovable facade because that's what makes people watch my videos and give me money. That's part of it. Like, it's, I try to be honest, I try to be myself, but there's always a part of it that's performance. Like, I'm, I'm always going to be nicer on YouTube uh, on a stream like this than maybe I am in real life, you know? I hate talking about it, but it's, it's like, I just don't ever want to be one of those fucking, like, Logan brothers. I don't ever want to be one of those fucking, like, like, like the, the YouTubers who go on stream, like, crying about, Oh, I feel like you guys are my family. You're the only people who really understand me. We're going on this journey together. We're so close. You matter so much to me. Please donate to my Patreon. You matter so much to me. I love you. Like, I don't ever want to be that guy. I don't want to have that relationship with my audience. And it's also, like, I've seen, like, I've seen other YouTubers who have these audiences that form these really strong parasocial attachments to them. And then, like, the moment the YouTuber does anything wrong, like, set one foot wrong, because they're human and everyone fucks up sometimes, like, everyone fucks up sometimes, the, the people who are most attached to them react with betrayal. Like, as though their closest real-life friend had just, like, actively stabbed them in the back. And they do this toward a stranger, right? And, like, that shit gets really fucking ugly. And I know it's probably impossible to prevent it, <clears throat> but I do want, like, that's why I try to remind my audience to keep a certain distance. That, like, don't think of me as your real-life friend because I'm not. I don't, I don't have that obligation towards you, and you don't have that obligation towards me. Um, you know, it's, and, 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 and because, like, you give me the power to hurt you. Can I ask Terribly. Her? Without even meaning to. Like, you, you give me the power to hurt me without even wanting to do it. I can end up causing you terrible pain because you invest all this, because you invest emotions in me that I can't reciprocate and I can't respect because I don't know you, because we're not friends, you know? So it's just like, yeah. I, I, I always worry that it's really tedious to hear me talk about that shit. And it, 
And it can definitely feel kind of self-aggrandizing coming from a YouTuber. Like, oh, you just love me too much. Like, oh, it's my cross to bear. Arr. Like, I know, but... I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to discourage parasocial relationships. I don't know how to, to, to keep that boundary except to talk about it. However cringeworthy it may be. Anyway, moving on. Uh, for the Logan impression. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Scorn. Uh, I've never heard Logan Paul talk, I don't think, except in that fucking Suicide Forest video. Ugh. Um, Hi, Teamscan. Great stream, and I love your take. Can I ask about your opinion on Zed and Ezreal's romantic platonic dynamic? Hmm. I struggle a little bit with that one. Like, it... I don't know. Like, I, I really feel like Set would find Ezreal completely fucking unbearable and just punch him out. Am I reconnected? There we go. OBS is being a bit... Like, it does this sometimes during really long streams. Um, there we go. Um... Yeah. So like 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 what I said, like if Es like take that Ezreal is like exploring the catacombs under an old glad like old Colosseum or something, and then Set goes down there like, what the fuck are you doing here? I'm having a tournament up there, stop messing around in here. And then something collapses, and then they have to work together to find their way out, and then like that kind of situation, I guess. You could establish a dynamic between them, uh platonic or romantic, but like it would need some extraordinary circumstances to make them be near each other long enough to actually develop a relationship. <laughs> Peter, it's like, why invest that much emotional stuff in a YouTuber? You're great, but you're just a guy. Well, it's... The thing about parasocial relationships is they're not voluntary. Like, that's the that's the thing that's important to remember. Like, there's nothing evil about it. It's not wrong or stupid or, or bad to establish a parasocial connection with someone. Because, like, if you listen to me talk for seven hours, if you interact with me, if you ask me questions, if I answer, like, like if you put comments down below my videos and I respond to them and stuff like that, the human brain forms a connection. We are social animals. We make these connections, whether we want to or not. Um, like, that's why, like, when when you really hate someone you've never met, like, a YouTuber, like, we're, we're like, ah, oh, fuck that fucking asshole, that piece of shit asshole, dick guy. Like, that's also a form of parasocial relationship. That's a one-way relationship that is not reciprocated because they don't know who you are. It's like, those are natural. They're normal. Like, there's nothing wrong with them. What's wrong with them is to not examine them. Like, not keep a critical distance and go, okay, yeah. Like, I know I feel I have this connection to this person. Like, I, like I know them somehow. But I'm a rational person, and I'm going to keep in mind that it's not really a real connection. It's a one-way connection. Um. But, like, we have monkey brains. Like, like as someone points out in chat, it's like... like Monkey brain sees someone be nice to me and goes, we. That's basically what it is. And so your job as a person isn't to form a parasocial relationship, because that's impossible. You will, um, to some degree or another. Your job is to be aware of it and conscious of it and, like, and like act responsibly around it. Because, like, the parasocial relationship, I have an audience. Not to any one of you. Like, I don't know any one of you as a person at all. But my audience as a whole, in my head, is kind of like a person. Like, oh, my audience likes this. My audience doesn't like that. My audience is interested in these things. My audience is like this. My audience is like that. That's bullshit. Like, my my audience is, is thousands and thousands of individuals. But I have a parasocial relationship to this imagined version of my audience in my head. YouTube, what do you mean you're not receiving enough data? Fuck off. You are definitely receiving enough data. You're not buffering. Okay, hang on. Let me just do this. Uh... There. There we go. That should prevent you to probably get enough data to the damn thing so that... Oh my god, stop doing that. Okay. Um... Ah. Yeah, if it's buffering... Just send the data, YouTube. Just, just send the data to YouTube, would you? Okay, I think I'm back. Okay, I don't I don't know if this is gonna stay stable. Uh, it's stream elements, which is the overlay I'm using. For some reason, it's it's, it's giving me some kind of fucking thing. Um, right. Sorry about that. But like like I said, but the, the point I was trying to get at: parasocial relationships are natural. We all have them. I have them towards the audience. The audience have it towards me. It's not evil or bad. You shouldn't feel shame about it or anything. It's just. You need to be aware that that's how your brain works. Like, that that's how your brain interprets these interactions online. And be responsible about it. That's all. That's the only thing you have to do. 
you know. And that's the same thing I have to do. Like, I have to remember that my parasocial relationship with the audience as a thing is not a real relationship. Like, th there is not a real relationship there for me to be invested in, so... And a lot of YouTubers, like, they can get really resentful of their audience. Like, they can get really angry or, or, or discouraged or upset by that relationship with the audience when it doesn't go the way that it's supposed to for them. Like, when they feel like their audience is, is punishing them or mad at them for something in a way that's just isn't reasonable or rational, right? So anyway, blah, 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 blah. nothing to do with tier lists, nothing to do with hotness. Um, just, just stuff. Um, have a very cursed dollar amount to fix the stream. Thank you much, McFatson. Peter, I did not expect you to still be streaming right now. It's 4 a.m. where I am. It's 3.29 a.m. where I am. But yeah, whew. Okay, I think I should probably, like, all this instability probably means I should cut the stream. Um, so yeah, if there's any last minute questions, I'll field them. But, uh... Other than that, thank you for giving me a idea to a seer being a model train guy. Had a lot of fun bringing it to life. Hey, tweet that at me. Hopefully, I'll, I'll see it. What would a male character have to be bring to the table to be qualified as triple S tier? I'll tell you when we see one. <laughs> Got to keep some secrets up my sleeve. People were asking about the playlist. Oh, it's the Sessions Diana um, and Sessions Vi content creator kit thing like it's a, it's a bunch of music that riot put out um for uh like for league of legends content creators <laughs> sky is a sub meanwhile i have the same s tier uh meanwhile he has the same s tier as me a butch for butch top lmao yeah i mean i'm just saying just because just because you would be submissive towards these characters dear audience doesn't mean everyone would Do you think part of your fear of hurting people stems from your aromantic experience? No. No, no, no. That that that's some that's some more private stuff that I don't necessarily want to go into, but I'm 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 pretty con conscious of my traumas and I know uh I know where my fears come from. Is there a Discord? Yes, the Discord! Jesus, I keep forgetting. I'm gonna post the link to the Discord. If you wanna join the Discord, there's gonna be a link in chat and just I should have I should have had that on during the stream. God damn it. I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting. There. Bonk. I usually post a Discord link during my streams. I just forgot this time. God damn it. Someone even reminded me and then I still forgot. Are you going to do another Legends of Runeterra stream card art? Yes, I will do a review stream of, of the Legends of Runeterra cards uh, at some point. Not right now. Like, I've just I've just blown up my voice uh, doing this stream, so I'm not going to be doing a long stream like that for a while. But at some point, yes, I, I will I will try. You can't send a super chat. Uh, I don't know why that is, but you also don't have to. What's my opinion on Kiana's personality? Personally, like, I think it's a good personality. I think it fits the character. I think it's fun. Uh, would, wouldn't want to date it, uh, <laughs> but but it's but but it's enjoyable. Am I finishing Ruined King on 2B's Guide? Yes. Uh, I've just recorded a bunch of Pokemon and a bunch of Skyward Sword, and I've sent that off to my editors so that they can start working on that. Ah, shit. It's buffering again. Um, I've, I've recorded some Skyward Sword and some Pokemon. I've sent that off to the editors. They're working on that, and that'll come up on the channel eventually, and I'm trying to sort of catch up on everything and record. Okay, I think I'm reconnected. I think I'm reconnected, but yeah, I'm I'm gonna end the stream now uh, because clearly this is not this is not gonna be stable. Um, so thank you all very much for watching. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for indulging this weirdness, and uh, I hope you all have a very good evening. <laughs>